Sumpah muda di dunia games Pilih game, masukkan game ID Pilih diamond Masukkan kode promo Dan pilih metode pembayaran Masukkan kode OTP Selamat, kamu dapat tambahan kuota Upgrade gameplaymu sekarang Get flash andalanku, bikin mainku semakin hebat Tukar DG rings, diamond dan voucher game kau dapat Main MOBA apa aja, wish di tanganmu Cuma game smack, semakin-makin no debat Beli paketnya dan aktifkan boosternya sekarang Character Select Where? <laughs> you lapper Stop! Pada klik in the wallet, belanja satu jam sampai dan gratis ongkir lo. Wah, belanja online kayak belanja di toko Indomaret. You can ya, siap main lagi. Let's go! Belanja online seperti di toko. I'm me, and there's no one I'd rather be You can sit around and wait and see For a moment I'll be standing free So hurry up and wait for me Got a bag of chips by the sea The sun is blazing down I've got my smile now, here's the thing Your chips are really make me sing Come on, relax and have some chips with me Chill out, lay back, I'm right where I wanna be We've got time, time to take it easy You always tell me to speed up, but slow down I've been kicking my feet up and just going to town mm -hmm. A bag of chips in hand I got nothing planned, yeah Good treats by the sand You know I wanna chow down Oh yeah So when you ask me if I'm gonna stay I'm promising you I will Cause there's one thing we gotta do
<laughs> yeah! I can't wait to see your portals in action! Looks like Red Team's trying to catch Chip alone up top! But he just calmly dropped his portal and Alpha Alts in to flip this fight around! A great example of skills for assisting through portals! Double kill! Cyclops is taking a serious beating from Gord! But it's Chip to the rescue! Will he make it? What a clutch save! Poor Gord just got jumped JJK style! Arlott's just in time for the buy one, get one special! Man, next time, look before you enter enemy portals! Enter. Oh, what? 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 What?
Dragon Man already, and yeah, running for the lives, gonna get Jamie trying to drag the members of RG right underneath the turret. It's not enough though. Gray coming all the way, and he cleats it all the way up. Just no way for him to run. It's just like that. 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 Galaksi A55 A35 5G awesome tiap hari. Ini Galaksi A55 5G. Yes. Game lancar, listrik terus-terusan, bisa tahan dua harian. Nah, ini Galaksi A35 5G. Bisa terus berkreasi walau dalam gelap dan tanpa batas. Makin aman dengan Oxford. Be awesome every day. Pakai aplikasi GoPay, dompet andalan gamers. Banyak damage-nya. Ada cashback hingga 20 ribu. Buat upgrade skin baru. Jika seringan gak makan memori. HP lemot bisa victory. Top up langsung dalam game. Tanpa hambatan. Ikut harus aplikasi MPL di aplikasi GoPay. Menangkan total hati yang ratusan kita. Bonus stage. Gratis, gratis kali transport kemana aja. Beli kursa harga termurah. Skin juris dengan mudah. Download sepuluh mabar kena. Terus berlari, terus ke arah puncak tertinggi. Ku takkan berhenti, hanya sampai di sini. Kemenangan abad menanti. You know we won't miss if we unite our focus and if you have an.
terus berlari Terus ke arah puncak tertinggi Ku takkan berhenti Hanya sampai di sini Kemenangan abadi menanti You know we won't miss if we unite our focus And if you have an Dalam tiga match yang akan berlangsung. Tentu saja kita akan menyaksikannya di Ampel Indonesia Season 13. Begitu bahagia tentunya di sini Budaya Keramong Star dan segenap keluarga MPL ingin mengucapkan selamat hari pasca untuk umat Kristiani. Semoga hari ini membawa damai dan sukacita bagi kita semua. Dan hari ini benar-benar spesial karena... Semua tim yang sedang bertarung ingin memperjuangkan dan menggoyangkan kalasemen sementara. Karena banyak sekali yang kita nantikan di match pembukaan ini akan mempertemukan dua tim biru. The Battle of the Blue dari Rebellion dan juga Evos Glory. Kita menantikan cakaran dari Sang Macan dan juga serudukan dari Sang Banteng. Keduanya tidak bal dalam hal yang baik karena posisi sementara... Posisi 7 dan 8, 8 dan 9 begitu buntut dari keduanya. So semuanya mari kita saksikan bersama-sama. Namun sebelum itu izinkan Bude mengucapkan terima kasih kepada kalian semua yang ada di MPL Arena. Dan juga yang ada di rumah yang lagi rame banget nih tulis di kolom komentar. Siapa yang akan memenangkan match hari ini? Apakah Ivos ataukah Rebellion? Dan sebelumnya Bude juga ingin mengucapkan kepada para sponsor terima kasih sebesar-besarnya karena MPL Indonesia Season 13 powered by Moonton. Presented by Welcome to MPL Indonesia Season 13. MPL Arena, Jakarta. MPL Season 13 is powered by Moontop. Presented by official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. Official e-wallet, GoPay. Official gold partner, UBS Gold. We own this.
Things are getting even more heated as we close week number four here at MPLID Season 13. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the English broadcast here on the desk. It's me, Eterna, alongside with Mirko and Arashi. And of course, before we begin the next three matches of the day, we want to thank our sponsors. MPLID Season 13 is powered by Moonton, presented to you by the official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. Our official e-wallet is GoPay. Our official gold partner, OBS Gold. We also like to thank our partner in esports, Dunya Games, Games Max, Orimo, Telcomcel, our suppliers, Inamart, Point Coffee, Neo, QLED, Super Smart TV Plus, Saturdays, and of course, thank you so much to our official government partner, PBESI. Now, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. We do have three matches ahead of us, all a best of three. And to start things off, we are going to have the Battle of the Blues with Rebellion going head-to-head -head against Evo's Glory. Evo's Glory. Wow. It used to be Legends, but <laughs> it also used to be Holy for Evo's. We'll get into that later, folks. But Rebellion, they've been sticking with their main lineup. Evos, though, they've been really shaking their lineup up. I'm not even sure if they're going to be utilizing still the same holy lineup that we saw last week. But then over there, we do also have RQ Geek later on in the day. And to end week four, it's Alter Ego, fifth versus Dewa, fourth on the standings. Relatively new teams for the final match, but let's take a look at the regular season standings right Sheesh. here. Presented by our official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. As you can see, RQ has climbed up, but today Geek Fam have a chance to turn the tides once more. And 8 and 9 is where the first match takes place. Whoever doesn't really get the W today, they go even further down, man. And that is a very dangerous situation to be in, in week 4, right? It's not as early as it was, so even if you're trying to experiment, you want to try and find something right about now, right? It's, it's starting to get a bit urgent. And other than that, right, we have 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th place all tied in <laughs> yeah. their standings. So, 3 to 3. And Dewa and our... Wait, Dewa, Alter Ego, and Geek, they're all going to be playing today. So mm -hmm. it really will tell how the standings are going to look like by the end of week number 4. And like you mentioned, right, we do have two teams that are in the red zone right now. I'm not really sure if they can actually climb their way up just yet, but of course, both of these teams will try with all their might. Battle of the blue here. The two blue teams, both eager, almost desperate for a victory to try and start a new run towards the playoffs. Obviously, on paper at least, Rebellion has been doing a lot better, having more impressive performances as well. Whereas for Evos, they're still, it seems like they're still experimenting. So now it's about a team that's trying to recover against a team that hasn't even begun. But in Season 13, nothing is impossible, so let's take a look. Let's take a look and let's welcome them onto the stage as we take a look at their team lineup first here. Cars, Vincent, Suelo, Audi TZ, and Moai. So another difference here in the gold lane, they are going to stick with Moai this time around. Oh. For Evo's glory, Fluffy, Animal, Clock and Dreams, and Brand. So not the Natco that we were accustomed to with the Evo's holy lineup. Here they're doing a little bit of a mix with both, putting brands in the gold lane. Let's see how they do as we welcome them onto the stage. With the captain to lead the charge for the White Tigers, they make their way up on stage still with the four main holy members. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Evo's glory! This team, this new lineup that they brought in late to week number three, they were able to cancel the lose streak that Evo's Glory had from week number one of MPL ID Season 13. The question is consistency. Can they remain consistent? Can they look for more wins? Because as you all know, we know, everyone knows, they surely and dearly need it. We've been preaching that it's a marathon, not a sprint. And especially now with a switch in the gold lane once again. It's a familiar face. It's a player that has been tried before with great results. We'll just see if the combination in particular yields any great results. But right now, their opposition walking to the stage. The bold who rise to the occasion, or should I say charge to the occasion of their opponents. This time against the White Tigers. The blue battle begins with the Blue Bulls charging on stage. Rebellion Esports. Rebellion Esports. Oh, let's oh. see what they have in store for us today. Two. Oh. 
Ooh, very nice. Already some flair, and I'm wondering if they're going to show some flair in the draft picks today. I feel like they, they surely will. It's one of the main weapons they have right now against all these older, more experienced teams. It's that boldness to come in with something really unpredictable. And now walking to the stage, you're seeing who is responsible for all that. Coach Chico right here, the man behind this crafty, this deceptive drafting phase that Rebellion always has above all the other competition. But against strategy, will that be able to be done? We'll have to see as the fist bump marks the beginning of the mind games. And also, I don't know if that was a multi-layered opening. You know what they did? The C? Mm -hmm. Whose celebration is that, brother? CR7? Oh, hang on a minute. Is that the 7? Are they trying to taunt with that opening as well? With that entrance? Oh. Yeah, we might be reading a bit too much into it, but there's... <laughs> maybe it ain't that deep. Maybe it ain't that deep. But here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the team head-to-head -head between both of the Blues here. As I think when we talk about both of these teams, I want to know your opinion, your professional opinion about the mid laners. So far, Swelo has been a big player in Rebellion's gameplay, whether it be in terms of how he plays the game or his, in terms of his hero pool. And how do you think that fares against Klaakun coming in? I think it's a bit early to say, to be honest, especially with Klaakun just very recently showing up in MPL ID. But for Sway Lo, I feel like he's improved so much more, and now he's a bit more reliable, a bit more of that backbone that Rebellion requires to really get things going, especially with the meta right now, working really well for the mid lane. We'll have to see the keys to victory by Samsung Galaxy for Rebellion to stay calm, be more adaptive in strategy implementations, and make Vincent comfortable in utilizing his objective power. Vincent has known for a great retribution, and his team is known for that adaptive playstyle. So now they have to combine that and try and adapt towards something that can really allow Vincent to shine. Because if he does well, we've seen that everyone else with the right pressure, with the right presence in the jungle, can match up solo in the side lanes against even the best of players. But on the other side, the keys to victory by Samsung Galaxy for Evos is to deny Rebellion's combo picks. Especially, you know, the, the, the notorious Luo Yi Kaja combo. And a win of the matchup for Brands, right? The man is showing up again right here. And when you give him a winning lane, all the tools and space to really carry his team, he has delivered before. And that could be exactly what they're going to try and do against Rebellion right now. On the topic of Brands, with him coming in, because I think we talked about it, right? When Evil's Holy came into Evil's Glory, became Evil's Glory, mm -hmm. all the main five, like, they had their chemistry down. But now they're swapping in Natco for Brands. Do you think this is a good thing, a bad thing for Evil's Glory? It depends. Because, honestly, if we look at it from week one, week two, when we did see two of the gold laners play, Super Red and Brands, Brands did have a better performance. And then with Natco coming up as well, like you said, very inconsistent. Up against Dewa United, he did really well. And then he blundered a lot of times. And I think it was the same against RRQ in the Classic Derby. Well, will Week 4 Evos bring Worry once again? That is a question right here. Because Holy's lineup hasn't really led to glory just yet. Whoa, whoa. And here, we've got some strong opinions. M1 at Champion Analyst's perspective on the performance of the new Evos Glory roster. Let's hear what he has to say. Evo's glory is only slightly different from before, but it's okay. Their early game is more organized, although they stumble a bit. It's usual because they are new players who have just entered the MPL stage. And this is a comment by Hyde O'Brien, and he was the ex-Evo's analyst during the M1 World Championship. And this is what he said via Revival TV. Do you agree with this? Do you think that there's only a slight difference and the difference is just because they don't have as much experience. I think there is a bit more than a slight difference. I would just say it's a difference, you know? It's one okay. of the differences of all time, as Arashi would put it. <laughs> as Arashi would put it. Yeah, the all-time statements, right? Right, right. But for Evos, I really think with this lineup, yes, they haven't found the success that they probably wanted, but hey, they only got two matches to play. Yeah. This will be the real proving grounds for them, right? Now it's also with Brand. So a veteran in the lineup, they also have dreams. So again, 
the statement that they are new to the MPL stage, Annabelle and Natco are new. Yeah. Everyone else, not really. Even Quakun, he's been to ISM, he's been to WCG, he's been to these international stages playing for EVOs. I think with this lineup, if they keep on cooking, it's going to be a pretty high potential lineup. I think I can agree, because the statement that it's a small difference, I can agree with that. But the issue is that in this competitive world of Mobile Legends, even the smallest bit of difference will have a huge impact. That's where that's the angle I'm going with right here. So I think even though it's a small difference, one of the, the angles impact of all in the time. land of in the <laughs> land of Dawn, it might prove to be one of the angles of all time. But let's look at the top five picked heroes right of here. Of all time. Carry. Wait, no, it's week three. <laughs> it, it says week three right there. Not all I, time. I Not all time just yet. Not all time. But 32, 32 picks on the carry. Wow. And 25 picks on the Vexana. So these two have been very, very popular. But along with that, the jungle presence is so important right now that you're seeing the Baxia and the Fredrin. And for the gold lane, the Bruno is always a strong counter or kind of dance partner with the carry in the gold lane. So we're seeing all five of these regularly show up in the matches. There but are opinions out there that say that Barats, Fredrin, and the Baxia are too OP at the moment. So Ooh. it's not necessarily a tank jungler meta, it's just that these three heroes are OP. Yeah. And they all are also tanks, right? So I get the it, sentiment, yeah. I get the why people are so pissed off at tanks, because I agree. I hate these three heroes. I'm <laughs> bored of them, man. We gotta get some changes here. Especially Fredrin, who's been with us for how many seasons? Bro, he's been here. He's been first picked at M4. All the way to now, we see him <laughs> first pick. But we do have the criteria for regular season MVP. Attendance rate must participate in more than 50% of the regular season matches for the current team. And the team win rate, the team's regular season performance, must be in the top five rankings. All right. So even if you do really, really well alone, but it doesn't result in great victories for your team. Yes. You can't just shoot up there and quote unquote pat your stats, right? You're trying to make this the most fair grading as they can. And you also need to play. Of course. Like more than half the time. Because if you play one game and you have zero, no deaths, five, you know, five kills, yeah. your KD ratio is through the roof. Yeah, that's, that, is, uh, that makes it unfair. Of no, course. it's not. Why? If you played that Why? one game against an MPL team and got that KDA, <laughs> He's a world-level player. Okay. I no? Wonder, I wonder if uh, there's a specific example you have in mind, Mirko. Well, actually, the only example right now that I can think of is Brands. He <laughs> played once. He yeah. did really well against BTR. Didn't they lose that, that, that match? They did, but he played really well. All right, the, the, statement, the statement still holds. You know why? Why? He's ex-BTR. Oh, hey! Let's ho hold on for a second here. Again. Again <laughs> with this. Dreams too. Yeah. Oh. Age too. Okay. He didn't even play. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Did he play with Bigatron Dreams? Was yes. he a sub? It was on and off. On and off, yeah. <laughs> Inconsistent. Well, In. Consist consistency is key. I don't know. Let's, let's just draw it back too. Do you too. think that Bigatron gives birth to inconsistent players? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Turner! It's a question. Coming it's not from a an aura. Man. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Whoa! Let's, let's take a look at this. Talk about consistency. Yeah. The other side of the spectrum. Okay. Top three mid lane during week number three at Sans. Clockun. Glocken and Swelo. All right. Okay. Interesting. So, no, I. Glocken. Very surprising. surprising. They're matching up to Big Man Sans. Is this week three or is it by week three? Like a total from week one to three. That's it's week three. Question. Just based on week three. Just based on week three. Yeah. He was really good week three. All right. We'll have to see if he can extend that performance past a single week. Because you know, we're, there's a lot of people, of course, saying like, "Oh, he's doing great," but he might just be the next one-week wonder. So now it's on his shoulders to really prove to all the doubters that he's here to stay. And with these kind of stats, with these kind of performances, I think that there's great potential. But again, Sway Low, again, one of the more flexible, the more crafty, the guy that can play fighters in the mid lane, if necessary, he's gonna try, he has to bring in his top game here to try and get that dominant mid lane performance. That's definitely true. And. The fact that he's so flexible just gives them another layer that they can definitely work with. Like, what are we going to see in the mid lane next? It's so interesting to see. But let's take a look at the regular season MVP. 
It will be by vote chosen by the award committee, and each member of the award committee holds one vote. Who's and the, the award nomination committee? with the most votes becomes the main winner. Ooh. Who are the awards committee, though? That's my question. Do you actually not know? A legit? We, do you know? No, I thought you would know. Do you know, Rashi? I don't. The shadow committee. <laughs> shadow. Oh. That's that so, sound, makes it so sound a lot mysterious. <laughs> a lot cooler than it is. The shadow council it of MPLID. Me of Geek, Geek Fam. Geek Fam? Why Geek Fam? Shadow. Oh, shadow. The shadow. But he's, he's, he stepped out of the shadow. Hoorah. Oh. I don't know if it's the same guy as the shadow analyst who keeps on lurking when light is present, shadows are cast dead. Mm -hmm. Like LaFell said, has the shadow ever cast it before? We would never know. Very on point there, LaFell, as usual. Hey, throw back to season 12, you know, we gotta throw it back. Mm -hmm. That was a great piece of content that we had going on. <laughs> right now, let's see. We're gonna, the, we're gonna take a look at the player head to head. Cars and Fluffy, both aggressive, both doing crazy things with a very similar performance right here when it comes to the KDA and GPM. Team fight participation, though, I think Cars is a bit more, a bit more active, and with nine heroes in his hero pool so far, there's a lot more ways that he can play this out compared to Fluffy. But you have to keep in mind, Fluffy has not been playing since week one, so yes. his stats. You know, they can't really be put completely head-to-head. -head. But you can see, again, when it comes to the averages, Fluffy can hold his own against the machine. Yeah, there's definitely something that you can take from, which is like an overall picture or graph of how they play. But in terms of hero pool, like, oh, what's wrong, Mirko? What? Is there something going on? Are you, are you becoming CITV or what's going on? Um, Shevin in the building. <laughs> Shout out Shevin, okay. my guy. He's probably watching right now. One of the more, one of the, one of the Mobile Legends fans of all time. But back to the EXP laners, right? Fluffy, I do believe is the only EXP laner to bring out Uranus. I think so. We haven't really seen a lot from Uranus. The so only far. one. The only one, right? E exactly. It hasn't been meta. So despite the number, sorry, Arashi. Sorry, despite the number of hero pool that we see from Cars, there's still a different layer to Fluffy that we haven't seen. Perhaps because he hasn't been playing as much as Cars. Exactly. It's gonna be a bit of an intelligence advantage for Evos here, without them having showing their cards as often. But right now, look at the pants. Wow. <laughs> no mercy. We were talking about that in the keys to victory. You you literally mentioned it. You're like. The infamous Luo Yi Kaja combo coming mm -hmm. in from Rebellion and eliminated. Is that the strategy that they want to go for here? Evo's Gory. Seems like with their coach, strategy. It seems to be the strategy. Okay. Arlet as well, though, banned out. That flex potential, insane. We've been seeing Arlet as first pick as such a good prio pick in the first phase to flex it to the second phase. But even if they don't flex it to the second phase, it's just overall a very solid first pick that. Rebellion could utilize because both Cars and Audi TZ play a mean Arlet. For Rebellion though, they're banning away a lot of these supporters that can really enable brands to be a lot more aggressive. I do wonder, the fact that Evos were able to actually force out, I believe, a, say, a an Alpha ban before, if Rebellion have some kind of plan to deal with it, with one more ban left, I think spending it on the Alpha early on is Your a bit too expensive. It's going to be the premise. <laughs> so they want to make sure that when to they go in for a decisive pick, a decisive the pick off, Evos will not have any way to really upon deny the edge that. Your the team void. is picking. Let's take a look here. Nolan gets first picked in for Evos. So that's going to be a hero for Annabelle. That's the first time that he's actually picked up the Nolan. For Rebellion, though, how do they want to answer it? Mm, man. Usually when you see a Nolan left open like this, you see the team on the red side ban out the Herith. This time the Herith is actually left open, so Evos will be able to pick it up later on. I don't even think Rebellion wants to go for the Herith here to deny. The They'll probably go for what, Vixana Fredrin. Vixana carry! Oh wow. Carry over the Fredrin in the situation. Makes you, gets you wondering, like, what's the idea here for Rebellion? They might still pick it up third pick though, knowing that there's no real urgency just yet, with the jungle already shown by Evos, Nolan not being able to be flexed around. But here's a comment from the Stratman himself. Strategy. 
My reason for being confident with this team is their scrim results are really good, and effort does not betray results. Ooh. Ooh. That's a confidence you want to see <laughs> yeah. from your guy behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But let's see, man. Scrims, of course, are a whole different story compared to the real game. Now with the Nolan, I think some aggression is in order, but Minotaur, like Rico mentioned, very prio, and this matchup in particular, with the Novaria even. So no Herod for Brands. Maybe he's still staying true to the nickname, the moniker King of Marksman. Doesn't want to pick up anything that's not a Marksman, or maybe he wants to build the Herod as a Marksman. Later on, we'll see though. Rebellion. Brethren's still up for grabs. Against the Minotaur, it's tough. It's really, really tough, especially with the combo of the Astral Echo. This is an underrated combo. Minotaur, range of that Minion Fury already so big, on top of the hitbox that gets multiplied by the Astral Echo, you can actually see a lot of people miscalculate because of that. I was about to say, what number at mm -hmm. for Rebellion, yeah. Because you were talking about Brethren being difficult against the Minotaur, and I was like, all right, why not go for something like the Barats? And I do believe that the Barrett does have a little bit of an advantage as compared to the Nolan when they go in for neutral objectives. He has more staying power, less risky for sure, because even for now, for Rebellion with the, the Vexana, that means that Annabelle will be required to be a bit more careful with his entries. But Rebellion are banning weak goal laners right here. So usually we see the Barrett's com combined, comboed with a Mathilda, an Angela, some kind of healing, some kind of extra sustain. But since they've banned most of it themselves, it's going to be a different situation. I, I do think they're going to go for something a lot more aggressive here to try and find ways to really punish Brands in the middle of those fights. Because technically, Brands has only picked up the Clint and the Carry so far here at MPL ID Season 13. So they go for the Natan ban. Carry has been picked up by themselves. So one option would be Clint. But in this particular situation, a Clint versus a Carry, what do you think? Oh, it's really good, man. The carry gets bullied. Usually that matchup just favors Clint entirely, but knowing that Rebellion have so much CC on top of the anti-CC dive that they have with the Barats, it could be risky for the Clint pick here. We don't know if Rebellion will pick up dive heroes too that Clint don't, doesn't do well against. But yeah, I think the Clint would be actually a, a solid choice in the lane. If you can get a snowball, that's one of the heroes that can really take the game into his own hands. Well, with the final ban for Rebellion being the Herod, it does seem like the Clint is gonna be available. Before that, though, Evos has a chance to take away one more pick. Back when Audi was just on fire with the pick of strats, it was the Kaja and the Franco. Yeah. But we haven't seen Franco in a long, long time, so it might be. Was that the Raphaela? <laughs> Diggy. Horology is my craft. Diggy. Diggy. Okay. Diggy is my name. I thought the Raphaela to try and, again, reduce the movement potential of Rebellion. But the Diggy means that Evos. Trying to double down on this AOE combo strat. What can they go for here? Ruby is an option for them to go for. Yeah. Tigreal. Against this is yeah. it's a little tricky. I think Ruby would be a little bit more safer. And even then, I don't think Ruby would be optimal here. Outranged by the Novaria, and even when you dive, you get picked up real easily. Oh, Rebellion, they can go for something like a. I was thinking maybe the healers, like Arashi mentioned, the Raphaela would be actually a good choice to give the Barats more mobility, but they go for the standard Ruby pick for Audi TZ, still sticking to comfort for him. Ooh, there's a comment here by Jonathan Liandi, or Emperor. Clocken, the rising star from Evos. Usually he becomes a champion as a substitute, but this time he proves his class. We'll see how he fares on the Novaria this time around. Let's see how he's able to fare and what his impact will be. Because against Rebellion, there's definitely a big question mark to what cheese they might want to go for. It's still not off the table just yet, but now Evo to the next two picks. I feel like it's gonna be well, the for sure, but oh, it's gonna be an x -Borg. Okay! Wow! That's a, this is a very aggressive composition, man. Everyone but the Novaria is gonna be barreling straight forward. For Rebellion, I was thinking that the Barats could be flexed if they really want to throw a weird curveball. But considering the neutral objective scenarios, I feel like the Barats will be locked into the jungle, which hints that it's going to be an EXP pick here. I wonder if it's going to be a Benedetta or something that can just die for the Novaria. Yeah. I mean, technically, Ruby can still be flexed for That's Rebellion. True. That's true. It's a bit tougher now to play an XP because of the nerfs. They either go for a full split pushing power or more team fighting power, more team fighting Terizla slash Lapu Lapu. They go for split push though, the Paquito that was 
the hero that Cars was able to utilize to beat the Sky King. So no pushover. Was it when they went in straight for the base? Yes, that was when the oh, Cars hit the base real hard. <laughs> Full speed. ka -chow. Ka -chow. Ooh, we're in sync, Mirko. But <laughs> well, let's take a look, man. One of the sinks of all time. <laughs> looking, looking at the compositions, I think when it comes to a full, a, a usual textbook team fight, textbook neutral objective contest, Evos has a huge advantage. Rebellion will have to try and maneuver more, right? Maybe take the fight in weird timings or from weird angles if they really want to try and ruin the strategy that Evos has crafted. It looks tough. Counter Index also favors Evos' glory here. But here it is, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Battle of the Blue. Game number one, as we jump into the Land of Dawn, the White Tigers and the Blue Bulls go head to head. Let's see who comes out on top. Here it is. Let's Welcome see if Evo's glory can climb back up, start a win streak for themselves, or will Rebellion stop them in their tracks with another new lineup to present, this time Captain Brands. Look at the emblems though. I think Roger with a Purify. I'm not sure if we've seen it before. It's way low though. Uh -oh. going very low. Yeah. That, that early game aggression from both teams. It's kind of get really close in the past few uh, matches we've been watching. But yes, Roger, aggressive, but with a Purify, he is recognizing the fact that he's gonna be the main target for a lot of this crowd control from Rebellion. Yeah. First game, uh, Skyler, Roger, was Purified too. So they are in sync. Brands and Skyler. Skyla. The other uh, side of the game, though, Emblems by Games Max, shows that Moai will not have the Master Assassin. So he is going for a bit more defensive of a playstyle. Whereas Audi is going to go for the roams and Swelo with the utility. It's pretty standard from the side of Rebellion. Nothing too crazy just yet. I think Moai is just trying to handle that lane as much as he can. It looks like he's already being pressured by Brand. And in the mid lane, Annabelle looking to get something out of the trade, still just clearing. And both teams are going to be looking for trades over the map. Especially in the mid lane though, I feel like it's going to favor Rebellion just a bit more. Because the Minotaur can help with the clearing, but the Ruby is a lot more aggressive, right? So when both, uh, both duos in the mid lane are not visible, then Rebellion will have a bit more pressure to play around with. Whereas the Minotaur has one single knockout that's not very long. And it's pretty safe for the members of Rebellion to really overextend unless a huge follow-up comes in from the jungler. But now with everyone reaching level 4, when it comes to the first initial engagement, I feel like Rebellion has a bit more aggression built in. And the trade instantly there. Rebellion go for the turtle and Annabelle knew that they would not have the right setup. Dreams though, gonna be caught in the Eternal Guard, forced to flicker out. Just a trade, a purple buff for the Turtle, definitely still in favor of Rebellion Esports. This is a arguably very low conflict game so far, right? Both teams have mm -hmm. just been farming up, looking for the objective trades. Like you mentioned, it was Rebellion Esports to be able to get the Turtle, but Annabelle was able to get a small trade in return. Wow, how? This is a very different EVOS. Usually we see teams with double down, but oh, look at that play! Just as you say it, a turn up might not be a different EVOS. Oh, but Vincent spits him out the wrong way. Annabelle retreat to. Actually, wow, it's actually Vincent who wins that out. I thought with the level up from Annabelle, he got it. But it's Rebellion who's still winning it out in these retreat battles, too. Bit of aggression out of nowhere. Uh, but yes, it's very slow low action game, and EVOs are doing a good job going for the trades here, knowing that when the full-on fight with a lot of skirmishes, especially before they get the five-man combo, it's going to be a bit difficult, but Cars here taking some aggression, but Dreams! Dreams still in the bottom lane, very low, Moai picks the kill up. First blood over to the Blue Bulls, presented to you by Samsung Galaxy. Brands will just clear and shove that lane in the bottom lane. That's first blood in four minutes. That's not something that we see quite often here at MVL ID when everyone loves to go for these team fights. But that will help Moai in that gold lane, seeing as Brands kind of had more of an advantage in the lane. I think it's a smart move for Evos though to put all their attention in the EXP lane 
We talked earlier about a full team fight being in favor of Evos and Rebellion having the split push potential. If they can shut down cars early on here and put him really far behind, they will have an easier time. But Dreams once again. Oh, Audi. I'm offended over Dreams. Still has the healing. Fluffy. Good zoning back towards the Rebellion members. Annabelle, one level ahead. They're not going for it. With Annabelle having a level ahead, do Evos want to go for the 50 50 contest finally? Or are they going to look for something else? I think this is the issue here. They're going to go and they won't go for a head on fight. And they want to find ways to make it unequal. And there's Fury and a flicker into the back with the Astral Echo to Vincent. Not ready. The Detona's welcome was actually used up, but he still got picked up. And Evos will strike now with a turtle take. Brands versus Moai will stack on. Moai wins out the trade. Gets a bit of gold from. Ooh, Ooh the whoa, recall whoa. too. Moai, <laughs> okay. Confidence! And it takes confidence to go head-to-head -head against one of the most famous Indonesian gold laners, right? Brands has been the king of Martin for quite some time, but meanwhile... Oh. Swelo will not be able to breathe, not there at least. Annabelle assassinates him, the mid-game kill pressure of the Nolan. It's the Nolan and also the Novaria. Remember, huge burst damage. Less quote unquote DPS in a long drawn out team fight. So here is where Rebellion needs to understand that the guy in the front at least needs to be somewhat durable, needs to be able to be rescued by the rest of the members. Especially for Sway Low with his, with both the damage and the crowd control that he can bring, he needs to stay far, far back and he can't be face checking these bushes, man. But what do you think about the grand idea of this? If both of these teams play exactly the way that they do right now, just being very. A patient going in for objectives instead, who does it favor? Or is it an equal and just a game of execution later on? I feel like in a way, it really favors Rebellion due to the late game, but ooh, Audi. Very low. Dreams, Minions Fury. Defensively, not connecting to anyone. Moai goes for the turret. Not able to siege it down completely, but is able to take it very, very low. Rebellion are very low too. They have to recall Audi in the bush though. Not spotted out. Dreams getting chunked again. Audi getting shot down once more. Fluffy, last insanity to the back. Audi will be able to flicker out. Fluffy's chasing him under the turret. Now against Moai. Dreams hammers him down. Audi's still alive, but Fluffy burns him to the ground. And now he's all alone in enemy lines. Behind Nothing. enemy lines still. Vincent able to find a trade, but it is a net positive for Evo's glory. Who are on the tier two cars to catch him in the rotation, stopping him going to Brands and clearing the wave. That was a 1 for 2 trade, and Evos get the turtle. And that's a golden staff completed for Brands after that whole sequence. So, ramping up on the DPS department, Evos is doing a great job with the maneuvers here. Always out playing Rebellion, not in the micro team fight department, but in the movement, in the strategy, right? This is what you want to see from a team that's so well known for taking games slow and bringing it to the late game. Looking at the items right here, Moai got taken out earlier, only the corrosion side, even with the steel leg clips to try and mitigate some of that burst damage. But with Annabelle already with the sea halberd, I don't know if that's gonna impact the situation in any way. And it looks like Roger is doing quite fine as well, getting into those power and item power spikes. Right now, Evos looking for another neutral objective on the board, looking to get a grasp on that turret in the bottom side. I'm pretty sure Kars knows where he is. Brands needs to be careful here. And meanwhile, Fluffy going to be rotating towards his mid side, but Ooh. why? Annabelle's there. Ooh. Takes the long road towards this way, low! Gets taken out, Annabelle, the assassin on the Nolan. The long con from Annabelle. Staying there, even when potential targets show themselves, that is what you can do when you're ahead. You can af afford to just sit there and wait for the right moment. That's the second time Sway Low has been assassinated, quite literally. For Rebellion, this means that they gotta be a, a bit more neat with their movement, man. They have to really start getting paranoid. You're seeing them group together as four, as oh. five now. And now Fluffy still has, a, yeah. still has the last insanity. So we'll be exiting from that engagement. As the Lord comes up right here, you can see Rebellion just desperately, frantically scanning in the bushes, making sure that Annabelle doesn't surprise them once again.
This is a four, level 14 Annabelle compared to Vincent at level 12. That's a two level difference. Do Rebellion really want to go for the contest here? That 50 50, it looks Ooh. really risky. How did he actually misses the I'm offended as well? And Fluffy is still going to be able to harass the other frontline members from the side of Rebellion. I think they can't really fight it again. They have to try and get an advantage before that. Cars earlier was in a right interesting, interesting spot, but Vincent now stuck alone actually. Mm hmm. Melted down by Fluffy too. It's not too fluffy this game. Faraga armor still there too. Oh, gets melted down. Eternal Guard used up? No, it was just the Curse Blast. That's a lot of damage. Cars poking him down as well. Good poke coming in from both these teams. Fluffy will have to regain that Faraga armor. Rebellion, Vincent, I don't think he can regain a Faraga armor himself. He has to regain that a HP bar. And he has to rotate all the way up to go for the creeps in the jungle. Evo's Glory holding the lore down. Moai. Look for the position. RDTZ with two men, I'm offended into the knockout, straight by the Venus Fury with the flicker. Does it connect to the back? Vincent is able to use the death of his welcome. Moai picks up one. Aldi though. It's Brands, taken Brands. out by Brands who dives in on the Roger. Moai low, Astro Meteor getting him low. Brands now like it for him and like it pounce in the bottom lane, scratching them down. And Clockun is there too. One oh. last shot from Clockun to take Swaylo down. Four to one. That was. That was a big, big loss for Rebellion Esports. Like, they already knew that they didn't, they couldn't go for the contest. They were caught super, super low already, looking for a way to regain their HP. And yet they still went in for that Hail Mary play, and it was late already. And Evo's Glory just picked up all the advantage there. They didn't get to fight the way they wanted, like a proper front to back. They still allowed the backline to be dove on by Klaakun, by Brands and Annabelle. So now, now that they're going to be stuck in the base, potentially here, if they, if they take out all of these second turrets, then maybe Rebellion can get a better fight. But right now it's looking bleak. Look at cars almost yeah. in one shot. That's ridiculous. That's some ridiculous damage. That's a fighter. That shouldn't be happening, for sure. But the siege from Evos is decent. They have good poke damage, and they have a marksman with decent range as well in the Roger. But the difference is they can't really go for anything too crazy. Sieging it down slowly but surely, trying to use the Astral Echo too, but Rebellion, they're able to keep the tier two in the mid lane alive for now. Very low though, Evos could just brute force this. Vince is doing a good job at clearing it though. Seems like they want to look for an angle. Brands just needs to hit it three times. And he does. Gets a turret, the brute force turret take. 7,000 gold lead already for Evo's glory, ladies and gentlemen. 12 minutes in. It looks oh. like they do want to wow. climb their way on top of the standings. They're wow. sick of being number nine on the standings. They're sick of being looked at in that way. They're trying to prove something here. And this is domination by Evo's glory right now on Rebellion. Mm -hmm. They're losing in the macro department here. It feels like Evo's, they're, they're able to outsmart every time Rebellion want to go for a particular decision. Right. It's almost like they're always in the right place at the right time. Every single time in these fights, in these skirmishes. And to make things worse, when it's in this long-range siege situation, First of all, Evos have the Astro Sphere for poke damage, but they also have a Minotaur that can sustain. So even like earlier, when both teams are trading that damage in equally, Evos will eventually come out on top. Now with the Lord back up, we'll have to see what they both go for. Audi has the Athena shield, so he's a bit more durable. Kars has a Hepatocene, but he won't be anywhere close to this fight. And you know, I think one of the other things that Rebellion has an advantage of over Evos, uh, no, Evo's over Rebellion is all, wait a minute, Fluffy. He has the Farag armor, it's all good. Still has it intact too. It's a bit more Eternal Guard used up. Already. Oh, he cleared equally fast. Not even, yeah, it was about to get cleared, right? Then he pulled it back. He's like, no, not my guard, no. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is, another Lord Dance for both of these teams. Back to that point, right? Evos has so much visibility that I feel like Rebellion is lacking. So every time they want to go in for these fights, these... Oh, but wait a minute. 
I don't know, does Evos know that Kars is there? Are they looking for a backdoor play? I don't think Evos really, really care about Kars being in that position. But what they need to care about is that very slow push in the bottom lane. That is going to build up quite massive to a push that can actually threaten a turret take. Fluffy, frog armor, all the force to flick around. Vincent Fury to the back and Fluffy in last insanity. Vincent dead to this welcome. Cars in the mid lane trying to shove him in, but Nolan is there to catch him. So we can't even go for a trade onto the turret. The jungler and the roamer for rebellion taken down for nothing in return. That's a 2-4-0 trade again for the White Tigers, ladies and gentlemen. And that's going to be a free Lord in the 14th, almost 15 minute of the game. And back to that point, right? Every time Rebellion want to go for a particular decision, Evo's Glory understand it. They know it and they take advantage of it. They go for the team fight, understanding that Kars might be going for that mid lane, but Nolan is already on standby. So they absolutely get nothing in return of that play. And Rebellion just seem that like, like they don't have a counter to the counter, right? If they go with the, uh, strategy A and Evos go B, they don't have a C. Exactly, prepared. yeah. And that is why they're just always one step behind. Even the, the slow push in the bottom lane, that was great if they're going to go for a long Lord Dance. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they didn't means that more minions just gets taken out and no one got the gold from it. At a 10k gold lead right here. Oh, holy crystal! Finished by Klaakun. This is looking bleak, man. One or two mispositions from Sway Lo or Moai will get them taken out instantly. Uh-oh, up top, 1v1. Kido trying to clear out the wave. Nolan's trying to chase him down. Meanwhile, bottom lane as well. Lord charging in, and I'm offended onto Fluffy, who loses the Parag armor, but that's it. So burning down. Vincent, that's in his welcome. Onto the Minotaur. No, Nolan, but he still gets shredded by Brands. Not even with Lycan form. He's just using his pistol, man. Moai clearing out the Lord in the bottom lane, mid lane as well. Ooh, they started taking down Fluffy. Immortality. It's one of the HP bars that they need to deal with. Boy getting chunked again by the Astral Spear. Shot down by Clockhun. And all three base turrets have been taken down with the second Lord of the game. Rebellion only turtling oh. in their base. And Clockhun, massive pick. Cars oh. oh! A knockout punch to Clockhun in the back right as he pops into Astral Recall. But now he gets chased by Brands, the Transformer. Going to Dino form. Cars, oh, just gets. Gun down in the bottom lane. Deleted there and then. That was an unfortunate flicker by Clockin. I think he wanted to utilize a flicker to get out of there, and it should have worked, but he kind of flickered to the right to the wall. Split second situation, but that's okay. what Cars was looking for the whole time with the Hepatices. He was looking for a pickoff. Oh, he has a malefic roar and a hunter strike. The reason why Brands was able to just shred him down so, so quickly is because he only has the Dreadnought armor on the Paquito. So that's just why against the Nolan even, he's just a lot squishier than you would expect. Because he is not here as a fighter, as a frontline. He's here as an assassin without space while, while being revealed by Clockin on the Novaria. This is why the situation is so difficult. It's a 12k gold lead and it might just extend to one of the biggest leads we've seen in MPL ID. What's our, um, our record? 15? 18k. 18k. On it. Okay. Well, it looks like Evos are on the way. I'm not really sure if they're going to even get to that point, seeing so. as how Top five, far maybe? behind Top Rebellion five. is right now. And again, the Lord is already in the Land of Dawn once again. I'm pretty sure Vincent oh. cannot go for the contest. Look how much damage he's receiving, even by the Nolan. But... Rebellion, they're not going down without a fight. They're planning something here. Three members there in that bottom bush in the river. See, normally, I feel like the slow push works. But now, they don't have time to play with. Do you think Keto should just split push in the side lane? Because right now, it does feel like Rebellion are just waiting for their demise. I feel like whichever they go for, they should make the call a bit earlier. Now everything done, Fluffy goes in. They don't make a decision, they instead just follow through with Evos. Whatever Evos want to do, they react to it, and they get punished for it. Fluffy blows the dino up, just like that meteor. You know, and the one that, you know... Yeah, the, yep. some history lesson from Thank Ripper you. right Thank here. You. With the Lord coming in, Vincent on 30 seconds, even with him up, 
uh, Rebellion has to go for something crazy here, like a four-man flicker play onto Brands or something, because otherwise, this is it, man. Lord coming in, reductions available. Annabelle, oh, Swaylo forced to flicker out the lethal ignition, taking down on him. Audi gets two members up, but Dreams gets two, two. Is the hammer down as Cars tries to box him up, but only finds the Minotaur. Roger, Roger, on the base. The White Tigers strike first in this best of three series. And there it is, again, right? In the keys to victory for Rebellion. It was clearly stated that they should... What, what was the term? The termina the terming? The terming? The it was like be... Decisive? Be decisive. And Rebellion, they weren't decisive at all. It seems like they had a game plan in mind. They were waiting for the right moment, but they waited a bit too long. And Evos, they were able to make the decision first. I dare say it's the lack of crowd control, the lack of frontline as well. Whenever Evos think it's time to go in, someone will fall, and they don't really have ways to really match a proper front to front. They can't really dictate if they can escape from a fight or dive towards the back. It's all Evos calling the shots off the back of that great Minotaur pick. And just like that, Evo is showing again that late game, that macro masterclass we expect from a team of that caliber. It's crazy, man. The way that Evo's glory just pressured them down. They had him in the chokehold for the longest time, 12,000 gold lead. And Rebellion were almost seemed like happy to be in the chokehold. It's like, yeah. Let's do it. End it. <laughs> just end it. Because they weren't making any proactive movements. They had a Paquito, but the Paquito played like a Terizla. He was just participating in team fights. He was just there. Well, you have to give credit as well to Evos because they recognize the fact that the Paquito can go for flanks. They were still very careful with the positioning. Not a single time, let's say, was Brands or or Klaukun in the mid lane without protection. So even if Cars is waiting for that oppor uh, opportunity, he was only able to get that pick off onto Klaukun once, the whole game, right? That's a lot easier said than done. You mentioned about the pressure that Evos were putting onto Cars, understanding what he was able to do maybe. So yeah, it felt really pre-planned by Evos themselves. We do want to give it to our MVP of this game. Any guesses? Annabelle? Should I gotta be? give it to Annabelle, Annabelle? myself. All right, we'll see. And the P.O.T.G., the player of the game, it's going to be Annabelle. Surprise, surprise. Interesting. Is that... What does that mean, Mirko? Yeah, What's what, the statement here? What, the, what's that pose? Double line into Annabelle right here. This is how much I'm afraid of you. Okay. <laughs> I, only care, okay. I only care about you this much. This much. Okay. It's Play average. up the game. Annabelle, That's presented to you by our big, official <laughs> tournament <laughs> smartphone. <laughs> Like we said, he was so good in the early game. Red trees were on point, but the aggression, and I think more importantly, the positioning of this man needs to be highlighted in the player of the game highlights by our official gold partner, UBS Gold. In the early game, sure, there was moments where there were opportunities, but Sway Low just suffered so much from Annabelle and his sneaky positioning. And afterwards, when they're already on the back foot, Rebellion, Evos just goes in aggressively because they have all these beefy members that can be quote-unquote more sacrificial. I mean, Fluffy is just going in there, losing his Faraga armor again and again, and that's the second time, and probably the last time, but that's also what made Rebellion so hesitant to move around the map. I agree. It feels like Evos also understand the pressure points of Rebellion Esports and their composition, right? Ooh. Sway Low, the main damage dealer taken out by Annabelle. Audi TZ looks to go for an engage, cannot because of how much he's getting um, pressured down in from the poke coming in from Fluffy. Right. And then Kars wants to go for something, cannot because of the visibility that is taken out because of Clockwood. It's these pressure points that Evos understand that really deny any effort coming in from Rebellion. It's like the, the mini counters they have, yes. not for the whole composition, but for the individual tools that I think they've identified that Rebellion really likes using, right? The crowd control, the the split push, the wave clear, they have solutions for everything. And on the flip side, it seems like Rebellion, again, once it has been countered just a single time, they don't have a counter to the counter. So now, 
with game one concluding, this is the time where they can try and figure something out right here, do some more planning. But before that, let's take a look at the statistics or the stats post game after this as well. Uh, the emblems, like we said, there weren't too many huge differences, but I think Brands playing aggressively with the Master Assassin, with the Swift as well for more attack speed, I feel like it really is something we haven't seen in a long time. We've always seen Brands put in a, in a bit more of a defensive position, but now with the Roger pick available, he just keeps going at it. It was just really well played, man. The way that Annabelle played that early game, I think really propelled them into that mid game where Roger was able to be fully enabled in these team fights. The Fluffy, Dreams also doing a stellar job at initiating and being decisive, like you mentioned, Eterna. Just as long as they were more decisive than Rebellion, who were in this game very indecisive, they would always have the first move over them. Like, Rebellion really never forced any of these issues, never forced anything over to EVOS Glory. They were only just following the lead of EVOS. And do you think that's what Brands was able to give to the team? That decisiveness? Because that kind of play, the counter towards the counter towards the counter, that's something that a veteran has, right? Because it's experience, it comes from experience, that kind of judgment. Uh, for sure. If you look at how decisive they played, whenever they, it seems like whenever someone says go, they all go mm -hmm. together. That's something that's so important right now when the meta is so uh, flexible when it, when it comes to how you want to approach these fights. I mean, if you look at the itemization as well earlier, Fluffy has the Ice Queen's wand, and this is where we were talking earlier. If a Raffaella was in the roster for Rebellion, they could have had maybe better chances to maneuver out of, this, out of these fights that they really didn't want to take, right? But it seems like whenever Evo says it's time to fight, Rebellion's just like reluctantly like, sure, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is this? Give me a bit of time here. Okay. Because I want to say room temperature take, not even a hot take. I don't like that Ruby. Okay. Same. Right? When they, it got Agreed. picked up, we're like, huh, against a Minotaur, an x Borg too. It's like these guys who will be caught in the front even, are they really going to be caught? It's always just Faraga armor, get out. Immortality, and yeah, I that, don't know. That, that, that makes sense. Because obviously, one of the main anchors to Rebellion in team fights is Audi with his CC. Exactly. But he wasn't able to do anything on the Ruby. So we'll see if there are any changes, ladies and gentlemen, to both of these teams. Before we head into game number two, we are going to go on a short break. So don't go anywhere. This we'll be short. right back. This short. That, I thought you said that's average. You said that's average. You said I it's it. big. <laughs> yeah. Halo kegiatan kita selain datang ke venue, terus sekarang juga kita ada restream nih Bude di YouTube-nya Rebellion Esports. Nah, di restream itu kita seru-seruan bareng gitu sama talent-nya Rebellion juga. Seru-seruan untuk Betul. stream. Betul, restream, restream. Restream. MPL ID yang sekarang nih RW lawan Evos. Jadi sekarang tuh lagi berjalan gitu. Uh -uh. Dan ada yang spesial ternyata ya di situ ya. Betul, ada spesial. Jadi kita juga bagi-bagi hadiah Bu Karena ini kan lagi bulan Ramadan penuh berkah gitu. Jadi kita juga bagi-bagi THR. Hadiah banyak banget di sana, ada skin, ada jersey juga kayak gitu. Berarti bagi-bagi THR-nya di restream MPL. Restream MPL di YouTube-nya Rebellion Esports. Iya. Iya. Terus caranya gimana tuh kalau mau dapet THR-nya? Jadi e, cara ikutannya e, tinggal ikut nonton aja. Terus e, nanti juga bakal ada kuis yang dikasih sama teman-teman kita yang lagi ada di stream itu. Ada hadiah 30 skin. Uh -uh. Terus ada juga jersey. Kalau untuk skinnya itu nanti e, bisa cek di Instagram Rebellion. Kalau untuk jersey itu untuk penonton setia di YouTube-nya Rebellion. Gitu. Wah, udah jelas banget berarti kan tadi Lelelen oh. udah ngasih tahu ada THR di mana di YouTube-nya Rebellion hadiahnya juga tadi udah banyak banget dikasih tahu Betul. caranya juga tadi udah kan iya, mau mungkin ada yang mau dikasih tahu lagi info lama uh, itu aja sih pokoknya nonton aja lah sekarang sekarang langsung di YouTube-nya Rebellion Esports uhuh. tinggal aja dan buat kalian yang ada di sini jangan Hilangkan kesempatan ini, ambil kesempatan ngedapetin THR dari Rebellion. Dan gimana ngeliat tim Rebellion? Ada yang mau disampaikan untuk memberi semangat mungkin? Walaupun barusan game satunya masih uh, kalah ya, tapi kan masih ada dua game lagi bisa nih menang. Jadi kayak semangat lah, pokoknya Rebellion pasti bisa comeback. 
semangat. Dan itulah dari Lelelen dan juga para Rebels. Buat kalian semua, siapa yang lagi kalian semangat nih? nih? Apakah Ipos ataukah Rebellion? Jadi langsung tulis di kolom komentar dan kita akan langsung beranjak kepada para caster. Let's go! Welcome back ladies and gentlemen from that short break back here on the English broadcast for game number two of match number one between the battle of the blues, Evos and Rebellion and Evos are winning at the moment. We had They're a winning by this much, this is one. You Just said... <laughs> in the best of three, one is big. Average. What? One, in, in the best of three, one having match point, it's a big thing to have. True? Like True. 60, no, 30, no. What are you talking about here? I, I don't know, I don't know. Well, you're, I don't not, know. you're not cool today. I'm not. You're awesome. I'm awesome. Wow. Just like the Samsung Galaxy A55 5G, because you know what, guys? If you guys want to auto win on ranks, you know? Do you? Do you? Yes. Right? The season just reset. You want to get to Mythic Glory, Mythic Immortal as soon as possible. You guys got to use the best in the business because Arashi will tell you the specs. Well, first of all, it's 5G, all right? We're in the future, guys. Come on, below 5G, really? It's no wonder you guys are lagging, all right? The A55 5G is equipped with the Exynos 1480 processor as well and 20 gigabytes of RAM. 20! That's more than two of my PCs combined, all right? 256 gigabytes of memory because gaming the gaming is lag-free, thanks to the Super AMOLED 120Hz display as well. You want to play like the pros? You want to be able to do those split-second outplay maneuvers like brands? This is the phone you need to be using. Need, not want. Okay? It's in purple. It's in purple. It's in blue. I love it. What color is this one? Purple too. It's purple. <laughs> oh, you know what? Are you team purple or are you team blue, ladies and gentlemen? Well, it depends. Well, this match is team blue. So... Oh, you're right. Choice matters. You guys can make decisions. Is it because you can transfer money very conveniently? Is that because you have savings with cashbacks on GoPay? Yeah, exactly. How did I know that? I have no idea. I think you accidentally scanned the QR code down below oh, to man. see what you were able to do. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? If you guys are able to guess the winner of each MPL Season 13 match in the GoPay app, you guys can win a total of prizes of hundreds of millions and join various special activities. So it's not just what's smaller than hundreds, tens, tens of millions. That doesn't make sense either. Tens of millions. But we have a wanted poster behind oh. us. What is that? Is I that have wanted? no idea. Is that Roger? I think it might be Roger. <laughs> Why is it's, he wanted? It's, go, it's go D Roger, bro. <laughs> That's a One Piece reference. That's a One Piece reference? Yep. Four times pick, 100% win rate, rising in popularity right now, and seemingly good overall. You have good damage in the early game, good sustainability, a yep. good item path, and good damage in the late game. You can burst down squishies, you can shred down with max HP damage the beefier members as well. This guy kind of does it all. We're seeing this win rate, I think, across MPLs. I think I saw MPL Malaysia, Innocent also use the Roger. And they won against Homeboys. Oh, no. Homeboys! Not Homeboys. Odil, our boy! Not Odil! Look the how they massacred our boy! The second last Kage. Oh. The second last Kage. No. Not the third. Wait. Sasa is also an MPL MY. All so right. The two Kages. The, the two, two last Kages. Kages. The two MY Ka The second Kage in Malaysia. <laughs> Enough about Malaysia. Let's talk about the previous game recap. Right, brands and cars. Like we were discussing during that short break, by the way, cars really expected a bit more of a split push kind of deal. Because he usually shows up 1v1, does the mechanical plays, gets the outplays happening. I guess there's some pressure from Evos, but he really spent a lot of time trying to trap the members of Evos, expecting someone to come and maybe clear the wave. But Evos with a 10k gold advantage, they just keep brute forcing the fight. And the thing is, if you're gonna go for a split push, right? Part of why we we're talking about the mobility earlier and the sustain and the utility yeah. is because to split push generally you require poke damage or you require disengage. You can't split push when your team can get caught very easily. And when you have a Barat, a Ruby, right? Uh, without any kind of movement speed boost, any kind of dash, 
Evils just kept going in there, and, and we're seeing the pattern, right? So if the if Rebellion wants to go for another macro-heavy split push strategy, they have to make sure they get the tools they require. But is that a cars thing or is it a call thing? Oh, that way we, we right? don't we won't know for sure from over here on the desk. Yeah, that's why I want to we, we actually spoke about this, ladies and gentlemen, behind the scenes. We want to know the comms here, right? Like how, how they actually play. Obviously, that's something we won't be able to get, but we want to. Yeah, we, want we wish to. we could. We wish we could because then it would be so much clearer if it was a call, if it was just cars thinking that he would be exactly. more valuable to the team by slow lurking. pushing, lurking instead of split pushing. We will never know. But what we will know is the draft for game two. Let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. Presented to you by the official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. Rebellion and Evos have opted to swap sides this time around, again with the Luo Yi ban from the White Tigers. And Rebellion respond with another Angela. I think the Kaja still might be the next ban here from Evos. They're really not going to let it slide. Oh, what? That's a Ruby. Banned by Rebellion instead. That means that either a Mathilda or a Faramis will be open. I wonder if they're trying to pressure Evos into banning out one of these things. Or they're going to try to use it for themselves, the Mathilda or the Faramis. And if they do, then the previous composition, if you replace the Ruby with a Mathilda or Faramis, it kind of looks a bit more solid, potentially against Evos. For Rebellion 2, they actually ban out the Ruby here, away from Evo's Glory 2 with the Angela. Angela, yes, the Ruby. Is it still that prio? Even after the nerf, you know, 5% less of uh, Spell Lifesteal? Spell Lifesteal. And, also, and the reduction on the slow as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not just your survivability, your utility for your team. You can't really reapply that slow as re reliably because the duration was cut down. So they're banning away the Ruby and the Vexana. It looks like it's gonna be a corral to get group together, death ball kind of play. If they're worried about all this saving and utility, with the Matilda banned out, I wonder if the Faramis gets prior picked for Rebellion. Faramis. Faramis Arlet has also been left open here. And I'm Kaja. wondering. Yes, exactly. Sorry. The Kaja. No, it's okay. Great, great minds think alike. So they go for the Boxia instead. So a huge curveball. Neither yeah. of those heroes are pick, being picked up. Right as you say, great minds think alike. Do you think Chico has a small mind or not a great mind? Maybe just a good mind? No. <laughs> you said great minds think alike. He's not thinking alike. No, I was. Aww. <laughs> like now I feel her bad. Spot. I didn't mean it like that, guys. <laughs> nah, Boxia. For Rebellion, for Vincent, we know that he does do better on heroes that can clear faster and can be more active on the map. Vincent, Mr. Proactive. But the Fredrin that's been so contested, we were just complaining about it being so meta for so long. It was available, and yet it wasn't picked up by Rebellion. Oh, Evos, there you go, that's the Fermis <laughs> and an x -Borg. They really like the idea of having someone with two chances at life against the pick -off, the, the intensive pick-off playstyle that Rebellion usually likes to utilize. They're about to be cats with how many lives they have. Ooh. Nine? Yeah. <laughs> Nine Let's lives. think about it, right? Fermis, the normal life. And then the full stack passive respawn life. And then the nether realm. That's three. Immortality, that's four. And then three, four, x -Borg. X -Borg. That's seven. Quick, okay, quick we're, math. We're, not, we're not to nine yet. But there is a Claude, so it's I think we talk there. about that first. Yeah, Claude in the hands of Moai. That movement maneuverability, it was quote unquote banned away in game one. Wait, hang on. Yeah, yeah because they banned away the. Oh, never mind. Oh, they, they, they did bend the Nathan, my bad. I was so confused because my handwriting is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan was banned by Rebellion. Second phase, it works the same way. Oh Big my. DPS, but oh, Roger though. First phase. It's first time in the first phase. I think they saw the 100% win rate in the back and they were like, Oh wait, that's Roger, good. Roger. Okay, Roger. <laughs> but it's a wonder why Rebellion didn't pick it up for themselves, if that's the case. Maybe they don't seem, they're not comfortable using it yet. Yeah. Some of these picks, I really feel like for Rebellion, they could be utilized, like like the Faramis even. I do wonder if the idea is just lack of 
playtime on these heroes, so they're not really confident bringing it out, out of nowhere. But here in the second phase, we do see that the White Tigers take away the Benedetta. They're starting to limit cars once again. Do they understand how important cars is to the gameplay? Do you think they're going to go for another ban towards cars? I think it's possible, especially with all the cards shown right here. It's either yeah, a Lapu Lapu. EXP ban or a Romer ban. I'm surprised they don't really put a lot of emphasis on the Kaja, by the way, but without the Lo Yi, without the carry that is usually comboed with her, I guess the threat level just goes down by that much. And then they pair it with a Novaria mid lane. That's not exactly a mid lane that can do Fast. instant Fast. burst Fast. damage, wow. you know, in the Depend. beginning. Oof, that's going to be an alpha, though. Yeah. We did mention in the first drafting phase, if that might show up, Chico certainly feels like that could be a possibility. We'll see now, though, for Evos. I think the Roamer will be shown first. I get the, you know, just a feeling. It definitely yeah. makes sense because Anavel got, was it a Maniac on the... Yes. On the Alpha against Abaxia? It, it's a, it's the strategy mm -hmm. oh. playing. It's almost like they got strategy as their coach. <laughs> but also, wow. it was the game, or it was the pick that got them the game against RRQ2. So a team like RRQ also fell against this alpha. Let's see, it is the Tigreal here for Dream. Despite the nerf, we have been seeing a whole lot of Tigreal yesterday, twice, but only won once. It was when Vin played it. And even then, it was a kind of different Tigreal. We're used to seeing big setters, playmakers, but the Tigreal, Yesterday was more of a Baloy Tigreal. What does that mean? He dies a lot and he <laughs> buys he gets space, but he dies a lot. I see. I was gonna highlight that it's it seems to be like a single target Tigreal, not going for a big combo, more for a single single target lockdown. But for rebellion now, let, let's see, probably not the Kaja. Something for pickoffs. I'm not quite sure for Audi. Could it be utility focused like we were discussing earlier? They might, have, they might think that now it's required because they didn't have it in game number one. Never mind. Grok and Arlet. Strong crowd control, so now they have more to say about where and when the fights happen. And the Grok, I feel like it's very valuable here because it's going to be a lot more oppressive unless the x work is in the vicinity. That's where it gets a bit complicated. But also the Arlet offers chaos towards what a Faramis doesn't like, which is organization, right? If they can mess Ooh. things up, especially the Tigreal as well, I think there are a lot of loopholes that Rebellion can utilize in order to make things chaotic for EVOs when they go in for a 5v5 team fight. Chaotic. I feel like for... Actually, EVOs might do better in the, in the chaos due to the Roger pick, due to the Exbor pick as well. They can be a lot more independent in their playmaking for Rebellion. Yes, they have ways to really mess around with the formations, but in the end, the only real big value you can get from that is the Claude Blazing duet. Everyone else, they kind of really work better as a unit, right? Especially the Novaria. So we'll see. Maybe the approach is to scout the Novaria in order to be able to get that neat front to back. It's about time for us to enter the land of dawn. Look at that! It's the Gerudo wings of MPL! It's flying high, soaring high! Like Evo's glory if they want to get out of the red zone. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome you into the land of dawn for game number two. Can the White Tigers go two to zero? Or can the Blue Bulls force a game number three? Okay, let's see. In the clearing department, the box here, like we said, actually is doing a lot slower than the Dyra, so that's quite interesting. We'll see though, with the rotations, with the purifies available on the side of Evos, the Baksha <laughs> is a bit more annoying because the spells are a lot more spammable. So it's not like a big spell that can be purified, but the Wild Charge and the Final Slash can uh, be cancelled that way. But can you consider Anavel's choice a Dyra as a counter towards the Baxia? With physical damage to back him up from the x Borg and the Roger, I feel like it, it works in a team context. 1v1, not so much. But we've seen that the Abyssum Strike can be used as a very great 
a neutral objective securing tool because it does do bo more damage when your target's lower HP. Okay, so that's the point that Evos want to go for here. They want to be able to contest these neutral objectives when they go for it, but Vincent... So level 3, Braga armor down, but Fluffy just dashes out from the bottom lane. And Dreams, oh, good shove over for Klaakun to clear out that wave. The shove potential, though, I feel like it really favors Rebellion. But the issue is, even when Novaria can clear faster than the Faramis, the Grok isn't really that crazy of a playmaker. Not until level 4, at least, with the Wild Charge. Brands up, once again, just showing why it's so good to have dominance in the lane. You have choices to freeze, you can push, you can go for the, uh, the gold buff or XP buff on the side, even when your lane opponent is in there, because you know that he won't take that fight. Do you not love the skin? Yeah. Such a cool skin on the Roger. I don't have it. I'm scared. I'm, sa I'm sad. Yeah, me too. So but anyway, Vincent and Anna Annabelle, they're both at level 4 and they're both going to go for it in the contest. So we're going to see whether or not this Dyrock pick pays off. Good chunk of damage on the Dreams, but he now has the implosion. Goes in onto the back, finds 3 on the board and Audi TZ. Suck in a bad spot. Cars forced to flicker. Oh, out. Dreams gets sniped, but it's not enough to take him down. A win for Evo's glory is Audi is able to walk away from that stampede. So essentially, the Dyroth pick did work to bring Vincent down, but Evo still is unable to get the neutral objective. It's a little bit too dangerous for them. They were forced to use several big ultimates themselves, the Nether Realm and the Implosion. But that is a big warning to Rebellion. You have to stick away from each other, man. If you get too close, Dreams is very adept at just looking for those opportunities and in the neutral objective pit there's a lot of chances. Oh! What a snipe from Sway Low, Annabelle! Miscalculation in the retro department. What looked to be a free turtle turns out to be Sway Low. Taken it away. Sway Low, and that's not the first time he's been able to steal a turtle again. His objective take alone is insane. Does he want to go for the snipe here? I think he does. Oh, Luffy has oh, to walk oh. the long way <laughs> back. He's paranoid! That's the Novaria effect that you can get. And in the early game, that Astral Recall, Astral Sphere is just deceptively bursty. Because again, the damage ramps up the farther you can go with the Astral Recall initially. So even at level 1 without items, you can do more than at least all the other spells in the game generally. Uh oh Oh, he got out. That nearly was a really good pick coming in, but they're going to go for a counter engage, Vincent. Mm-hmm. Nether Realm, though, a good wall plays down. Dream still able to fit himself in between the two walls. Falcon, he's got to be careful. He's got to respect this. Rebellion take the gold lead back to their hands. What's kind of curious to me, not curious, interesting, is the fact that Rebellion hasn't generally been able to really burn these purifiers from Klaakun and Brands. So that means that they don't have a lot of ways to do so. In the in the later end of the game... Ow. Ooh. Moai. Taking some punishment. But yeah, the longer the game goes, there are going to be moments where Brands or Clockwork needs to be locked down and Rebellion. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to do that. Oh my god, Brands is... He's missing skill one, but it doesn't even matter. He's just basic attacking Moai, shoving him and basically freezing this wave. Look at how good Brands has been able to bully Moai in this lane. Oh, like a pounce too. Whoa. Feisty. Pump fake. Pump fake. Yeah, the aggression from the Roger though, this is something that is just so beneficial. And Evos are playing well around it. They know that the Exberg is relatively bully-ish in the lane. So they let him be independent in the 1v1. And even if they bo both, him, uh, Fluffy and Cars, don't make it to the team fight, Arnold has a bit more to do in those team fights. Oi. So, whoa, a long detour for the turtle. <laughs> a huge detour. Taken nearly across half the map, but oh, dreams with a flicker. Now an implosion delayed, but he got it. It did the job. Last insanity to the back. Cars able to flicker out to safety. Vincent very low with the ghost bursters placed on him by Clock Rebellion looking Ooh. for another approach in this team fight. Cars still has that final slash. No flicker though. Brands good poke again. Will Swaylo be able to steal it once again away from Evo's glory? Audi and Cars poke down very low. Dreams, no initiating tools. Goes in, Vincent! With a retry win, Cars with a final slash, but will lose his life to Dreams as he bonks him in the head with a basic attack. So at the very end of the day, it's a 1v1. Evils lose the turtle, but they get the life of Cars.
Is that an equal trade? I think getting the turtle for one member is great. And look at the instant rotation coming in from Moai. Getting a turret, but Vincent oh playing God. a bit of a dangerous game right here. 1v4. Is it dangerous? 2v4 and he beats it. Dreams taken out. Fluffy diving in, but oh. Brock. Mr. Audi able to flicker out to safety and they save the turret. They get the turret down below too. Great place coming in from Rebellion. Already a, gr a, a lot more of improvement in the decision making and what they are trying to do. At least now looking at the map, looking at how they're moving, you kind of get a sense of what's the idea, what's the general the general purpose of this composition, they're putting it to good use, but I do wonder if the game keeps going on when everyone, if the gold lead is pretty much equal, maybe a 1k, 2k gold difference, later on that Nether Realm is gonna be even more oppressive the longer the game goes on, especially with the marksmen ramping up in damage. It's gonna be a lot harder for Rebellion to really match up in a proper 5v5. And I haven't really seen any solutions here when it comes to maybe a split push, maybe a slow push, or a trap kind of strategy. So that is where I think Evos has a chance. And I think that's going to be able to cause a lot of miscalculations as well in that regard. But if we take a look at the items, let's take a look at the gold lanes right now. It looks like Roger has a 500 gold above of the Claude. Is there a significant difference in items? Well, the Roger already has the golden... The Golden Staff, so the on-hit damages will be a lot heavier to deal with, especially for Vincent and Audi, the frontliners that will be taking some of those some of those hits. That's gonna be a bit of an issue. That also means there's more execute potential for brands to really snowball out of control. So in a big team fight, Rebellion will be kind of forced to consider in the back of their minds, hey, we have to save something here to stop brands. But now Moai has picked up another item here, the Golden Staff. Mm -hmm. Is that not a power spike for Moai too? That can be utilized in this team fight. Hold up, we'll see first in the turtle pit. Oh, good shot oh! by Dream Swaylo again! All three turtles! Two by Swaylo, one by Vincent. But the fight goes to Evo's glory. Cars now getting ran down. A killing spree from Annabelle. The first time that we are seeing a full damage Dyroth in season 13. And Moai is able to get a trade down below tier two. How does Swaylo keep doing it? I mean, it was retreat to such a low to a low level of, of health, but it just wasn't secured. And even though there was a trade happening on the bottom side, now Ebos has equalized it. I think it's just because of both junglers just so paranoid about the potential steals coming in from each other. They go for... They maybe instruct their teammates to go for a burst and retreat, but it just left with such a small sliver Quite a significant sliver of HP, actually. And then Swaylo, without timing it, right? He just sees it being low and then shoots the Astrosphere. It, All right. it wasn't really timed out. But the first time, you can call it luck. Yes. But the second time, that's got to be skill. That's more than coincidence from Swaylo. What about three? Even more so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's I insane. I think there's more skill if you time it, but the fact that the, it was left low for that long... If you see a replay, I think you, you'll see what I'm talking about. It was it was kind of... It wasn't... I don't know, split-second kind of steal. Oh my... What the heck? What happened to Dreams? You blink and you miss it. Sway low. It sway low? Yep. The damage on Sway low. What? Oh my god, he has Enchanted Talisman and an NOD. How is he melting? Tigreal. I think Moai was hitting him as well with the the Hunter, uh, the Golden Staff and the uh, Demon Hunter Sword as well, shredding his high HP build. He does have a Dominus Ice, by the way, so the healing, the regeneration, especially from cars, will be mitigated as well. So this is where the t the fights get a bit more, a bit more urgent, a bit more concerning for Rebellion. It is. And now the Lord is already back in the land of Dawn. That's a neutral objective that both of these teams are going to start to go for the contest. So far, Vincent has been winning the Retri battles. And Suelo has been uh, doing a very good job, but Dreams... Or to Vincent. Oh. Vincent initiation, the final slash, though, connects on the three, another round by Clock and Dreams. Able to get back to safety, but Fluffy now will blow up on Vincent's face. Gets a very low flickers out to safety from the Vengeance. 
of cars. Rebo's glory, they disengage. Audi TZ, no wild charge, puts a barrier in place, and the Lord gets reset, but Rebellion. They're taking control back of this. Dreams, ooh, ooh very wow. risky recall in that push. Still manages to get it off, though. Ghost Bursters from Clockun. Brand's poking him down, a good barrier. Set Clockun down, and Vincent picks it up. Rebellion, Esports take control of the neutral objective. All four neutral objectives going to RBL. That's a great setup for Rebellion. They took the initial engage. It was only on to one person though from EVOS. So they back away from it. They make sure that EVOS use the implosion, the Nether Realm, and then they come in and pressure, knowing that now EVOS can't really dictate how the fight goes without that massive ultimate. And just like that, EVOS, they're intelligent playstyle we saw in game in game one also uh, uh, made them just uh, let go of the neutral objective there knowing that without a nether realm it's a bit too risky now it's a rebellion pushing it here with the lord marching down in the bottom side a 1k gold lead it looks like audi tz might go for a big play here looking for the proper setup but he doesn't find it just yet but these towers they're falling down like flies it's a great value being taken by Rebellion, but the mid turret still standing, not for long though. This is where Rebellion is dangerous, when they can find ways to be deceptive, to be surprising. But look at Dreams, he's even more surprising, but he won't have a window. Yeah, very risky maneuvers, Dreams. <laughs> a flanking TIG. Last time we saw this was M5 Beloisky. <laughs> the flanking TIG, the conceal 360 around the map to find a flank. I, I love mean, that. I mean, technically, Suelo doesn't have Purify. Exactly. Yes. So it really could have paid off, but right now, not just yet. Now the foot is on the other shoe. Evos will be poked down. They are the ones struggling to find a reliable engage. But with the lack of purifiers on the side of Rebellion, they can find something. But with cars having a, the blade armor completed just a bit earlier, this means that Grands and Annabelle, if they do want to try and basic attack him down, he's going to be a lot more durable than they might expect. So what do you think here? Why is it in this particular game, it feels like Evos hasn't been able to take control of the tempo? I think it comes down to how well they can stay in the front. They've been poked down a lot more, and I think they are they have been forced to use ultimates very preemptively, but whoa, Dreams! Oh. Shove, now, oh, good barrier over, and Dreams has to flicker out defensively. Vincent still chasing with the shield unity, forcing another realm. To give him a second HP bar, Brands now poking Vincent down with the Tortoise Boy. Sans final slash, bringing Fluffy out of the Nether Realm, but he still has the Farago armor. Vincent has immortality, but he's gonna be brought back to the team. Brands picks one kill up Fluffy. Now, how many health bars has Fluffy utilized to get out of that? A bit too many, for sure. Rebellion in that long fight, they really got baited, quote unquote. It was a one man Nether Realm, technically, but Evos, they just made it work. Due to the targeting and the source of burst damage they have and the physical defense shred. Now without Vincent for 10 seconds, this is one of the rare times that Evos have the control oh over the Lord. But look at that damage. Can they blitz it? Can they blitz the Lord down before they come? Well, I guess we'll have to see. Audi's doing a good job at trying to stop this from happening while charging the final slash into the Astral Sphere. Another realm quite late, but now they're going for the full dive. They're ignoring the Lord. Audi flickering out to safety before the Lycan Pounce can be activated. Now they get poked down as Vincent gets the conceal, gets the shield, and he running out of L down. And it is a shutdown from Vincent. Oh! Moai 2 shredding him down, going out to Fluffy. A good barrier in place, but Sway Low is unable to find that last hit. Astral Meteor forcing Flicker out, and Fluffy, he's burning. It's taking down the Chloe one more. Chasing Clock, good, forcing a purify, and man, Rebellion! Oh! Sway low again! With the snipes to take down Annabelle. That's a 3 4 1 trade for the Blue Bulls, and they take control again. What is going on? What a great play for Rebellion right there. Getting away from all the engages of Evos and then re engaging. I mean, Vincent got taken down, but the Lord kind of helped out with that. And just like that, when it comes down to a chase kind of situation, Sway low, man. He's playing out of his mind right now. But we have a game fact about Kars here. Since his debut in MPL ID Season 11, Arlet has become Kars' top three most pick hero with 11 picks and a win rate of 45.45%. A perfect 45-45. So, mm. essentially like 50-50, right? 
Is that how it works? Is, yeah, that, how, is that how the math checks it's out? It's like a 50 50. Guess if you want to take, you know, the know. glass half full kind of route, you could <laughs> say that. You can round it up just like that. I mean, he's winning right now, so. So it'll be, yeah, it, there's, there's going to be an increase in the percentage. That's he's how win a couple works. more times, though. Oh my god, again, final slash onto Fluffy, but he has the Faraga armor. Lord this time charging down, should be able to take this turret down with one last slash of that trident. Waiting for the slash, but he's on Fluffy. The Lord, the aggro, is getting taken away, but Rebellion will just utilize this time to clear out this mid lane, take it out, Fluffy. Faraga armor almost down completely. Bang. And in the bottom lane, there are still minions coming in to the base. Cars having to dive onto Dreams, getting a stun down as well. Final slash only to the wall though. And Rebellion will take their time with this. They do not want to force it. Oof. All right. The game should slow down a bit right now, especially with the conceal already being used. I don't think we're going to see anything too crazy. Unless the Caster Curse strikes again. I think Rebellion, they're still going for it. Yes, they are. National Echo on a three. Good poke. Faraga armor down. Fluffy forced to back away for now, but Evos have defended. 17 minutes in, and we still going. Two base turrets down. So the macro game, especially with the mid and the far side of the neutral objective, down for Evos. Rebellion will have so much more control to play around with. Look at the items. It's way low. You would expect a Holy Crystal with the kind of damage he's been doing, but he's used that slot for the Nakas of Durance. He understands the importance of reducing those HP bars. And if you look, at Vincent, he just completes the oh my, he wings. stole it too. Sway Lo stole it. He I, stole oh it. Oh no, what? <laughs> Sway Lo! What is this? You steal all the neutral objectives and then you take away the buff too? What else are you gonna take next? The base. Oh, it, it sure is looking like it. What a menace, Sway Lo. Look at the items though, brands. He just. Got the tough boots there, the crowd control reduction boots. So that's gonna be useful in the next fight. I wonder if he swapped it out earlier. But he is almost at full his full items, I believe, if you include the boots. So he has damage right now. It all comes down to the execution and whether or not Evos will be forced to use uh, the implosion right here. Because I think Dreams has been finding like two or three man implosions, but the follow up, the, they can't really force Rebellion to stick in that fight. I feel like this, this, the decision making from Evos has been a little bit off. Let's see what they do here. Plucken is going to be able to poke a little bit. Oh but it's nothing compared to the poke that Swaylo is dealing. It's it's insane in these long drawn team fights. Swaylo should be able to poke Evos before they even commit to a particular decision. That is the beauty of a Novaria. Now. For Evo's glory, they have to choose if they want to go for this fight because top lane slow pushing. Audit TZ making his way into the enemy jungle. Annabelle all alone, isolating himself on the back. It's snuck down by Swaylo, and now they're all just trapped in this space. Evo's glory, they have to recall. No jungler to play with. An interesting move by Evo's glory that ends up with Rebellion capitalizing on it 100% of the way. Again, the decision making from Evo's this game. Feels a little fishy. I wonder if he feels pressured to try and go for a flank, go for an assassinate, especially onto Sway Low. They know that during a normal Lord Dance, it's only a matter of time before they get too low. Now, 15 seconds here, there's a chance he might not be up for the next big fight. Rebellion, they smell blood in the water, they're gonna go for it. The base wide open. Three members revealed by the Astral Echo. Vincent diving deep with the shield unity right now. They're trying to give Moai space to go for it. Blazing Duet onto Clock, but he has another realm of the base. Will just be targeted down by Rebellion Esports to force us to a game three in this best of three. Welcome to game number three as the Blue Bulls were able to push it in a very quick adaptive game play in game number two. Very different to what we saw in game number one where it felt like in that situation, their decision making was off. But it's almost here, they're, they adapted so quick, just in a change of a game. Can they stay consistent is the question. I wonder if it's the caster curse working once again. Every time, man. Wow, Evo is just macro. This is what we're expecting. Second game just looks just that much more off. Of course, Rebellion also played a lot better. 
But if you look at it on paper, it's not like they were completely outdrafted. Evos really had a good chance of finding a winning play here. But Rebellion just says no, and they control the tempo so much better. It's almost like Evos is better when you're coming, when you're trying to match decisions, you know? Uh, counter A with B, counter B with C. But when it comes to using the tempo, when you're taking advantage of when your op opposition is just scrambling to try and find control, I think Rebellion does it that much better. It's all about the control, I feel, right? And the understanding of the win conditions for both teams. For Evos this time, they have a multi-layer draft, something that Rebellion tried to utilize in Game 1. And it turns out, simple is better. Just going for the normal, the usual, for both Evos and Rebellion. In Game 1 Evos, Game 2 Rebellion, but seriously, there are standouts. Rebellion, Sway Low. What a game, what a performance from Mr. Low, or Mr. Sway, or Mr. Sway Low. Always a standout. You know, he has like the highest highs and the... I don't want to say lowest lows. Though. Mid is mid. There mid go. is mid. That's why he's there called sway go. low. He's high, but then he just sways a bit too low. Ooh. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> because I remember him being sway. like a pillar, like the, the star boy star of boy. Rebellion. Whoa. That's we, the, way that's back. we the Janarco. No, 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 no. Before we Janarco's era. Before we the Janarco? That Before was Before we the Janarco, bro. <laughs> oh, sugar. <laughs> yeah, okay. With but it's always been Soilo for me, man. MVP on the Novaria, 3-0-2. You know, give him... He's been, he's been able to perform on a lot of heroes this season. Yeah, right? So it's good. not just the Novaria. Luo Yi, especially Valentina. the Luo Yi. Played Terizla last season. Mm -hmm. Did he play Angela Lapu? Mid. Did he play Lapu? I remember Moreno, I think it was, that played the Lapu against Rebellion last season. Point is, this guy is flexible, and he was doing a lot of moments. There's a lot of moments here to look at. Player of the game highlights by the official gold partner UBS Gold. I really want to take a look at the Lord take later on. Or was it the tutorial take? But early on, you can see that oh, Evos are the ones trying to dictate the pace, like they did in game number one. But they don't really have the same kind of tools to do so. And again and again. See, it seems even when Vincent gets the neutral objective, it's because Sway Low has Combo. an extra bit of burst for him to go for. Look at that! Oh How, the turtle was low for so long God. before Sway Low shot the Astro Sphere. Right. That's what I mean. It took quite quite a while for the quote unquote steal to happen. It's the panic red tree from Annabelle. Yes. Oh man. Oh boy. Afterwards though, again, the kite back from Rebellion. They don't really have a lot more uh, tools, let's say, like uh, this, like speed ups or, or or dashes to get away from these fights. But I guess the fact that they have an Ovaria that is a huge slow that people don't really think about. Leaving the Astro Meteor in the choke point, using the Astro Echo for the extra bit of utility, means that when cars, when uh, Audi flickers away from the fight, Evos can't really keep up. And here is that play, Annabelle. I guess he was again trying to make something happen, make find a moment because they are not really winning it out with the textbook approach. But unfortunately, it did not really swing in their favor. Honestly, that Ice Queen wand was just no. It was, it was, it was really difficult for Evos to overcome. Because it looked like every time they wanted to go for a setup, that Ice Queen wand, that slow, really mm -hmm. prevented it from happening. And then they were just caught like we saw Annabelle being caught earlier. It's almost like we were talking earlier again about having utility, some ways to reduce the slow and all that, the Raphaela. It's almost like for Rebellion, they like fi fighting fire with fire. So they're saying, we don't need healing and all these fancy stuff. We'll slow you instead. And so yeah. if, you, if you're both slowed, then no one is. And just like that, they're showing their back and forth positioning, their maneuverability in the middle of these big fights. So now it's Evos' turn to try and find uh, a winning counter because it really didn't, didn't happen as they wanted. Xberg also has the Ice Queen's one. Fluffy was trying to do what he was doing in the previous game, but now there's just less room. Dude, I mean, like, seriously, right? Solo action to this game. 20 minutes and 14 seconds, 5 to 7. It's a very rare sight to see in MPL ID, knowing how much action there is usually around the whole map. But does it, is it just me or does it feel like both 
Evo's Glory and Rebellion Esports, when they are behind, they play it so, so safe. A bit too safe. They're just tunneling inside their base. They go for weird angles, but they never commit to these initiations. Like if Annabelle wanted to make that decision, the team definitely didn't, you know? Like, they're disconnected when they are behind. It just seems like they don't have that composure. So they're like winning side players. Yeah. Because, again, realistically speaking, the problem-solving process when you're on the winning side, right? Oh, how do we find ways to take more advantage? It's a lot simpler compared to when you're losing and now you have to try and solve, solve. Uh, the issue, right? How, what do we do here to not lose, to get back in the game? That's a lot harder of a challenge. So to be fair, it, it makes sense why that will be the case, but I agree with that observation. When they're behind, they just kind of seem to lose track. So it makes sense, Muay? Exactly. Why do you say that? Anyway, before we get into game number three and to see who will become the victors of match number one, we are going to go on a short break. So don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. For the next game the next of the series. Game of the series. 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 Lagi masa penyembuhan. Masa penyembuhan. Yeah, kan kalau masuk UGD, diobati bisa sembuh. Bisa. Yeah, belum kritis banget lah. Oh, belum. Yeah. Berarti masih ada lah ya secerca harapan. Tapi panik gak sih? Maksudnya kan minggu keempat ya. Hmm. Bisa dibilang hampir separuh season berjalan. Tapi keadaan tim kayaknya masih ber. Ya yeah, dibilang panik sih tentunya semua tim uh, di EVOS tuh panik lah ya. Ya mau gak mau kita harus uh, try hard lagi lah lebih untuk archive sesuatu kayak gitu. Ya, ya panik pasti panik lah. Ya. Semuanya juga kayaknya lagi deg-deg ser nih ya. Ini Betul. aja sekarang lagi satu sama. Tapi kalau kita lihat sekarang tuh sembilan player ada di line up EVOS Glory. Banyak banget loh itu. Dan mm -hmm. kalian melakukan gebrakan dengan menghadirkan lima pemain langsung. Jebret banyak sekali yang dari bursa transfernya rame. Tapi ya. itu gimana sih keputusannya atau mungkin prosesnya dari pemilihan pemain juga untuk EVOS. Sebenarnya pemilihan pemainnya itu kan tergantung dari uh, coaching staff sendiri kan. Mereka pilih uh, dan mereka melihat potensi apakah player yang udah ada di EVOS itu bisa improve atau tidak. Ya kalau uh, layak untuk main di MPL ya bisa main di MPL. Bahkan ya ada tim juga yang lebih playernya lebih banyak dari kita sih. Iya yeah. yeah. jadi memang pada banyak-banyak ya. Iya yeah, pada banyak-banyakan. Emang lagi pada gimana caranya untuk menang. Betul karena ya season ini important banget lah. Ya, season ini ya. semuanya ingin menang, gak ada yang mau santai-santai. Dan kalau kamu ngelihat sekarang, ini kan week baru juga, week 4 untuk EVOS. Ya. Gimana perkembangannya mungkin? Ya so far uh, udah lumayan bagus lah, better lah. Meskipun kalah juga kalahnya 2-1. Maksudnya ada kasih game juga, gamenya menarik gitu ya. Masih bisa uh, menang juga ya. Jadi so far ya perkembangan dari anak-anak dan tim ya lumayan better lah untuk saat ini. Lumayan better? Ya. Udah hmm, terlihat ada progres. Betul. Tinggal dikasih oksigen lagi. Iya, ntar sembuh. Pelan -pelan. Sembuh, dikasih obat-obatan dikit ya. ya. Biar sehat. Tunggu biar terus... waktunya lari aja. Biar keluar dari UGD? Iya, enggak biar keluar dari UGD udah bisa lari. Langsung ya, ya harapannya. Harapannya. Berarti memang semua ini lagi dalam progres dari Ivo sendiri. Tapi kamu sendiri dari AG banyak yang penasaran nih. Kalau AG sendiri gimana? Kamu untuk saat ini, kalau dulu kan kita tahu biasanya di belakang kursi, yeah. biasanya sekarang enggak loh. Yeah. Sekarang lebih banyak untuk kebatu-batu tim aja sih, kayak misalkan mereka butuhnya apa, mereka uh, misalkan uh, bantu brainstorming kayak gitu bisa lebih ke itunya. Jadi udah berbeda dari AG yang dulu yeah. tugasnya? Iya. Yeah. Uh, tapi melihat dari perkembangan EVOS, dari pertemuan tim, kamu ngeliat gak sih, ada gak sih tim lain yang sebenarnya juga menurut AG sendiri juga struggling, nggak cuma EVOS doang. Kalau tim lain sebenarnya ya kayak nggak ada dah, kayak tim gua aja dah. Serius? Ya gua nggak mau ngelihat tim lain struggle lah, karena mindsetnya jelek. Nanti jadi kita underestimate, biarin orang lain underestimate tim kita aja. Oh, ya. biar tetap oke okay, underestimate tapi ternyata kalian ganas dan buas. Ya, amin aja dulu. Amin aja dulu, tapi AG anak-anak dari EVOS Glory bentar lagi bakal melanjutkan game yang ketiga. Sebagai Head of MLBB yeah. loh ini, boleh dong <laughs> semangatin atau mungkin ada yang mau disampaikan langsung kepada anak-anaknya. Oi guys, bangun oi semangat ya. Udah gitu aja sih. 
Woi bangun woi, semangat. Dan kita pun juga harus turut semangat untuk menyemangati kedua tim. The Battle of the Blue yang akan berlanjut ke game yang ketiga. Caster, let's go! Welcome back for the break, ladies and gentlemen. That was an interview with Coach Aki. That sure was. I thought you were just going to say that was an interview. I was like, yeah, it, it is an interview. It is an interview. It is an interview. With Coach Aki. No longer Coach Aki, though. Oh, yeah, he's, not a, he's no longer a coach. He's just age. He's head of MLBB Aki. <gasps> oh, is he? Is he head of esports or MLBB? He's head of... He's head of MLBB or esports in Evos, yes. Oh, really? Yeah, that's why you don't see him on stage. That's why you see him behind the scenes, pulling the strings, man. Stephen oh. H, puppeteer. puppeteer. It's so weird not to say Coach Agi, though. I still call it's him. It's like you see coach him as a coach. Steven. You call him Steven? Right. Coach Steven. What's up, Steven? It's like Feel. Do you call him Feel <laughs> or Coach Feel? I call him Feel. Oh, you call him Feel? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I call him Feel Putra. Call him coach. Is it, yeah. is it a Petra? Feel Petra. Is it Putra? Same, same thing, Arashi. Petra, Putra, you know? I don't think it's the same. Er, Eterna, it is. It's like Utarna. It's like, Utarna? And it's a like so and sorry. I didn't say sorry. I didn't, guys. I didn't say so. Sorry, right? Oh. But, ladies and gentlemen, we the do goat. have the media corner. The goat. Mak Mak juga doyan esports. What's the translation to that? Older moms, ladies. moms also oh, moms. love, love esports. E there it is. This the is really cool, though. The inspirative tale of Ama Evos, like Evos mom Evo's in mom. MPL Indonesia. So what is it, Eterna? It's an article. Mama Evos. Yes, it's an article at Swara.com that you guys can actually check out to see how a mom can be so into esports yeah. and. So supportive of Evos in particular. Yeah, I mean, it's so cool to see, but also because of Evos' performance this season, it feels so sad for me. Because when we see, you know, my Evos in the venue just shouting and screaming yeah. and supporting Evos, you want Evos to win. You kind of root for Evos after seeing her in the stands together with the other Evos fans. But unfortunately, yeah, they haven't been getting the wins. Mm. Now, even with a 1 0 start, they're 1 1. So, hey, man. Do it for Evos. Do it for mommy, Mama Evos, all right? Is Evos. she in the crowd, though? I don't know if she's in the crowd today. She's her. usually always in the crowd, but I'm not too sure if she's in the crowd today. I didn't see her, so maybe she's not in the crowd today. But that just shows the diversity of supporters mm -hmm. for the esports world, right? It's not just young kids. It's not just teenagers. It's not just oh, for sure. young adults. Would you, would you call me a young adult? Yeah, I would call myself a young adult. I'm pretty sure that's something that like <laughs> others need to decide, Eterna. What happened to the, the hair, by the way? I thought it was like there's a... You had like the... It's gone! Look, I have the bangs a million at? skins. The bangs are back. I have a million skins. Uh -huh. okay. In-game as well. In-game? In-game as well. Wait, I, just, it, I thought you had a million skins out-game. Out-game and in-game, and you know why? Why? Because I use GoPay. Is it because you get the, those cash back points? Yes. Is it because you can transfer? Oh, right. Not just that, but I don't use as much money as I would normally because of GoPay, so I have extra money to buy skins in the game. Hmm. You're taking a, you're you're abusing the system. Mm -hmm. You're exploiting the system. Yes. Hey, don't hate the player, hate the game. We love exploitation. <laughs> Context matters, ladies and gentlemen. Not Flip in that, that way. <laughs> but of context. You can also join and answer the daily quizzes at 10 a.m. It starts at 10 a.m. in the GoPay app for all the matches. So you guys can go and vote, predict as well. Try your best there. And also, during MPL matches, there will be random codes that appear on your screen that you guys can use to redeem some GoPay coins or some other promos. And because I've saved so much money, I don't only use it for in-game skins. Hmm. So, what else do you use it for? I yeah. use it to buy myself an Oraimo. Oh. An Oraimo? Mm -hmm. You just get one of the buds? No, it's it's like a it's a package thing. Is it? You don't just buy well, one. I think so. When you have you buy your earbuds like individually? That's that's new. That's because I never buy. I have never bought an Oraimo. I've never I've never tasted quality. You're Arashi, missing tell out. him. Tell him. Bro, it's the ultimate choice for gamers with Edith's distinctive sound. Edith? Right? Yes. Like the hero from MLBB? Yes. yes. Mobile Legends Bang Bang? Yes. yes. The tank? Yes. <laughs> yes. Chefin's favorite hero. Onward, Ooh. Earth Shatter, Primal Wrath? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
No, you use that and take your gaming experience to the next level. Because, come on, now like you're experiencing the in-game stuff outside of game. Like, Eternal having skins in-game and out of game. You can't just have the drip in-game, man. It's just hand gestures. Yeah, just gestures. Don't well, forget to use the code though, right? Oh, Arashi, right. Yes, right? yes. Uh, Oraimo MPL to get a discount. You want that discount. Because with that discount, you can get even more value by getting yourself a Samsung Galaxy. Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You guys get to sit in Sheesh. the VIP seats. Team Galaxy Zone right in front with all the BAs and the coaches and the special people. The special people. Z people, the Gen Zs yeah. with the Z flips and folds, but it's okay if you're Gen S because you can get the S series, or maybe you're Gen A with the A series. I don't think that's what they call generations, right? I think it's Gen Z and then boomers. No, that's, that's everything. No, it's no, just Gen there's Z millennials. And nah, you guys are boomers still. There's Gen uh, X now, no? Uh, uh, yes, there's a Gen X now. Yes, there's a Gen X now. What's Gen X? Is that like two year olds? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's Wolverine, you know. <laughs> oh! The, the, the X-Men. <laughs> we'll see. Previous game recap, though. It's in Deadpool 3. <laughs> so, hello. Huge I Ackman. Watch that. I love Huge Ackman. Huge Ackman. You're right. I don't think that's how you <laughs> pronounce the actor's name. And now there's Sway, Swale O. <laughs> and okay. Fluff Y. Fluffy just wasn't able to do as much. And if you look at the, the damage still, he was doing a lot more than the rest of his team because he was doing what he was doing in game number one. It's just the fact that like now, R Rebellion is a lot faster, he is slowed as well, and his team can't really follow up on those plays. So just like that, it's more of a compositional adjustment. It wasn't an individual one hero kind of change. Interesting. Solo. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's going I'm on still... here? Why are you laughing, Rico? Is it the huge Ackman thing? <laughs> What's going on? The Australian actor, huge Ackman. <laughs> I love him. How about Brand Z? <laughs> what? <laughs> Brand Z. Brand Z. Brand Z. Brand Z. <laughs> Mr. Brand Z has been pretty good, don't you think, Eterna? On the Roger? <laughs> Brands? Say it right. <laughs> Brand Z. Why Z? Why not Z? It's cooler, Eter. Z is like because he's a Gen Z. He's Gen Did Z. you say Zendaya or Zendaya? Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> now we got you thinking, huh? I was so confused. <laughs> Can somebody get me out of here? Do, do you say Zimbabwe or Zimbabwe? <laughs> I want to say drafting phase because that's what we're going into, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Here it is, at game number three, the decider game. Presented to you by the official tournament smartphone, a Samsung Galaxy. And again, and again, and again, and again, Evos have opted to go back to the first spot position with the Luoyi and the Kaja Ban. Well, this is the position they used to get the victory in game one. So I have to see if the, if the first pick is what they require. But of course, Rebellion has adapted as well, banning away the Nolan and, no and the Mathilda. The Are you going to let go of the Angela though? That is a question that I think is a bit more critical. Nope. All right. Angela gone as well. But Faramis is open. It is. It's up for grabs. It didn't really work out for Evos though, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, now, they ban out the Baksha. What if they left open from last Phase. It's Vixana and Ruby. It was actually banned out by Rebellion. So, Vixana, Ruby, Arlet. Mm -hmm. These are the first picks. Hey, maybe they go back to the Fredrin now that the Baksha has been banned out. But nope. They just want to take that away from Mr. Low. Mr. Sway, who sways low. It's almost like... I mean, in Game 1, Evos had the Novaria and they won. Game 2, Rebellion had the Novaria and yep. they won. So, with both teams very tempo-heavy and with so much emphasis on the macro maneuvers, Little Varia becomes here. a big problem. Break and now I rules. think Rebellion will have to be a bit more careful letting go of all these other heroes that was that were able to really stick onto them. That's only that was only able to be eluded by the Novaria slow. Now without the Novaria in their hands, and in fact being slowed more by the Novaria, they have to go for slows of their own, or like we were talking about Mirko in game number one, if they pick up the Rafaela, hey, that's the slows all gone. That's definitely a possibility that they can pick up here, but Rebellion, they opt for something different. They go for the Valentina first. So they're 
perhaps trying to share the fact that they can utilize the Novaria ult to go yes. for that hitbox. Trying to even out the leveling field. And a fun fact is, Roger's win rate broke. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you're right. It's no longer 100%. Uh -uh. He's no longer Gold D Roger. He's just A He's Roger. He's just <laughs> A Roger. Oh, because A Roger. <laughs> See value in yeah, Eterna. Yeah. Anyway. But, yeah, anyways. The this, Fregion. right? I was actually thinking that the Valentina pick actually kind of removes almost... Uh, it doesn't remove it completely, but it does make Evos think twice before they go for a Minotaur again, right? That Minotaur, Minotaur. ultimate can be stolen away by the Valentina. Oh, never mind. Because, well, yeah, it's still, it's still... Evos couldn't pick it up because they would give it up to Rebellion. So Rebellion are the ones who just take it up for themselves now. So the final slash is what Evos have that can be taken by the Valent. Will we see an Assassin jungler, though? That is something from, from Rebellion. That's something I'm very curious about. Because it seems like Novaria just is that has that much of a pesky issue. Either in game one, Cars was trying to go for the flanks, but with the mid tower still up, he couldn't find space. So if he can find, if, if Rebellion wants to go for a flank, they need something like an assassin, or they can take out the turrets. Did you realize something? No, no, it's not possible. I what? See lots of no, brain. it's not possible. What? what? Say it. No, I was thinking Hanzo. Oh, oh. it's possible. Wait, no Red way. Already. No, uh, sorry, that's the uh, wrong side. For Rebellion, right? Yeah, for because Rebellion. that was what Vincent used before. Mm -hmm. Hanzo. I was thinking about that as well. This is one of the... That's why I was cu curious. Like, is it going to be an assassin of some sorts? The Hanzo, considering the performance so far, didn't really come to mind as quickly. Me. But in this situation, it's going to be a bit tough as well. With so much crowd control and damage, it won't be as efficient. I feel like something else, something that's a bit faster, would be good. What assassins are possible, Fanny? Joy, Nolan. Joy without Angela? We saw it from Kyrie yesterday. Didn't yeah, seem like he needed Angela, but that's it's Kyrie. True. true. That's also true. It's Kyrie. Hmm. Yeah, with the Nolan banned out, the Joy maybe comes to mind, but Evos don't really seem to be thinking about that. They're banning away these big teamfight EXP laners. So it's almost like we said earlier, simple seems to work best. They're just going back to their roots, get some combos, get some crazy playmaking tools, and let's not think too hard about the macro game. With Natan being taken out again, it's putting brands in a particular position here. What hero do you want to utilize? Are you going to go back on the Clint once again? Bruno is still available, Brody as well. What suits best here? Dude, with this combo, the, the bro doesn't seem too bad, right? More playmaking tools, a good AoE to follow up on a big final slash, perhaps. Good in the lane against the carry. I would go for that, but, you know, I'm, I'm also not a gold lane main. Wait, Harris? Does Harris work? Time to it drop depends on the physical the damage that they... Oh, they ban out the joy. It depends on how much physical damage they have, right? If they already have enough, if the Arlet wants to go damage, and if they are happy with the damage that the Arlet and Fredrin can output, then sure, they can go for a Harith. But I think right now they need a bit more DPS. They have a whole lot of burst already from this lineup. Something like the Clint would work for Evos, especially in lane against that carry. They can also go for the safe brand's choice, the Clod. We've been talking a bit about the, about the Uranus. If we're concerned about big burst damage, but not continuous shred, the Uranus can be a tool here to really nullify the Novaria, to zone the Novaria away as well, for Rebellion. Yeah. It's not Cars though, it's a Lapu. Exactly. It's a Lapu though, so more of an aggressive approach here, and very teamfight centric. So, Evos, they did show that they have better macro rotations. They can fall back on that if they really feel like, dang, with the Minotaur and the Lapu Lapu, this is getting a bit too chaotic for our likes. Wait, so is the Arlet for Fluffy or for Dreams? Could be both. Still Flex. Yep. Yes. We'll go to Flex. Hmm. Interesting. For the XP, Fluffy. They actually banned out the Yuzong for themselves, so... I don't know, technically Fluffy can. We have seen Fluffy play the Pachito, by the way. So the Pachito could definitely work in the side. They go for something different. A CC for Fluffy, this hero, without the Angela. 
hasn't been too successful. Even with the Angela, the win rate hasn't been too good. They decide to pick it up though. Some confidence for Fluffy. It's good mobility, good lane bully potential, and good 1v1. This might be it was a signal saying that, okay, we're going for the macro play. We, we slow you down, our jungler can be mobile. We have good counter engage, and we have a CC that can be rotating a lot more often than a Lapu Lapu. For Rebellion though then, are they going to go for... Anzo? No. Oh, Fanny. Fanny! It is going to be an assassin. There it is! Is this Vincent's first time picking up the Fanny this season? It is. Yes, it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He was pretty good with it last season. Yeah. There's no lockdown for Evo's two, man. The only lockdown they kind of have is that Fredrin with the knockup. Yeah. And if the Arlet can catch a flying Fanny with the final slash. Watch him do it, though. Watch him do it. <laughs> Watch okay. dreams do it. Dreams. Oh, right. Let your dreams be dreams, dreams. You gotta shine in the reality? Buff. What? Huh? Huh? What? Make it a reality? Is that what Shia LaBeouf said? Don't let your dreams be dreams. Doesn't, dreams. He, doesn't he say let's do it? Just do it. Just do it. Make your dreams come true. And let's just jump into the land of dawn for the final time of this series. Ladies and gentlemen, will it be the White Tigers or the Blue Bulls? as both of these blue teams want to make it to the green zone by the end of week number four. Here it is, EVOS Mobile versus Legend. Rebellion Esports. All right, heading straight into it. Vincent with the Fanny, we'll see how it performs. When it comes to clearing, I think it will fall behind just a bit. But without the lockdown available for EVOS, you have to wonder what is their adjustment now, knowing that there is going to be a Fanny, are they going to try and protect the Novaria a bit more? Are they going to try and send Annabelle more aggressively into the jungle? Because there are different ways to deal with a assassin jungler that we've discovered in the previous seasons. Looking at the emblems by Gamesmax though, Moai with the Master Assassin now finally trying to go and edge it out against Brands, who does not go for the weapon mastery. He's going for Tenacity, knowing that it's going to be a very tough, high damage, high action game. I mean, so far, to answer your question, EVOS have done nothing, right? There's no invasion to the jungle whatsoever. It looks like they're playing a standard game. But meanwhile, here already, a lot of damage being traded here in the mid lane with Kalakun on the Novaria and Suelo on the Valentina. Oh! There it is, already, first blood. Mm -hmm, with the Fanny. Audix Easy will fall too, though, but it is. Romer traded for Romer. The kills though. One on Swaylo, one on Dreams. Definitely worth it for Rebellion. Swaylo has a quantum charge, by the way. I think we're more accustomed to seeing the Impure Rage in the hands of Valentina for more mana sustain, but he wants more HP sustain almost. As if the previous games full of poke has kind of edged him in that direction. So I guess he's looking for more utility, right? I think yes. he's looking for more, a more aggressive kind of gameplay with the Valentina, but talking about aggressive here, how does he easy gets shot back here, can Vincent secure his own buff? Dreams is looking for the Vengeance play, Vincent versus Annabelle on the Retribution, but Annabelle has an advantage with skill one, let's see it, a stun over, and it's gonna be Vincent who wins it out, Annabelle again with a premature Retribution, and he's gonna be engaged on now with oh. cars rotating, Vincent slices Dreams in the back, Annabelle finds the Appraiser's Wrath, but now it's him taken down, Fluffy dash forward, but Moai is able to flick around, a Vengeance popped by Fluffy, but he gets knocked up twice, now with the ultimate and the shot down from Clawkun, they at least get a trade back. But oh. the pattern sway low again on this Valentina with another kill on Clawkut. Super aggressive. Already 4 to 2 in terms of trades as Vincent going to be able to get that jungle away from Evos. This is a oh. 1k gold lead so far. Uh -oh. Sway low still manages to get out despite the damage being protruded onto him. Smooth with it, then sliding left and right in and out of fights. With a Minotaur, with a Quantum Charge, he can sustain back up, potentially, but no Rebellion. We understand that they are on the back foot here, but... Oh, Vincent! Okay. And what gets it. That was kind of scary for a bit. Yeah. The way he was so decisive, just dashing through. 
All right then, so we'll see. We have seen Evo's adaptation here to try and shut down Vincent. It hasn't worked out so far though, but he's still a level ahead, showing again why these utility fighter jungles are just a lot more forgiving, even when the things in the game don't really go in your favor. Dude, like I was so concerned for that turtle for Evo's as well, because Annabelle, the pattern so far from Game two, and even game three for that purple buff, Invade, is Cannaval keeps red chain early. Why, why do you think, is it just he lacks composure, or what is it, Arashi? I feel like it's the contest, especially against Vincent. You want to be a bit more decisive, but Audi, whoa! Again, going in, using Retribution on Audi. TZ looking for the play, Vincent, though! The final slash gets him out. Now, Annabelle already used the Praiser's Wrath, Moai with ultimate. Trying to shred down Annabelle, sway low, left alone, now going back and forth in the wall. Actually outplaying quite a bit, Annabelle dashing out, row. it's going to be Cars. One more slash should do it, he doesn't oh. have the Bravest Rider! He gets out! What? Alright, that trade is nullified, coming in without that last hit onto him. He gets out! That's unfortunate, man. Cars was so convinced about that play, even burning a flicker for it. Well, we'll see. It all was began by a huge invade, and you're showing, you're seeing again the power of the Fredwin. You can build defensive, build a molten core and a dreadnought armor, and yet almost one shot Vincent on the Fanny. I, th I think if you want to go against a Fredwin, you have to really play around that page of wrath. Oh, oh, the oh. castle, the knock up, and the vengeance. One last one. Vincent gets out with one HP. No way. No way. He, okay. I thought Dreams was going to go for the last hit onto Vincent, but now you can finally see Vincent struggle. Earlier on, it wasn't as visible, but Vincent's a level below of Annabelle here in this neutral objective contest with CC coming through with Dreams already in position. How are they going to be able to get this turtle? I don't think they can. Look at ultimates though. Swaylo has the final slash, Audi has the Venus Fury, but yes, they will just go for the purple buff. Annabelle will retreat the turtle to secure it. And Evo's glory pushed their gold lead to now 1.1, but back to 900. Something happened. It's a great play by. It's a good positioning play by Evo. Playing shit at Clawkin, despite being so vulnerable, he's always had backup and he's always playing around his team. So we haven't seen Vincent being able to really threaten him. And the same can be said for Brands on the Bruno. So Evo's aggression hasn't been punishing Vincent as much. But the fact that he is so preoccupied with the invade, with the other maneuvers that Evos has, it means that he can't really choose and pick his targets as reliably as he would like to. So the question is, what do they adapt in terms of gameplay, right, for Vincent? Do, does he focus on the side lanes instead now? Does he go for the split push? Because so far, one, he hasn't been able to get the cops. Two, neutral objective takes off the table. And so we see this oh. happening, but... He goes for a take on the far lane, but CC has and can do that much damage on the Fanny. What does Vincent do at this point? I don't think in 1v1, the CC, especially with the, the Vengeance, he just has to wait for the right opportunity. But the issue right now for him is for Rebellion, Audi TZ being the utility guy, but also the main frontline, the tankier guy, means that. They're losing out when it comes to intelligence because Audi he, he can't move freely. He has to move for one of his laners. Even the world he dreams. No, but Brands has also kind of outscaled Moai for now in the mid game, right? But Moai will be able to get that back once he gets his items later on. Brands is doing a real good job. He's a level ahead of Moai. Cars, defensive bravest fighter, right as a turtle spawns too. That's a big resource to burnt away. And at this point, Rebellion, again, do they want to go for this contest? I mean, right now the Fanny, Vincent is on the bottom side. Is he looking for a solo kill onto the Bruno on Brands? No, Vincent comes. They're gonna, they want to contest this. They want to look for a 50-50. Yeah, Bruno. Oh, whoa. Final slash by Sway Low. Bravest Spider by Cars. We want to go for it now. It's a full commit, but it's still a very slow take. But Sway Low. Yeah. Almost. Jump. In the mid lane, and the tier one has been taken away. Rebellion are not doing anything. Evo's Glory just completely out macroed them. Holy moly. 
Is it out macro or is it a lack of decision making coming in from Rebellion, honestly? It's both, right? Evo's being more decisive and Rebellion being more indecisive. Out macro. Once again, it's because Rebellion can't really control what's gonna happen. Even when they have damage and burst potential, they don't really force Evos into any particular situation right here. If the Evos want to go for a split push, they can. But oh, look at Moai. All alone. No purify. But he still gets out. Has the Brave Smite. Right. So for Rebellion, now they have to try to find ways to really go for a big play. But oh, look at this. Another 1v5. Super tanky though. Dreadnought armor and steals the purple buff away. That's where it gets tough for Rebellion now. Vincent. Fanny, no purple buff. Even with the purple buff, he's not been able to match Fluffy. Now without, he can only dream. They lost a turret in the bottom side as well. Look at Audi. He really desperately wants to make the place happen, but he's just waiting there passively. He knows that he needs, he needs to save the minion fury for a big engage. And because of that, he's just stuck on standby. It's gonna be so annoying for him. A rover that's used to going for those pickoffs, for those big engages. Waiting for a counterplay instead. Yeah, it's definitely not a style if you know him. 4,000 gold he already for the White Tiger for Evil's glory so far. Vincent trying to do what he can in the top lane, trying to push in that tower. But the game, as it progresses, Evil's glory, they're going to be able to pick up on this. You can already see three members from Evil's being planted there. Oh. Woo. He gets out. That's a roamer. Right? It was not an XP Arlet. Mm -hmm. And yet he's able to force Vincent away. That's not something we've seen for a while. Now Annabelle pushing the lead even further. It's almost like Evil uh, Rebellion. They're stuck on game one. They're afraid of a an insane Nolan pickoff, but he's not there. And now without the Novaria, they're so oh. You blink and you miss it. Vincent gets taken out. Cars though trying to cut the back. Minus Fury brand slide tackle. He's stunned up by Cars, but in the back of Hawaii as well. Now Fluffy diving deep. Klawkun getting engaged on by Swelo. Cars has lost the fight here. Dreams goes in and Fluffy executes him in the back with the yo-yo of CC. And Swelo, he's low, he's down! That's a 3 for 0 trade. Evos pick up all the scraps. Rebellion left them to pick up. What is going on? Left and right, this is chaos. This is disaster for the Blue Bulls. I don't think I can put it any other way, man. An absolute disaster. No options, no resources, no say in what happens on the map. Now Vincent goes oh, for a bit of a split no. push, but still, he's gonna be zoned away. Has the cables, luckily still enough resources to get out, but man, their window in the early game where they could have utilized the Fanny, not used at all. Now, like, Brands has been a nature, so what's the kill pressure? There's no kill pressure anymore towards Evo's Glory. I don't think they have any, enough damage to do much in these team fights either. Maybe to Klawken, but even then, he's just playing so far behind that Vincent isn't finding anything. Looking at the items, like you said, Mirko, win of nature is completed. There's going to be a necklace of durance built by Klawken as well, trying to counter the healing from Audi TZ. Audi has rushed the Flash of the Oasis, so he's full on on help mode here. He's supposed to enable Swelo and Moai, but without damage available to them, it's almost useless. Is there absolutely no chance that this Fanny swaps to like a utility Fanny? No. No, not with this emblem setup. It doesn't really quite work the same way. Now it's such a similar, similar situation from game number one. The ball is just caged in. No purple buff to Vincent too. He's gonna have to go back and forth into the base. He has pretty good cable management right now, but they're getting pinned down in their own turret. Moai and Sway low force. Ah, final slash from Dreams! And Audi Tz is all alone. Now Vincent going back and forth the cables. Once again, cards win a thing with Rave Fighters and Annabelle tries his best to taunt them, to lock them. Sway low takes it away. Vincent with the cable still able to dive. Oh, it's cars! Three man into the stun. Fluffy Vengeance, Evo still very healthy, still with some big waves coming down towards the base. They can go for the turret. Four-man Astral Echo reveal, Fluffy zoning them away with the ultimate too. Moai and Vincent walking together. And that's the final base turret down below, taken down. Sway low, brought back by the final slash, taken down by the Vengeance. But they're defending here, Vincent. 
Oh. Jumps in, but now ooh, one more hit for Fluffy to Yo Yo oh. as he gets out. Now Fluffy knocked out. Moai dealing damage on the Fluffy. No vengeance this time around. Fluffy gets out for now. Still trying to force the issue on Rebellion. Trying to force the base. The final Audi? splash, Audi TZ displaced and taken out by Brands and Clock Hood. Another wave in the bottom lane. Now three members strong. RBL still with Vincent going back and forth. The cables now. He's really showing what he has on this oh! body, but it will not last. Vincent gets taken out. One mistake is all it took. 16 seconds on Audi TZ. Three members now. Dreams with the conceal. Final splash. Cars dodging away, just a pixel away. Now with a winning wave in the mid lane, Cars goes in for stun, but it's not going to be able to connect as that Silo! guy from Sway Low. Trying to go in front of the fan, but he gets taken out. That's a double kill and Moai too to make it a triple kill for Mr. Fantastic. Sway Low. Rebellion. The Blue Bulls, they were clinging on dear life in game number three. But the White Tigers, they roar and they win this best of three series. What a long, arduous path for Evos, but they got it done against a team that was able to do so much. Finally, they've shown again the shade of greatness that makes Evos Evos. And the fans are just going crazy, man. Big moment for them. Big, big moment for them and for Evo's glory too. Absolutely well played to the end of it. Brands played a phenomenal game. And in the end, we did see that triple kill too. Two to one with this new lineup. The same Evo's holy lineup that played against Dewa and RRQ, but with a pinch of Brands. I like that. Brandzette. Brandzy. Okay, it does sound cooler. Does it? You do wonder if the experience from the big man himself yeah. really allows this to happen. There's definitely still moments in this match in particular that looks a bit shaky. But in general, it looks pretty good. There's it's no good. issue that seems unfixable for this squad. Hey. It's hope. That's all that they can ask for at this point, right? Being number nine on the standings for weeks after weeks after weeks, finally getting a win, finally showing some chemistry, some confidence in this, and with this particular lineup, is a shred of hope for everyone and the Evos fans in the arena who are still shouting up until this point. And with that, let's take to the interview with Evos Glory. Bude Clara Mongstar, take it away. begini nih iya udah lama sih gak denger soalnya kita kalah mulu kan jadi akhirnya kita menang bisa ngerasain teriak-teriak evos evos fans happy ya? banget happy A banget apakah ini memang karena kalian sudah menemukan player yang tetap atau sudah pas nih Mas, mau jawab Mas. oh iya dia nih yang muncul tiba-tiba ya uh, ya pasti kita masih mencoba untuk menemukan yang terbaik lah dibilang tetap juga belum tentu juga ditunggu ke depannya aja jadi menurutmu ini belum yang terbaik kah? Belum. Belum. Dari kalau dari mungkin kita tahu sendiri ini adalah minggu keempat minggu yang sebelum ini kalian up and down 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 up dikit down lagi. Nah kalau sekarang apakah trennya akan berganti nggak up down 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 down? Uh, amin aja lah kalau itu karena kita juga posisi butuh kemenangan terus kan jadi kita pasti juga uh, berusaha untuk melakukan yang terbaik dan Pengen menang terus lah. Pengen menang terus, betul. Karena memang bener-bener ngebutuhin kemenangan. Nah, kalau ngelihat ini juga ya, menang kalian ini gara-gara Klaukun kah? Klaukun? Kamu masih ngerasa kamu jimat? Kamu jimatnya bukan kan? Kamu memang jago banget loh kita semua lihat. Tapi gimana Klaukun? 
apakah dari kamu sendiri atau dari perbincangan kalian sehingga tiga kali Ben Lo Yi. Udah disiapin? Udah disiapin? Yeah. Itu memang sudah menjadi pembahasan kalian? Yeah. Emang jago Lo Yi dia. Oke, okay, dan akhirnya dia nggak ngedapetin Loi dan gimana tadi permainannya tuh? Gimana match hari ini untuk Laukun? Tetap jago, tetap seru. Tetap seru? Yeah. Tapi kita lihat satu menang, satu kalah, akhirnya menang lagi. What happened? Apa yang terjadi di match kali ini? Tadi di match kedua kebanyakan blunder aja sih. Kebanyakan blunder yeah. dan sudah kalian jawab dan game ketiga libas. Ya. Yeah. Semuanya berhasil untuk ngedapetin kemenangan. Dan kita penasaran juga tadi Bran, 100% win rate dari Roger kamu pecahin loh Bran. Ya bukan rezeki lah. Bukan rezeki ya. Tapi Rogermu begitu ganas pula. Sekarang Roger memang lagi seope itu kah? Iya karena di MPL Malaysia dan luar pun juga pakai Roger kan. Dia emang hero-nya bagus. Hero-nya bagus. Dan kalian menutup minggu ini. Dengan cukup baik, dengan senyuman. Coba kita juga kepengen dengar dong dari yang lain. Kita ngobrol-ngobrol juga ya. Dreams, gimana kondisi dari tim kalian? Up and down, up, down, down, down. UGD, kamu ngerasa gak sih kalau tim kalian ada di UGD, unit gawat darurat kalau kata Pak Pulung? Iya. Iya. Gimana rasanya masuk UGD? Ya lumayan lah. Lumayan apa Dreams? Lumayan serem. Lumayan serem. Apa yang bisa dilakukan di dalam UGD itu? Ya, belajar aja udah. Belajar aja? Sudah lagi progres belajar kah ini? Ya. Oh iya, kasih tahu dong belajar, lagi belajar. Kalian ini lagi mungkin mempelajari apa sih? Apa yang lagi difokuskan oleh Evos Glory pada masa-masa ini? Katanya Naya mau jawab. Oh, udah bukan Naya lagi nih, udah bukan Naya nih. Dipanggilnya masih Naya ya. Novel gimana? Apa yang sedang lagi kalian usahakan, pelajari lagi, kembangkan dari tim EVOS Glory? Ya, mungkin dari kami konsisten aja buat ke depannya. Konsisten saja? Ya. Konsisten? Apakah cukup? Uh, konsisten dan terus meningkat lah performa kami. Terus meningkat. Tapi gimana sih, apa yang ingin kamu mungkin lakuin juga untuk biar EVOS tuh nggak di bawah mulu nih? Pengen masuk playoff nggak? Pengen, cuman kami semua udah berusaha support mungkin. Sudah berusaha sholat mungkin. Jadi buat orang-orang yang meragukan kalian, orang-orang yang bertanya, gimana nih Ivos? Ada yang mau kamu sampaikan sesuatu gak sih? Gak ada sih, gak peduli. Gak ada sih, cuek aja ya. Jadi memang harus menjaga mental juga ya. ya. Tapi di sini ada gak yang paling panik gitu? Wah kita di sembilan terus nih, kita harus naik nih. Gak ada lah, main-main aja. Main-main aja. Siapa yang paling mungkin punya peran penting untuk naikin mental, naikin semangat juga? Bang Brila manajer kami. Manajer kalian. Manajer bayangan. Manajer bayangan. Oh. Oke. Okay. Flavi kayak mau ngomong sesuatu nih. Penutupan minggu keempat kasih dong kata-kata dari Flavi. Katakan sama. Uh, terima kasih buat Evos fans yang udah datang ke sini. Semoga week week depan kita bisa menang. Nah. Amin. Amin. Dua minggu akan break. Apa ya. rencana kalian? Rencana kita sih liburan dulu sih. Liburan dulu? Liburan sekalian lebaran. Sekalian lebaran, nah. minggu kelima MPL. Apa yang akan kita nantikan dari Vos Glory? Ya tetap kemenangan. Kemenangan. <laughs> kemenangan. Oke. Okay. Dan itu semua yang tentu yang diharapkan juga oleh Evos fans dan seluruh ya. super fans dari Evos. Evos Glory yang sudah hadir di sini, para BA juga sudah datang dan memberikan semangat. Kita kasih tepuk tangan yuk sekali lagi untuk tim Evos Glory. Caster, begitu permainannya luar biasa. Silahkan jelaskan apa yang terjadi. Oh, what was that? What? That was violence. What? Was what? that the cameraman? <laughs> <laughs> what? what? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we get it, we get it. But he's getting dragged away. He's getting dragged away now. Look at him. Look at him. Oh this is getting dragged away. <laughs> there you go. There he is. Okay, he's oh, gone. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, see the, the hope, the hope in the eyes, the the rebuilt fire. We haven't heard that chant in forever. 
Exactly. The, the Eagles oh, chant. We, we haven't heard it in so, so long, man. I'm watching it again here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's so funny. That's so funny. You have to see it. Have it's so unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is the cameraman! It is, right? You broke the fourth wall! Alright, let's tone it back a bit and talk about the player of the match. Presented to you by your official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy, <laughs> Annabelle. Sorry. He was just so consistent. Game 1 on the Nolan. Game 2 he was on the Baxia, not so much. Uh, no, not the Baxia. He was on the, uh, the Daiwa, which was doing pretty okay as well. And Game 3 was that was that fragile performance that really shut down Vincent on the Fanny. He's doing really, really well. He went with a full tanky build, knowing that he's up against assassins and burst damage instead of shred, as it usually is. He's going for all that tankiness to, in order to make sure he does get the appraiser's wrath out. And early on, it was looking kind of sketchy here when the whole invade didn't really work out. Afterwards, though, I think it was the only one that really went quite south for EVOs. Yeah. Afterwards, they made the adjustments and it was a pretty solid after. Luffy and Claw Kun. That combo all throughout the game, right? They were able to really just isolate these targets because of, again, an unlikely combo. Astro Echo. Oh, look at this. Plus Yo-Yo. Bang. Look at Bang. that damage. Oh, it was an Astro Echo as well. Mm -hmm. it, uh, yeah, it, it, it's what made Vincent get hit by the Priest's Wrath. Exactly, the miscalculations. I actually missed that when I first saw it because so much was happening, but yes. Afterwards, even here, look, the Astro Echo. No, no, not this one. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> a bit too overzealous there. But even with all the plays, it just seems like so forced from Rebellion. It almost feels like, was there no other way to really go for a fight like this instead of going for a huge flicker play? alone for cars before his team was even there to capitalize. And in the end, they're just going for a lot of YOLO plays, and they were just so far behind in gold due to how the early game the early game played out. And I was saying this earlier, it seems like they were just playing so close to each other for no real reason, especially earlier on. Afterwards, though, with Vincent getting caught out there, that was the end of the cable, man. That was the end of the match for Rebellion as well. Unfortunate. But despite uh, Annabelle getting the MVP, there surely is still a lingering question about his retribution that needs to be answered. The retries. It needs to be improved. Yeah, yeah. Especially in game two, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he won more retries than Annabelle did. That was, that was ridiculous. And even here, we saw a glimpse of that. Luckily, yeah. he adapted. He changed. But that could have been bad. In game three, it's almost like he was on fire, and even in the purple buff contest, he was literally stealing it. What? Literally? I don't think that there's a glowing wand in the inventory of Rubellion Esports. Okay. So no, not literally. But man, look at how one-sided it is when it comes to neutral objectives and turrets. There was really nothing. You would expect Rubellion to have the split advantage with the Fanny, but it really felt like this Fanny didn't really get to achieve much at all. Every single moment is spent trying to deal with the invades and there was no real attempt for pickoffs for dives in the turrets that we we're accustomed to seeing from a lot of these high-level Fanny players. So I do question if Vincent is used to this, or is it like, hey, Fanny would be so good here, can you do it? And he's like, well, yeah, but I haven't been playing it for too often recently, and all that jazz. For Moaido on the carry, going with the Master Assassin, he also went with the Thunderbolt, so he is all in trying to survive against the Bruno, that is, the matchup that's just so difficult and brands with five turrets to his name. It's a lot of damage. What is that? That's Claw Kun. You see his pose? Oh. What is does it, it JJK? Mean? No. It's not? No. What is this? It's um AOT. What? What? <laughs> is it just fingers crossed? <laughs> fingers crossed. Me. Even more than usual. The well, damage to turret is literally zero for Rebellion, by the way. Oh, so right, that's once insane. again, showing how really how dominant this performance was. Like we mentioned, zero damage to turret, man. I, it really feels like they were in game one. They were too paranoid about the well. They were paranoid, and it carried over in game two. They have some relief because of the Novaria in ga after game two with the Novaria in the hands of Evo instead. They were just confused on what to do. Novaria supremacy. 
in the Battle of the Blue. But let's take a look at the comms. We were interested about it earlier. So let's get to the golden moment by Ubes Gold. All right. This is Evos. That's what Fluffy said in the ending. He's right. He's right. So this main shot caller is Dreams, Dreams. from this the comms. Like but Fluffy was very vocal too. Yeah, he was giving info, trying to help out, you know, everybody gives him advice and then he makes the final call. Mm. So what's the call now, Mirko? The call now is for Evos to call AP Brand because they're ready for that rematch, baby. I don't think they've ever met, actually. Wait, <laughs> wait a minute. Why they're ready for AP that Brand? match. Evos Glory with this win. AP Brand, are you ready? This is Evos. <laughs> no, that's this is Evos. It's like a... It's a TikTok meme right now. Like whenever a team wins, call AP Bren up. We're ready, you know. Oh. So it's like it's a momentum because AP Bren are the best right now. So it's like a joke because Rebellion did that too when they won against Audit. It's AP. Come on, give me a. Where's <laughs> AP Bren? <laughs> it's the joke. It's a meme. It's a meme. It's a meme. But this is MLBB Buggy Buggy THR. What is that? It's. It's giving out Hari Raya, the Raya Day bonus. Yes. Raya RDB. Day bonus. Eat Alfitri gifts. Uh -huh. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. How much can you get? You Can you win a total of 400 HP, permanent skins, Ramadan 2024, Avatar Border, and more? Yes. I think so. Wow. For those who want to participate, yes. can they just search for MLBB Eat Alfitri? Yes. Why am, I, up. am I reading your mind? Yes. You know the excitement of MPL Indonesia won't end with this match or today, right? Yes! Because of course not. there's even more events because week 4 is a special all-star week. It's special, alright? You can participate in various fun activities at the MPL Arena. Join the excitement at the All-Star Mabar event, which means play together event in Jogja. And then day 2 yesterday, we had the special rave concert where we saw Melissa. How are you reading my mind all the time? But today, I That's can't read crazy. your mind. What's going on today? Today, what's the date today? 31st, 31st of June. 31st, we have an all-star cosplayer meet and greet. Hey, Turner, you cosplay? No, Arashi does. Arashi, you cosplay? Yes. Are you going to be there? No, I don't. I want to meet and greet you. I don't. You don't cosplay? Why are you so surprised? I thought you did. What? You do cosplay, right? No. No, actually. No. He does. Remember your Tsunade cosplay, Arashi? <laughs> My Tsunade. You had an Esmeralda one too. Yeah, and the Mathilda. I remember um, that. The One Piece one? Yeah, that one. Yeah, one with that the red one. robe thing. Yeah. The red robe. Well, Hancock. Hancock? Yes. You might have me mistaken with another English caster. I don't know. So. A it's chef. Oh. In. No wonder he's always in the building. But anyway, for those of you at Jogja, don't forget to check out the Pesta. All star. It's the all star. All star. Is it the move? Where is it? Because there are going to be a lot of events for you guys. Back and also, one more joke, yeah. That's during the live is. stream too, they can get 800 diamonds. You know? Oh, really? They can get a chance to get 800 diamonds. Can we get it too? Yes, if you watch. We're watching right now. I'm so. technically watching, so, so can I get, get it? Yes. Just get that eligible, right? Let's check. Let's check. It's only check. fair. All right, we're going to check first, ladies and gentlemen, before we head into match number two or numero dos. We are gonna go on a okay. break. So me, Eterna, alongside with Mirko and Arashi, we'll see you after the break. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. Let's see if I get the diamonds drop. Bro, how many diamonds do you have? Zero. You really are the richest <laughs> caster. <laughs> One top two! Hipfield Indonesia! Season three of the
Galaxy A55 A35 5G awesome tiap hari. Ini Galaxy A55 5G. The game lancar, win streak terus-terusan, bisa tahan dua harian. Nah, ini Galaxy A35 5G. Bisa terus berkreasi walau dalam gelap dan tanpa batas. Makin aman dengan Noxfold. Be awesome every day. Pakai aplikasi GoPay, dompet andalan gamers. Banyak damage-nya. Ada cashback hingga 20 ribu. Buat upgrade skin baru. Aplikasi ringan gak makan memori. HP lemot bisa victory. Top up langsung dalam game. Tanpa hambatan. Ikut asal dikasih MPL di aplikasi GoPay. Menangkan total hadiah ratusan juta. Bonus stage. Gratis-gratis kali transport kemana aja. Beli pusat harga termurah. Skin curi sekarang mudah. Download sebelum mabarkan. Di dunia games Pilih game Masukkan game ID Pilih diamond Masukkan kode promo Dan pilih metode pembayaran Masukkan kode OTP Selamat Kamu dapat tambahan kuota Update gameplaymu sekarang Games flash andalanku Bikin mainku semakin hebat Tukar DG rings Diamond dan voucher game Kau dapat Main MOBA apa aja Wistrick di tanganmu Cuma games max Makin-makin no debat Beli paketnya Dan aktifkan boosternya sekarang Character select. Where? You lapper. Stop. Pada klikin download, belanja satu jam sampai dan gratis ongkir lo. Wah, belanja online kayak belanja di toko Indomaret. You can ya siap main lagi. Let's go. Belanja online seperti di toko. me and there's no one i'd rather be you can sit around and wait and see for a moment i'll be standing free
So hurry up and wait for me. Got a bag of chips by the sea. The sun is blazing down. I've got my smile now. Here's the thing. Your chips are really make me sing. Come on, relax and have some chips with me. Chill out, lay back, I'm right where I wanna be. We've got time, time to take it easy. You always tell me to speed up, but slow down. I be kicking my feet up and just going to town. Mm. A bag of chips in hand. I got nothing planned, yeah. Good treats by the sand. You know I wanna chow down. Oh yeah. So when you ask me if I'm gonna stay, I'm promising you I will. Cause there's one thing we gotta do. Over. 
over here, Ender. Galaksi A55 A35 5G awesome tiap hari. Ini Galaksi A55 5G. Ke game lancar, listrik terus-terusan, bisa tahan dua harian. Nah, ini Galaksi A35 5G. Bisa terus berkreasi walau dalam gelap dan tanpa batas. Makin aman dengan Oxford. Be awesome every day. Pakai aplikasi GoPay, dompet andalan gamers. Banyak damage-nya. Ada cashback hingga 20.000 ribu. Buat upgrade skin baru. Aplikasi ringan nggak makan memori. HP lemot bisa victory. Top up langsung dalam game. Tanpa hambatan. Ikut aksi di aplikasi GoPay. Mendapatkan total hadiah ratusan juta. Bonus stage. Gratis gratis kali transfer kemana aja. Beli pulsa harga termurah. Skin curi sekarang mudah. Download sebelum mabarkan. Di dunia games Pilih game Masukkan game ID Pilih diamond Masukkan kode promo Dan pilih metode pembayaran Masukkan kode OTP 
Selamat, kamu dapat tambahan kuota. Upgrade gameplaymu sekarang. Get flash andalanku, bikin mainku semakin hebat. Tukar the gearings, diamond dan voucher game kau dapat. Main MOBA apa aja, wish week di tanganmu. Cuma game smack, semakin-makin no debat. Beli paketnya dan aktifkan boosternya sekarang. Character Select Twitter <laughs> You Lapper Stop! Pakai klik in the wallet, belanja 1 jam sampai dan gratis ongkir loh Wah, belanja online kayak belanja di toko Indomaret You Kenya, siap main lagi Let's go! Belanja online seperti di toko I'm me, and there's no one I'd rather be You can sit around and wait and see For a moment I'll be standing free So hurry up and wait for me Got a bag of chips by the sea The sun is blazing down I've got my smile now, here's the thing Your chips are really make me sing Come on, relax and have some chips for me Chill out, lay back, I'm right where I wanna be We've got time, time to take it easy Ooh. You always tell me to speed up, but slow down I've been kicking my feet up and just going to town mm. A bag of chips in hand I got nothing planned, yeah Good treats by the sand You know I wanna chow down Oh yeah So when you ask me if I'm gonna stay I'm promising you I will Cause there's one thing we gotta do
looks like Red Team's trying to catch Chip alone up top. But he just calmly dropped his portal and Alpha ults in to flip this fight around. A great example of skills for assisting through portals. Double kill. Cyclops is taking a serious beating from Gord. But it's Chip to the rescue. Will he make it? What a clutch save! Poor Gord just got jumped JJK style. Arlux just in time for the buy one, get one special. Man, next time, look before you enter enemy portals. Is this deja vu? Oh, wait for it! Wait for it! Boom! And Melissa joins the party! Chip runs a bit she sees! Jeez, what a massacre! And to add insult to injury, Melissa portals back to her lane without missing a beat! A skirmish breaks out. Where's Chip going? Is he gonna... He flickers to the high ground! Portals up! Surprise! Broly gets deleted! Can Red Team make it back in time? No shot! What an insane portal strat! Here, enter. Come along the way and he cleans it all the way up. Just no way for him to run. Just... Look at that, that is not the body 
semua pun dipulih coba buah pergelangan dari Mika tuh langsung berberan slow. Rafanya sudah tuh. Galaksi A55 A35 5G awesome tiap hari. Ini Galaksi A55 5G. The game lancar, win streak terus-terusan, bisa tahan dua harian. Nah, ini Galaksi A35 5G. Bisa terus berkreasi walau dalam gelap dan tanpa batas. Makin aman dengan Noxfold. Be awesome every day. Pakai aplikasi GoPay, dompet andalan gamers. Banyak damage-nya. Ada cashback hingga 20 ribu. Buat upgrade skin baru. Kita seringan gak makan memori. HP lemot bisa victory. Top up langsung dalam game. Tanpa hambatan. Ikutan solidasi MPL di aplikasi GoPay. Menangkan total hadiah ratusan juta. Bonus stage. Gratis, gratis kali transfer ke mana aja. Beli pusat harga termurah. Scan juri sekarang mudah. Download sebelum mengabarkan. Di dunia games, pilih game, masukkan game ID, pilih diamond, masukkan kode promo, dan pilih metode pembayaran. Masukkan kode OTP. Selamat, kamu dapat tambahan kuota. Update gameplaymu sekarang. Games mes andalanku bikin mainku semakin hebat. Tukar degerings, diamond dan voucher game kau dapat. Main moba apa aja, wishwick di tanganmu. Cuma games max, makin makin no debat. Beli paketnya dan aktifkan boosternya sekarang. Character select. Where? <laughs> you lapper. Stop. Pada klikin download, belanja satu jam sampai dan gratis ongkir lo. Wah, belanja online kayak belanja di toko Indomaret. You can ya siap main lagi. Let's go. Belanja online seperti di toko.
find me And there's no one I'd rather be You can sit around and wait and see For a moment I'll be standing free So hurry up and wait for me Got a bag of chips by the sea The sun is blazing down I've got my smile now Here's the thing Your chips are really make me sing Come on, relax and have some chips with me Chill out, lay back, I'm right where I wanna be We've got time, time to take it easy You always tell me to speed up, but slow down I've been kicking my feet up and just going to town mm. A bag of chips in hand I got nothing planned, yeah Good treats by the sand You know I wanna chow down Oh yeah So when you ask me if I'm gonna stay I'm promising you I will Cause there's one thing we gotta do
leave me alone. Here, enter. Galaxy A55 A35 5G awesome tiap hari. Ini Galaxy A55 5G. Nge game lancar, win streak terus-terusan, bisa tahan dua harian. Nah, ini Galaxy A35 5G. Bisa terus berkreasi walau dalam gelap dan tanpa batas. Makin aman dengan Oxford. Be awesome every day. Pakai aplikasi GoPay, dompet andalan gamers. Banyak damage-nya. Ada cashback hingga 20 ribu. Buat upgrade skin baru. Kita seringan gak makan memori. HP lemot bisa victory. Top up langsung dalam game. Tanpa hambatan. Ikut harus aplikasi MPL di aplikasi GoPay. Menangkan total hadiah ratusan juta. Bonus stage. Gratis, gratis kali transport ke mana aja. Beli pusat harga termurah. Skin curi sekarang mudah. Download sebelum mabar karena...
mudah di dunia games. Pilih game, masukkan game ID. Pilih diamond, masukkan kode promo, dan pilih metode pembayaran. Masukkan kode OTP. Selamat, kamu dapat tambahan kuota. Upgrade gameplaymu sekarang. Get flash andalanku, bikin mainku semakin hebat. Tukar DG rings, diamond dan voucher game kau dapat. Main MOBA apa aja, wishwick di tanganmu. Cuma game smack, semakin-makin no debat. Beli paketnya dan aktifkan boosternya sekarang. Character Select Where? <laughs> you Lapper Stop! Pada klik in the wallet, belanja 1 jam sampai dan gratis ongkir lho Wah, belanja online kayak belanja di toko Indomaret You Kenya, siap main lagi Let's go! Belanja online seperti di toko me and there's no one i'd rather be you can sit around and wait and see for a moment i'll be standing free so hurry up and wait for me got a bag of chips by the sea the sun is blazing down i've got my smile now here's the thing your chips are really make me sing come on relax and have some chips with me Chill out, lay back, I'm right where I wanna be We've got time, time to take it easy Ooh. You always tell me to speed up, but slow down I'd be kicking my feet up and just going to town mm. A bag of chips in hand I got nothing planned, yeah Good treats by the sand You know I wanna chow down Oh yeah So when you ask me if I'm gonna stay I'm promising you I will Cause there's one thing we gotta do Terus berlari Terus ke arah puncak tertinggi Ku takkan berhenti Hanya sampai di sini Kemenangan abadi menanti You know we won't miss if we unite our focus And if you haven't
ambisi Jalani ambisi Aku kan menyawakan hari ini You know we won't miss the three
Lanjutkan pertempuran di match kedua hari terakhir minggu yang keempat di Ampel Indonesia season 13. Semua tim ingin mendambakan kemenangan. Apalagi saat tim match kedua ini akan mempertemukan tim yang berada di posisi 6 dan juga 7. Keduanya merindukan kemenangan. Keduanya membutuhkan tempat yang aman jika mereka ingin berada di playoff untuk MPL di Indonesia season ke-13. Dan tentu saja hari ini siapakah tim yang akan tersenyum karena keduanya nggak ada yang mau ngalah. nggak ada yang mau tentu saja untuk merengut keluar dari ML Arena. Inilah dia pertempuran antara tim RRQC dan juga Kick Fab. Bude di panggung ini nggak akan sendiri karena Bude akan ditemani oleh dua best roamer. Sudah menyabet gelar itu. Dan mereka akan bertemu kembali. Mari kita langsung saja panggilkan inilah dia Baloiski dan juga Vin. Wah langsung pada rame nih. Coba tepuk tangan sekali lagi dong. Kedatangan Baloi dan juga Vin. Baloi, how you feel for this match? Gimana rasanya untuk match kali ini? Um, so excited. Excited because of Vin? Ayah begini so, Vin terus lawan Arki. Lawan Arki, oke. Okay. Kalau Vin sendiri, uh, match kedua Vin. Gimana untuk match kedua ini? Ayah, uh, ya jalanin aja ya Vin ya, jalanin aja. Tapi tentu aja kita akan melihat sesuatu bersama karena ini akan kita bahas juga nih. Langsung aja kita lihat yuk. Inilah dia untuk hal yang akan kita bahas. Karena ini dari Baloiski sendiri yang mengatakan bahwa Baloi itu bilang intinya di sini kayak komunikasi itu hal yang sangat penting ya Baloi ya. Untuk sebuah tim, untuk playernya juga berarti. Dan di season 10 Baloi ngerasa kurang serius belajar bahasa Indonesia. Dan kamu ngerasa pas Ararki udah irat dan juga Brusco udah jago. Tapi dari komunikasinya. Apa? Yeah, yeah. Jadi Baloiski, kalau Baloiski sekarang... Gimana? Untuk bahasa Indonesia sendiri udah lancar? Udah lancar. Udah lancar. Udah lancar. Yeah. Kenapa di season 10 belum serius belajar tuh? Uh, soalnya mereka bisa ini, bisa pakai bahasa Inggris, terus aku juga teman-teman masih pakai bahasa Indo. Tapi lama-lama uh, aku lihat uh, lebih lebih bagus kalau bisa pakai bahasa Inggris. Eh, bahasa Indonesia. Ber berbeda kah feel-nya? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, dan kamu merasa hal itu terjadi di RRQ saat ini untuk Irat dan juga Brusco? Iya, yeah, iya. Yeah. Kalau dari Kapten Vin sendiri gimana sih ngelihat komunikasi kalau antar negara kayak gitu Vin? Uh, ya tetap kalau aku sih tetap pakai bahasa Indonesia ya. Cuma kalau misalnya mungkin uh, kayak mereka nggak familiar baru pakai bahasa Inggris. Jadi ya mungkin 80% bahasa Indonesia. Oh jadi mix tapi memang kalau bisa bahasa Indonesia full bisa lebih lancar ya. Dan mungkin kita penasaran kemarin tuh lancar banget loh komunikasi Vin dan juga RRQ. Nah, udah penasaran. Ini Vivin kok bisa cepet banget baru dateng komunikasinya udah langsung selancar itu? Ya nggak tahu ya. Ya jadi diri sendiri aja sih. Supaya adaptasinya makin. Jadi untuk komunikasi udah lancar ya untuk RRQ? Uh, masih perlu diperbaiki lah tapi jauh ini uh, udah bagus lah. On progress. Dan menariknya adalah Geek Fam di lima pertemuan terakhir dengan RRQ mereka memenangkan matchnya. Dan bisa dibilang mereka adalah The King Slayer. Geek Fam begitu kuat ya kalian saat berhadapan dengan RRQ. Lima match loh beruntun. Kamu sadarkan hal itu nggak Baloy? Lima match beruntun kalian bisa menang lawan RRQ. Um, gak tau susah tapi coba aja. Coba aja memang, kalian udah bisa ngebaca RRQ kah? <laughs> Can you read RRQ or the gameplay? Enggak, enggak, enggak. You slay RRQ uh, part time. Ini mereka udah beda, udah, be, udah, play, udah better play style. Better play style in this season? Iya. Yeah. With the new coming two players that can come back to the team, does it make any different again? Iya, yeah, yeah, terus uh, lebih seru main, mainnya. Lebih seru apalagi dengan kedatangan dua member yang baru. Kalau dari Finn sendiri, di Mamet beruntun loh Vin, dari kamu ada sampai nggak ada sampai sekarang ada lagi, akankah itu 
menjadi enam atau apa yang kalian siapkan untuk melawan tim Geek Fam? Ya semoga uh, lima yang terakhir lah. Lima yang terakhir bisa dihentikan di sini. Kalau mengingat ke belakang, kenapa Geek Fam selalu bisa mengalahkan RRQ? Uh, ya mereka jago. Jago, dua-duanya sama-sama jago. Tapi kali ini kedatangan Vin, kamu nantiin gak sih untuk Vin coming to this match? Facing you again, this is RRQ and also Geek Fam. Apa Uh, you waiting for Finn? Oh, yeah. What do you expect on this battle? Uh, lebih seru, soalnya uh, Finn idol idol gua dari season 8. Ya, itu. Captain. Captain idol. Finn jadi captain, udah langsung jadi captain kah di sini? Enggak, oh, masih Skylar. Masih Skylar. Tapi idol, any any word for your idol? Uh, good luck heaven, Finn. Good luck heaven aja. Ya, yeah, good luck heaven. Good luck heaven aja. Oke, okay, kalau Finn untuk Baloy. Uh, good luck Evan, semoga gamenya menarik lah. Karena uh, main, sama, eh, main lawan Balo itu seru. Main sama Balo itu seru. So, kita kasih tepuk tangan yuk untuk kedua room dan kedua tim yang akan beradu. Thank you dan selamat bersiap-siap dan good luck. Thank you, thank you so much. Udah boleh siap-siap karena memang dari keduanya mereka membutuhkan kemenangan ini. Posisinya sama-sama Welcome to Hipyal Indonesia Season 3 MPL Arena, Jakarta. MPL Season 13 is powered by Moontop. Presented by official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. Official e-wallet, GoPay. Official gold partner, UBS Gold. We own this. The King of Slayers versus the two pillars or the saviors of RRQ here in match number two as RRQ and Geek Fam are going head to head in this best of three series. Welcome back to the Caster Desk here on the English broadcast. It's me, Eternal, alongside with Mirko as well as Arashi. But before we get into it, we are going to thank our sponsors. MPL ID Season 13 is powered by Moonton, presented to you by the official tournament smartphone Samsung Galaxy, our official e-wallet GoPay, our official gold partner OBS Gold. We want to thank our partners in esports, Duna Games, Games Max, Orimo, and Telkomsel. Thank you as well to our suppliers, Inomart, Point Coffee, Neo, QLED, Super Smart TV Plus, as well as Saturdays. Thank you as well to our official government partner, PBESI, for without all these, this tournament would not exist to the epicness that it is. So here it is, the second match of the day, Geek Fam versus RRQ, as they are going to battle it out for the green zone. Both of these teams are on 6th and 7th place, respectively. And with that being said, Whoever wins this is going to give us a lot of information of how we're going to end week number four. Like you're saying, RRQ and Geek Fan literally evenly matched. Just a bit of a difference in the game win lose department. But yes, whoever wins here is going to change the course of the uh, of the season so far. So we'll have to see. It's definitely important and getting as far as possible away from that red zone. 
in such a competitive season will be critical in just ensuring that you have that pass to go off to the playoffs. Um, he's vibing with the RQ Kingdom right now in the building. You can hear him right behind us this time around. Yesterday, or most of the time, they're always placed on the other side. But now, today, we get the pleasure of having them behind us now. And really, the support from the Kingdom will definitely help them here against some top opponents. Geek Fam, even though they have just lost their last match, they're still looking really, really strong. They just need to make some minor adjustments here with a boy and Beloisky being the two pillars. And hey, for RQ, two new pillars, or two old pillars, depending on how you see it. And so what gave Geek Fam the title Kingslayer? One of the reasons is that they have won all five past matches against RRQ, the Kings of Kings. It's almost like they have RRQ's number, but with the two pillars coming back, you have to wonder, does this mean that the old history will be repeated? Or is it going to be a new pattern as Luke, Hazel, a boy, and Beloisky and Chadera are going to try and take down this new roster? This new roster, this team of veterans with Lemon and Vin stepping back for our RQ Hoshi. Will they be the answer to counter all that that is geek? Is the question as we do welcome the team up on stage here. It's RQ. The kingdom rejoice as their saviors walk on the stage one more time in week four. Led by the captain, charging with the king himself, Captain Vin and Lemon, the two pillars of RRQ Hoshi. And here they are walking up on the stage, ladies and gentlemen. It's a sight to behold. I don't think anyone expected to see these two legends, Vin as well as Lemon, coming back here at MPL ID Season 13 after being away for so long. We definitely thought that it's a bit too late and it's just unnatural to see them come back out of nowhere. But within a span of a week, before you know it, the old faces are back and now the kingdom is just re-energized they have full confidence here after seeing the last performance where it really seemed like RRQ, they got a lot more solid. Up against the kingdom, trying to tear it back down, trying to take the pillars down, is the Kingslayers, the team that has been able to destroy the kingdom brick by brick since season 11. The Geeks make their way up on stage. It's Geek Fan! Geek fam and their supporters are going wild in the crowd. They want to see the sixth consecutive win against RRQ, one of the MPL ID team favorites. They want to see the King Slayer strike again, taking down almost like the newly formed kingdom. So we'll have to see. They seem a lot more confident, and we've seen glimpses of brilliance from what we are used to seeing. We'll see, man, with history behind them, with everything on the line, can they make it happen? It all begins here. It all does begin here with the coaches stepping forward, along with our lovely, our most esteemed, Marshall Danang. We gotta say it like that, man. Because we love him. Danang. Danang. And there it is, right? Other than the coach matchups here, one of the biggest things that a lot of people are waiting for and anticipating is the rumors. For so long, when we think about Geek Fam, we always circle back to Beloisky with so much experience behind him. Three times M Series, one best roamer in Season 10 and Season 11. But on the other side, with Vin stepping back, a similar thing can be said as well. Vin, four times M Series experience and best roamer in Season 8. So you can say it's the battle of best roamers. It's a battle of the experienced roamers. Before we get back into the more specific matchups, team head-to-head -head here chose the KDA higher for the side of RRQ. When it comes to DPM though, Geek Fam, especially with a boy, if he gets the pick that he needs, he can immediately go and just start outputting a lot of damage with a team win rate that's equally 50-50. Now you really have no idea who's gonna come out on top, especially with the changes to the playstyles and the players. This match is, this could be anybody's match to take. 
And now it's really all about how these two roamers can really dictate the matchup with their proactive style. Beloy has been finding more success on the reactive heroes, however. Funnily enough, the Minotaur over the Tigreal, that was a staple for him at M5. One of his comfort picks, usually pick off, usually trying to drive the pace for the team. But what is it with this different style of Beloy? Well, I think we start with the keys to victory for Samsung Galaxy. For Kick, it's to punish the habit of Lemon and his skill spamming. The way he's using his spells and even sometimes his ultimates off cooldown. They can definitely be punished if Gig can time the cooldowns. And they have to reinstate Luke as a playmaker. And to tie it in, what we're talking about, Beloisky. When this team have the playmakers that they need to really get the catches, get the engages, the rest of the team are known to just follow up with precision. But unless it happens, it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to even begin the sequence of events and plays for them to be able to take down the kingdom. And on the other side, we need to take a look at the keys to victory by the Samsung Galaxy for Rex Regum K on RQ Hoshi. And it starts with no need to be tricky, Arashi. Yeah, focus on the Skylar Sanchez gameplay. Miko has been calling it out since, was it the beginning of the Week season? One. Exactly. Hey, Skylar is just. The huge majority of the success of RRQ can be traced back to Skylar. So it starts with that, right? They have to try and fall back to what has been working and then start using that reliably. And then maybe making small variations, but not changing the, the foundation that has given them so much success. And this is it. We were talking about this beforehand as well. The battle of the two best roamers. Because both of these players, other than their experience, have also been able to achieve that award. Best Roamer on these respective series and so on and so forth. Yeah, the two best Roamers here. The Untouchable and the Comeback King. For the longest time, the Comeback King has been the nickname that Araki has held. And for not, in, not in small part due to Vin and how he's able to identify critical moments in time, critical opportunities for his team. But Beloisky is known to be willing to give up the pressure, give up the control, as long as it's for the benefit of the team. So a bit of a different playstyle. You can say you can call one more aggressive than the other. But what when it comes down to it, they are both relied on by their team. That's why it's so important right here. The matchup, who is going to be the one that gets a proactive pick, who is the one that's forced to be using something a bit more reactive to try and predict those crazy, insane flicker plays maybe, they'll, have to, they'll be on the back foot. So in the drafting phase, we can expect a huge contest in that department. So one of the last keys to victory here was Vin secures heroes that dictate geek's game tempo. Is that what you're referring to? Exactly. We've seen that for our RQ. The it hasn't been quite as synergized, but it depends, right? Now with Vin in the helm, if he can actually make the plays happen, you can see that they, they do have more success. And on this note, we would like to give you guys a little bit of an explanation as to the first team and second team criteria. So their attendance rate, they must participate in over 50% of the regular season matches in the current team and corresponding lane position. And each player in their corresponding position of every team will automatically become a candidate, totaling nine candidates for each position. So last season, in season 12, we had first team, and that was put up to a vote. But this time, things are going to be shaken up a little bit more mm -hmm. because there will also be a second team yes. for each role. So there's going to be two from gold, jungler, etc. Uh, absolutely. And also, the voting process has changed by a bit. There was already an award committee last season, but now it is purely going to be the award committee. Voted by the award committee, each committee member will have first team vote and second team vote for each position, and so on, so forth. We also have each player in the cross corresponding position of every team will automatically become a candidate, like you said. Yep. So, just a little bit of information for those of you later on when it comes to the point of awarding. That should be before grand finals, usually? When yeah. they announce it? They will announce it the day before grand the grand finals. finals. Yeah. I believe before the lower bracket finals, even. Oh, there you go. Ladies the second last day of playoffs. There you go. Very interesting. I think there's a lot of contenders this time. Last season, you know, we, there's a lot of talk about, hey, it's just Onyx. 
right? It's just basically Onik and one or two players different. It was basically Onik and Chidera. Exactly, but I think this season, there's going to be a bit of a switch up, man. There's a lot of players from all these different teams that are able to really stand out. But just like that, it turned out, we have arrived. Mm -hmm. Presented to you by the official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. This is the drafting phase for game number one. Wow. You can see Geek already betting out the Claude, the Angela, and the Nolan. Araki Hoshi, however, with the Matilda and the Joy. There was a wow involved earlier on. Crazy respect from Geek Fam. They have had crazy success with the Claude in the past three weeks. Sure, they did lose on the Claude yesterday, but the fact that they have still uh, like ar around a 90% win rate on the Claude, and they're the ones to ban it away from Skyler. That's just how much respect they have for Skyler and how good he is on that hero. Hey, for RQ, same thing, but to Mr. Luke, the Lapu Lapu that was not seen yesterday when he played the Paquito and the Benedetta. Interesting. Now, with that out of the way, the Vexana is the first pick, so Geek aren't willing to really use their first pick to secure the Claude. But that means for RRQ, there's going to be a few gold laners still quite open. And we've seen that Skylar has been able to find great success on the Natan. And here is a comment here from Beloit. This season, RRQ has a different gameplay. In a good way? In a bad it's almost way? like they changed their roster. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Interesting. One of the statements of all time from Beloit. <laughs> I mean, he's always been a very insightful guy. So. Again, on it's point, time. as always. Characteristic comment, then. <laughs> but, <laughs> the sun, wow. In a Minotaur. Undone. It's important to take note that for RRQ, they have been playing very scholar centric yeah. after going with this new roster. It seems like everyone, there has always, there always needs to be tools to try and ensure that Skylar is safe, but more importantly, has space to move aggressively. Something we haven't seen in the past few weeks. And he gets a hero that can actually carry in the late game, which is what an Natan has to offer. I think this is the same approach that they went for yesterday against Alter Ego, right? Natan in the first phase of the yes. pick. Now the question is, if this is a pattern, then Geek Fam should know that RRQ draft this way. What would be the counter towards the Natan to prevent what happened against Alter Ego? That's an interesting question. It's either it has to be either dive or something can really cancel out a lot of this this damage output that Skylar can bring out. When you were asking a question, the a Lolita comes to mind, but we haven't seen it in a long, long time, right? But something like that, they can really stop the damage output from Skylar. Will immediately just nerf the potential for RRQ to win in these long, drawn-out, late-game fights. That would be the defensive way, right? To go up against the Natan, trying to have a shield, trying to have someone to block the damage from the front. But you could go for the offensive way, with True. how it looks for Geek Fam. They want to create a lot of good space for the jungler to secure neutral objectives, create a snowball, and then finish up their draft with probably a dive pick for Yu Zong will be a good choice to go for to go up against the Natan. Anything with dive, really. And that's why the Lapu Lapu is heavily respected, banned in the first phase by RRQ. But this is the thing. That's, this is why the Baratas has so much value. Barats plus Minotaur, right? Because they don't care if they get the neutral objectives. That's a bonus to them. They've been playing to cover Skylar. As long as Skylar gets space, it's okay. They will match up against Geek Fam in their neutral objective department, but they won't be sad if they don't get it. With the emphasis we saw in, game number, in match number one, with the macro control, with the vision, Diving and of course the flanks come in hand in hand with the control, with the vision. So you do wonder if some of these teams, if both these teams are considering the Novaria. The fact that Geek Fam went with the Vexana, that means it's great card control, great engage potential to a degree. But RRQ, are they gonna put Lemon in that Novaria position? Or really want something that's a bit more active? Honestly, if we're talking about Lemon, I would love to see him on a Valentina. Ooh, I would love to see what he's yes. able to do on a Valentina. One, Lemon has an array, a, a variety of heroes that he can utilize, which means that he can play several different heroes to its utmost potential. Yep. So he has the knowledge to do so. And with something like the Valentina, that flexibility might be good for an aggressive player like him. Flexibility. That's one of the things that made Whoa. Lemon so notorious back then. How he's able to use more than just the usual Valentina spells when he was. Yeah, he stole the Raphael ult, I think, remember? Yes. Yep. So he's very adaptive with how he plays. 
The Low Yi, though, mm -hmm. we haven't seen him on, but maybe Gig are just extra careful here. They know that the alien can pull this out of nowhere. Honestly, with the Natan being picked up by RQ, you wouldn't want to get to the late game, wouldn't you? And I think if Geek Fam want to try and control the early game, something like the Luo Yi can really yes. mess up that tempo. Punch. So the Luo Yi ban makes sense here for me. RQ, instead of something like the Yuzong ban, they go for a Paquito instead. Well, Paquito is a lot more dynamic. The damage comes out faster than the Yuzong. Okay. The Yuzong is a lot more telegraphed. So if they have tools to stop the Yuzong, I feel like it's better to just get rid of that Paquito that can just two-tap your marksman if he missed positions. For Geek, though, I feel like they're going to go for... They might ban away mages that has a lot of crowd control. Aurora or Nana was popular for a while, but in once the season begun, not so much. This Valentina, no? Yeah. There you go. Should just be the Valentina. They have the Grok ult. Massive ult to take. Eternal Guard as well. So many big ultimates, so they have to take that away. Yuzong oh. gets taken away by RQ. That was the goal. So they ban out the Teresa and Paquito. We were thinking, you know, they need to dive. Now it's... What? They have to go for something like an x -Borg. I see the Roger getting hovered over as well, but knowing that there are so many frontliners here, the only dive that can shred also the front line will be the x -Borg. Pi played x -Borg too, by the way, yesterday. Did not really work. But I think with the additional uh, help from the Grok to dive, I think they can actually make it work. I think it, it's possible. But if you want to focus on backline threat, can't you pick up something like the Benedetta? Or... Yeah, not for Luke. <laughs> oh. we, saw, we saw what Aura did today. Oh, <laughs> We're talking okay. about Luke. I mean, Luke comes to mind, but okay. I think it's a bit okay. too ambitious here. Especially... Oh, actually, that's not bad. The Natan doesn't really shred down max HP, I so it, it's possible. Spray. But I don't know, man. It's a, it'll be a very bold All maneuver right here. It's gonna be X-Borg. Okay. okay. More but, generic. But I think that's that's not a bad like uh, take at all, Arashi the glue. Mm -hmm. What you wanna do is try to layer and bait out these skills, right? You have to bait out the uh, Yuzong old Minus Fury. I think he could take that much damage, soak it in with the split split. But yeah, they end up going for X Works or something different. They wanna just dive in with the Roger too. And they end up with the draft here are a Q. Oof. Yep, Novaria gonna be picked up here for Lemon as well. I figured they, if they wanted to go for a little bit more faster clear, they would have gone for Lilia, but I guess Novaria has a lot of sets to be utilized. It can be also comboed in with the Minotaur, yep. so it does have chemistry with the overall composition. And looking at the composition of Geek Fan, there are lumbering, tanky, fighting members that were supposed to dive. With the Novaria slowing them down, Hey, that, this could be a lot more difficult than you think. But of course, in the clear department, Novaria, I think actually is one of the fastest with the two spells. If you use both on the waves, you can just delete it. And here we are, the trumpets are calling, ladies and gentlemen, for the King Slayers to once again take down the kingdom. Will they be able to do this? Because if they do, it starts from game number one. Let's welcome you into the land of dawn, Rex Regim Kaon and Geek Fan. To Mobile Legend. All right, let's see how this plays out, man. The early game, I think, oof, it might be evenly matched, but Arak have more pickoffs. I think when the fights go longer, then I, I do think that with the Vexana, they can spam more with the X Borg. I feel like Geek can take advantage of that. I'm worried about the gold lane, though. A Roger and a Tan lane. Will, who, who wins it? I, I thought it would have been Chidera, but it looks like Skylar is going to be able to jump Chidera quite low on the Roger, actually. Whoa, no win for Chidera. The Lycan Pounce is ready, and they're just going to go for it. First blood. No respect from RQ very early. Uncharacteristic, random aggression there. They did win a trade, but in all-ins, then we know who takes the cake there. Wow. The fact that RRQ just kept going at it there. Something like Skylar was pressured to try and go for the, the cannon minion. If you look at the emblems though, by Games Max, tenacity for Skylar and Vin, both trying to be as tanky as possible. And on the other side, Beloyski and a boy have the agility wilderness blessing combo. So Geek are the ones that are gonna try and really push this tempo. Try and take that early game away. Oh, is going back in, like and pounce. Would have been now scratching Skylar, zoning him away from the minutes and the power of nature too. 
Another chunk of damage as he lands his skill one. Only the first part though, Hazel doing a good job on the other side of the map. Also bullying, but can't help but wonder. Luke, keep your rage, not Brave Smite on the export. Yeah, he's going for a bit, a bit more of a harassment style in the lane. But also, I'm not sure how that interaction works with the Firaga armor, actually. Because usually without mana, it gets turned into HP, into healing, but now Irad. Known as welcome. Really just trying his best to get into that turtle pit. Oh, no way! Hazel failed the Reggie. What is it today with the Varias? Geek fam scatter. Banana goes in. And they find the kill on Luke on top of that. Lemon cancels the recall. And it's the Petrify, a boy. Gets out with the flicker, has the tough boots for that tenacity. But my goodness, Navaria Day. That was a massive win for our Hyohoshi. Novaria. Eva, what? What was. I saw the Astrosphere, and Me I too. saw it aimed at, at the players, not at the N turtle, though. Same, same. How did he get it? Oh, that was just something we weren't expecting. Now, right here with that momentum here. They're certainly feeling a lot more empowered, emboldened by that moment. This guy's kind of scary now, huh? We thought it was a Sway Low thing. Maybe it's a Novaria thing. He just hit it with the Astro Sphere. Yeah, it's as simple as that, as a, That's it. a coach would say. <laughs> and right there, I think Lemon stole the Litho away as well. Novaria secretly being the key to the objective. The Voiski, though. After I go hit oh. the one last shot would have done it, Beloy with a charge defensively back. And now, oh no, the Roger's getting pinned down, Jadera! Okay, he's, he's fine. good, he's good. Oh. He's fine, he's okay. It's He'll okay. survive for a bit. But this has changed the tempo of the game. And meanwhile, if you thought the saving grace, like Keys to Victory said, was Luke, he's not doing too hot as well in his own lane. Mm -hmm. In a Yuzong lane, it's kind of hard to match with the sustain, especially the festival of blood that he carries in the emblems. It's always been a bit of a strong shot for the Utah. Oh, whoa, look at this. An interesting play from Luke, still staying with that HP. It might as well be a solo kill. A Geek Fam are looking for the bait from Luke. Banana just flies away as he far, as he waves the RQ banner. And the recalls and the in recalls. the dragon form. That's confidence right there. But here it is, ladies and gentlemen, with a 1k gold lead. RQ are already on the way to take the next neutral objective. Well, charge Hazel! Good win in the Retreat battle, but now Detonos welcome. Three man stun. Jadera actually dodges away from him with like and bounce. Hazel with a knock up. Not enough to take anyone down to get a shot down, but Hazel still is able to withstand that one. That was a great play from Beloisky. Going with the flicker wild charge to set up for the neutral objective take. Araki were able to punish to a degree, but not good enough. Those are the plays that you have to be a bit wary of, especially against Geek. The fact that a boy was able to just lock Vin down so that he can't set up with the Minion Fury as well. Wait, was was Irad in the in the pit in the turtle pit? I, I believe he was in that contest. He's was a level below of Irad right now. Mm -hmm. Irad was in. That the was pit. a big steal. It was. Wild well, charge comboed in with a terrify and the Eternal Guard. Now Vin, oh, getting scratched down. Lycan pounce, still able to survive for a bit, but scratches and the chase down from the Roger. Deadly. That barrier from Boloiski. Back then, it was. He does have a reputation for having great barriers, very intelligently placed. But there, we're seeing it once again. And look at this. They're playing for the turret, and Skylar is just getting pressed. Mm -hmm. Trying to shut down Skylar as fast as possible, and entropy forward by Skylar. But now Hazel tries to dive in. Appraiser's Wrath and the taunt. Skylar gets out. A good curse blast to make him or get him low. Lemon. Let's see. Lemon <laughs> shoots down the bush. Not where the Geek Fam members are. They're trying to pull back, way back. Now, with that momentum, let's take a look at the items. Feather of Heaven completed for Skylar, so attack speed is there. Chidera, though, will have some burst available. Going for the Thunder Belt. So now this is a, another adaptation. It's a quote-unquote defensive build Roger. Usually we see the Has Claws rushed quite early on, but he's not going for that route. He might go for an endless battle as well. Ooh. He gets away in that 1v3 situation here in the top side of the map. But it looks like Geek Fam are looking to push in order to get a bearing on the next neutral objective take. Loiski. Flicker, Eternal Guard, knock up, Blast Insanity, blows him up, and a boy just picks the kill up, the Cursed Blast. 
Lucas Lowe, though, then hovering over, but not going to commit. Luke already low. Hazel on the turtle. 50-50. Oh, the retreat comes in. Mirad chomps up on Hazel. Detson as well comes to Minions Fury. Comes down as well as a barrier to displace Vin for a bit. They're going for it. Knock up. But look at Arad and Lemon. Geek Fam will be able to disengage. But that's Geek Fam negating that gold lead from RQ. It's back to a ping pong. Mm -hmm. Power of Nature and the last Insanity. Hazel wants to get his hands on this purple buff. Gets oh. chunked even lower. Meanwhile, in the back. Uh-oh. Back up from Banana. And the purple buff goes to Beloy. There's a Beloy of all people. But this is a chaotic game we're having right here. A star contrast for a match one where it's a lot more calculated. This is what we like to see, but Geek Fam, I think in in a way they're getting these a lot of these small victories that aren't really as apparent at first glance. But you have to remember, if the game stays even all the way to the late game without without any single team getting a gold advantage, RRQ has a lot of value to be had there. And Irad's damage right now, it's very subtle. It's not very flashy when he uses the spells and starts stomping on people, but it does add up. I'm worried about Skylar here. Geekfam haven't really been able to shut him down per se, so mm -hmm. what you say is right. As long as... Oh, oh Beloisky, there it is, the shutdown. Can they get it? Nope. He has an entropy oh. safe, and there was Vin and Irad, two big boys. There it is. Against big boy Beloy. But at least you know that Geek Fam, they are trying to figure out a way to shut down Skylar. Sure, maybe it wasn't then and there, but something's brewing here. Especially with Beloisky on something like the Grok that will be able to initiate these things. Especially later on, we've seen Beloy make a Hail Mary play. Mm -hmm. It's almost like his specialty. But for now, again, you can see that Skylar in particular, he's just nerves of steel. The fact that he was buried away and wild charged you would think that he would be concerned about an engage, but he just stands there. Wow. I'll play it again. Clean escape with the Purify. And Skylar gets out, but they are limiting as much as they can the farm from Skylar, so he is going to take a while longer. With that in mind, they're going to try and play for the neutral objective again. Now they have to play this mind game in the sense that they have to worry about Geek making the first move to really shut down Irad or Vin before the play can be even initiated. Luke still zone in the back, Irad getting chunked as well by Chidera. Vin knocks him up though, goes back to Lycan form. Super agile on the Roger. Hazel still on the Lord, just holding it down as Chidera rotates into the mid lane, tries to siege it down, Eternal Guard onto Skylar. No, purify this time, Chidera. Defensive Lycan pounce. Oh, Beloisky's reload. Skylar needs one more hit and he gets it with the last proc of the passive. Going back and forth. That's on welcome. Now on to loop. Only the tanky member with the Farago armor still. Black Dragon for his Vin jumps into the back with the Minus Fury. Banana chasing Chidera down with a curse blast now helping him out. Chidera gets out to safety. But the Petra Five Furious dive goes onto a boy. Good flicker out of top boots. No further initiations. RQ with the resource advantage. Luke still hovering over the Lord Pit. The weaving in and out from both of these teams have been impeccable. Luke gets caught really low though here, and that is a massive disadvantage. If a Luke can't open up the vision, open up the Ooh. map, and there you go. A boy gets chunked down as well. It looked like Geek didn't want to go for a 50-50 because Hazel is still a level below at the time. But now, it might be a different story. Well, Skylar with entropy forward while charged there. And his as Hazel picks up the Lord. A good eternal guard earlier to stop your rat in his tracks. But there was a trade in the mid lane from RRQ. And they won't lose too much on the slow pushing top lane either. Unfortunate for them to lose the Lord, but so far it's, an, it's not the worst of things. And the longer the game goes, once Irad, not Irad, sorry, once Vin has the Flask of the Oasis, the healing is going to be so much more. And you saw earlier, some of these fights end up being won just by sustain alone. The lane siege attempted by Geek Fan here. Chidera can go back and forth. Okay, I'm noticing, I'm noticing something earlier with item builds. There are two different builds for Roger, the attack speed, and then now the DHS into Endless Battle, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> charge. And the taunt as well, Furious Dive by Banana with a Miss Fury, but it's all baited out. Chidera is still free in the back. That's a death as well. Come on to Hazel, stunning two members up, but Eternal Guard cancels him. Hazel gets shot down, a good snipe 
Threading the needle, Lemon. Oh. Meanwhile, in the back, Banana getting a trade back, getting the sustain. It survives. Eternal Guard is chasing Chidera, doing no the same way. thing now. Looking for no like no a Banana gets out. That's a two for zero trade. Pull up. Okay. Whew. For RRQ, Banana. That split second decision making that he goes for. He goes into the Black Dragon form, tries to zone out Chidera. But he ends up taking all his resources out on a boy who eventually can't dish out the damage needed in these team fights. It even takes him out as well in the end of that sequence of that play there. Just like that RRQ, they're trying to equalize on the neutral objectives. But you can see, once again, the fact that the Novaria is available for RRQ means that when it comes to the chase, the maneuver on the Land of Dawn, RRQ are just coming out on top right here. Geek have some tools to really try and catch up. But it's not enough for them to really find a decisive catch towards Skylar, towards Lemon. How do they do this? Every time Beloyski goes in for a play, Skylar's been able to outmaneuver it, either with Purify or just with his ultimate. It's so the fact that there's, that's the, there's only one tool that Geekfam can use. Can they go for just pure damage from Luke? Is that, a, is that an option? When he's 0 and 3, maybe later, for now, I don't think it's gonna be a really realistic option. Player's gold like UBS Gold shows Chedera all the way up there, but only 300 gold ahead from Skylar, so not the kind of outcome that they would want to have. Boyski though. Uh oh, that's in his welcome, catching Beloy, now bringing him back all the way while Charged though. Knocks two up, disengage in the back, Banana. Black Dragon form looking for an initiation. A good eternal guard to cancel RRQ's plans. Three men, Astral Sphere there. The AoE, that is unexpected at times. Well, now with Skylar clearing the bottom wave, leaving one minion there, that might end up pushing yes, in favor of Geek, actually, if, if it gets killed fast enough by this initial wave. And RRQ, they're setting up for the Lord Dance. They have the tools, but can Geek from once again just start a sequence that will allow them to get this? The Rats level 15, mm -hmm. Hazel's 14. They need a distraction. That's the Astral Echo. That's the Wild Charge coming out with the Eternal Guard as well. Finn in the back right now with him. It is Fury and Beloy gets traded down. Irad wins the retreat battle. Luke caught in the midst of it all. Now chomped up by Irad. Spat back just to give Skylar the triple kill. Three to zero. All for RRQ. Again, Skylar, time and time again, he proves why he's always regarded and considered as one of the best gold laners here in MPL ID. And this is it. Give him time, give him farm, and chaos ensues. Bit of flicker on the knockout, my boy. Force a flicker as well. Chedera holding the lines. Now with the minions spawning back in. A shot down in the mid lane, not connecting. Chidera trying his best to go for it, like and pounce as well. Skylar going for it, wild charge to the back. Now three members hit. Chidera dodging away with a like and pounce once again. Another like and form, Hazel with a three-man taunt. No stacks for the ultimate though, gets shredded. But Geek Fam have defended from the Lord. Now two more waves to defend from. Luke in the front, holding it down. Irad with a winner touch oh, of oh, Getting caught in the minutes. Your is the last one standing, blows him up, but it's not going to be enough damage to take anyone down. As the Astral Echo gets placed, Chidera. One last desperate moment, but RRQ with the two pillars stay on top. Game one. And the kingdom goes wild in the crowd. And again, this new RRQ lineup has been so strong. Skylar is still the, the main carry, but with Lemon and Vin coming back, it feels a lot smoother. It feels like they're able to support Skylar and become one. One vision, one motive, one team. It's crazy. You would think that the changes in the roster would impact only those lanes, only those positions. But somehow, it looks like the team overall plays better. It looks like the drafts overall work better as well. RRQ on a roll right here. And the kingdom is here for it. Look at him. I think their key to victory got derailed from the start when Lemon was able to get those Astral Spheres in, right? That first steal kind of stopped the snowball. It's a very small win in the grander scheme of things, but if you take a look at it again, that was the key to snowballing in the start of the game. So Lemon took that away from them, and it seemed like they were always, even though Geekfam were leading a bit by bit, 
like Arashi said, RQ had a way to equalize at all times. Kept the gold lead as low as they possibly could. You know, once they reach that the critical mass, you know, mm -hmm. the time for Skylar to just blow up. You see it again, every single time he explodes into a fight that's engaged by, initiated by RRQ. Triple kills, double kills, all the time. It's insane. How does he do it? I wonder what Skylar's win rate on the Natan is. Has he lost a game? That's a fun Natan? fact that we all have to check. I believe he has lost against Onyx yes. Game 2. Okay. Natan. So it's not 100%. It is pretty high though. It is very high. Almost as high as the player named high in Aura. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a different team. Is it? Oh yeah, it is. Okay, here it is. The MVP, Skyler on the Natan. No question. I mean, what is there to say? He was... By the way, it wasn't that, oh, RRQ is distracting everyone so much, so Skylar has been free farming, free hitting. He is being targeted in the beginning of the game, in the mid-game, in these team fights, and he's finding ways to just stay more than just relevant. He is impactful in these situations, in these skirmishes and team fights. He lost first blood. <laughs> he gave up first blood, you're right. right. You almost forget about it, and that's the only death. Your well, first blood. Speak of the devil, man. Skylar right here. Wasn't expecting that damage. Here's as a player of the game highlights by our official gold partner, Ube as gold. Right there. How? Wait. Hazel just miscalculated. But it doesn't seem like the atmosphere like connected directly, though. The yeah. AOE, the unexpected, uh, you know? Exactly. It, it, it really is very slight. But look at this. Whenever the fight goes according to plan, plays out like the drafts, should dictate, right? Minyu and Fury to multiple people, and then Daytona's welcome to stay in the pit. They have a good time, man. And even early on, when Skylar can't pick up the pace, can't output the damage, banana, man! A lot of people have been doubting him, calling yeah. him the, the peel that slips the whole team sometimes. <laughs> oh my but God. look at him! When he gets rolling, oh man, he makes the plays happen. Where was he the first three weeks? I think he was in and out of the roster several That's times. True. He did make plays happen, but overall though, he's just looking a lot cleaner now. Mm -hmm. And you do wonder, again, is it a shot calling thing? Is it a a confidence boost even? Yeah. You have to wonder, because he looks very, very different. I don't know, man. I have, maybe I have this. I don't know. To Dara, my boy, it feels like he's a bit too safe in a lot of these team fights. You know, he's not brawling. It feels like if this is his playstyle, he should have gone for the att attack speed build. You know what I mean? Like, this build is meant for brawling, but he's not doing that. He has a Thunderbelt, an, an endless battle as well. He wants to be in these team fights. And in a lot of these situations, it seems like Luke is in there, Beloy is in there, but Chidera is just like marksman form, just shooting them down from the back. It's like, cool, but also, don't you want to fight? You have to wonder, because again, it's not a typical marksman playstyle, and Chidera, he has played these unconventional picks before. I mean, it's a throwback, you know, throwback to when he played Valentina Gold, remember? He's used to playing some of these short-range, brawl-heavy heroes, but I guess it's just something he's not used to. Or maybe the call from the team is to go for a front to back, but be able to keep up and chase down RRQ once they have a bit of a lead in the fight. The fact that they weren't unable to secure a lead in the fight, I think was the main issue there. And with that build, he has a lot of burst damage, but as you say, Mirko, if he's staying in the back trying to output DPS, he really could have tried and compete with a late game Natan yeah, on exactly. a Roger. Looking at the numbers right here, damage dealt actually still a boy. That's surprising. No, not for even me. a Novaria. That's surprising. Oh my lord! Zero percent KP for Hazel. Oof. I mean, they got three kills, so, I mean, yeah. But yeah. But, but still, like, right? Like, in a 15-minute game. Mm -hmm. A lot not of the times... You see. A lot of the times, a boy was, like, shut down by Banana. Almost all get, the time. How did he get the highest damage dealt? It's, well, it's a boy things, bro. Is it? Yeah. It's also it's a boy the things. fact that it's a Valentina. And if you look at the compositions from both teams, generally... You mean Oh, Vexana, yeah, yeah, my bad. Yeah. It's the Wrong Vs. V. The, the Vs just keep getting me. But the fact that everyone's crowding together in the big fight, uh, Vexana outputs a very surprising amount of damage with the Curse Blast. Wow. And several, several times, you have to pay attention to minions and neutral, uh, neutral creeps 
in the Land of Dawn. Because you have to remember, if a boy drops a Curse Blast and it takes out a minion, there's extra bits of damage coming yeah. out there. And good Vixana players are so good at using that as an extra layer of burst. Don't forget the Glowing Wand also always just taking on these right, opponents. Right, the Eternal Guard just, you know, doing cutting, his thing. You cutting know? the weeds, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out the farmers of Indonesia. Sorry, it's going. Why are you confused? That's Vixana's Eternal Guard, man. It's the Lord Lil Bro. <laughs> you know, back then it was referred to by a lot of players as, as Lord. A, yeah. As the Lord, the, the, the smaller Lord. He's the Lord Lil Bro. You know, fun fact, I used to play Vixana before the rework. Mm -hmm. When she was bad? <laughs> yeah, when she wasn't that good. Ooh, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> fun fact. We don't, we don't talk about old Vixana. We'll talk I, about I, this interview instead? Yeah, sure. All right. Okay. Let's head to a short break, ladies and gentlemen, as you guys can enjoy the interview with Bude Clara Monster. See you soon. BCM. Bude Clara Monster. Oh, yeah. Bude Clara Monster. Lily. Aku Mackenzie. Aku Kudel. Bertiga ke sini ramai-ramai pasti dukung Geek Fam dong. Pasti dong Ude. Kalian bertiga memang cuma tiga di sini tapi di belakang terlalu ramai banget. Iya nih, Geek Fam itu selalu dukung Geek Fam kalau misalnya tanding. Iya, dan ramai banget loh. Tapi gimana sih caranya kalau kepengin tuh masuk jadi Geek Fam Unity? Oh, caranya gampang banget, Bude. Caranya tuh tinggal kalian ke Instagram official Geek Fam Unity, terus di bionya itu ada link yang bisa kalian klik dan langsung join jadi Geek Community. Itu caranya ya? Iya, gampang banget gampang kan? Gampang banget. Ya? Tapi kalau benefitnya ada nggak tuh? Biasa kan cari. Aduh kalau aku join di sini ada apa aja nih? Pastinya banyak banget budaya benefitnya. Mulai dari bisa nonton MPL gratis, terus bisa langsung interaksi sama player-player Geek Fam. Ada juga diskon-diskon nih buat merchandise kita. Uh, diskon? Semuanya kupingnya langsung nih ya. Apa tuh, apa tuh? Diskonnya itu banyak sih Bude, tapi kalau mau tahu diskonnya berapa, join dulu dong. Join dulu dong. Tapi kalau dari Vesley sendiri ngelihat nih Geek Community pertumbuhannya kan cepet banget juga Betul. ya. Dan dari mereka sendiri mungkin ada info-info lagi nggak sih tentang Geek Community? Oh, Geek Community juga bisa adain turnamen antar Geek Community. Jadi kalian bisa dapat banyak banget benefit kalau misalnya kalian join turnamen. Dan bisa dapat merchandise, terus diskon buat jersey atau merchandise lain. Wah, happy pokoknya ya, bisa ketemu Vasily juga. Iya. Kira-kira nih ya, apa sih yang mungkin kamu kepengen nih? Ayo, buat kalian semua yang apa-apa-apa join gitu, ajakin dong mereka buat join. Buat kalian yang mau jadi Geek Feminity, langsung aja ikutin cara tadi, join ke... Instagram bio di link Geek Feminity. Gampang banget caranya, dapetin banyak banget benefit. Pokoknya lengkap deh Bude. Ududududu, semuanya pasti. Tapi kalau di Geek Feminity ada activity ini gak sih sebelum match gitu? Kira-kira apa sih yang kalian perbincangkan sebelum match mulai? Biasanya sebelum match mulai, Geek Feminity pada ngumpul-ngumpul kan. Sekalian bonding gitu kan. Ngomongin nanti channelnya kita gimana nih? Atau kita nanti pasang bendera yang... Uh, gede gak ya gitu. Oh itu perbincangan ada ya. Kalau ngumpul-ngumpul gitu ada nggak acara? Ada dong Bude. Kayak misalnya sekalian turnamen atau misalnya ya asal nangkrang-nangkrang ada juga gitu. Rame banget pastinya di Geek Fam Unity. Dan sekarang apa yang lagi di mungkin diucapin sama Geek Fam, Geek Fam Unity nih? Buat Geek Fam Unity ke Geek Fam itu uh -uh. semangat gitu. Jangan kasih kendor gitu. Dah. Semangat dan jangan kasih kendor. Kalau kalau yang lagi jadi hot topic di Geek Community siapa playernya? Ada nggak? Mungkin lagi ada yang banyak komen, aduh aboy aboy kenapa gini jago banget sih atau gitu ada nggak? Semuanya sih jadi hot topic sih karena semuanya jagonya merata gitu. Mm -mm. Mm. Jagonya merata semuanya. Kalau dari Geek Community sendiri ini dari Sabang sampai Merauke kah? Atau gimana? Iya kita tuh open uh, Feminity untuk dari Sabang sampai Merauke. Jadi kalian kalau mau join misalnya Jauh nih dari misalnya uh, di luar Jakarta, tetap aja join aja nggak apa-apa karena kalian bisa dapat banyak benefit. Banyak benefit. Dan kalau dari kalian sering ngeliat satu kosong lumayan mendebarkan ya. Iya tapi kita harus tetap positive thinking gitu, bisa satu sama. Bisa satu sama dulu, coba boleh disampaikan sesuatu dari Pasli? 
Uh, buat Geek Fam, semangat. Kalian pasti bisa untuk samain poin. Akankah bisa? Kita hanya bisa tahu. Dari Line of Dawn, pertempuran akan berlanjut. Antara tim Geek Fam dan juga tim Anarki Hazi. Mari kita lanjutkan. Welcome ladies and gentlemen from that interview. Average break. That was a short break. Short girl. break. But you Anyway. Know your durations, man. <laughs> Just like okay. that. The you gotta is shut know my down. durations better. But anyway, RRQ already 1 to 0 in this one best of zero. 3 series. It looks like they're on the way Two? to break. The Kingslayers' reputation oh my Lord. of being Kingslayers. Because if they can't take down the Kings of Kings... Then what Kingslayer are they? What kind of Kingslayer are they? Exactly. It's almost like you're It's almost like you're known for gold, but you don't make gold. You make like silver stuff, you know? That's something that you won't find with Ube's gold, because they make the crispiest, amazing, most beautiful, perfect gold in the world. And it's not just a good investment, obviously. They make you look stylish too. There are necklaces, there are bracelets as well. Arashi has this. You have the investment kind. Arashi has the aesthetic kind. Was last season the aesthetic kind? Did you get the, the the? It's a mix. But yes, didn't you get like the necklace? Oh, the particular necklace one. Yeah. No, I did not. The bracelet? What was it the bracelet? I think he got the phone. What? What, the Galaxy phone? The Galaxy phone. You got phone. the Galaxy phone, Rashi? I wish I did. That what the heck? Here in the Galaxy Zone. No wonder he's not sitting there. But I have a Galaxy phone. We what? got Galaxy phones. Why aren't we sitting there? Because we're casters. That's unfortunate. Man. Oh, we're fortunate. I think it's fortunate. I like this desk. Same, same. They don't have a desk, huh? They can't hide their feet. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why do they need to hide their feet? In case they're wearing sandals, you know? Like... What's wrong with sandals? So it's not formal. Okay. Okay, let's You're take a look right. at the previous game recap here from game numero uno. Mm -hmm. Tadera on the Roger. 41k damage. Tadera Roger. And even Luke Charger. damaged him, by the way. <laughs> Charger. Charger? <laughs> Sorry. Spelled with an H? Charger. Ch yeah, C A R G E R. <laughs> Charger. <laughs> Sakalangong! That's what he says. Yes. That's his, his voice alive. I can't stop thinking about Chantel. Wait, why? Do you know the clip that Naisu made? Oh <laughs> my god, yes. I know exactly what you're talking I about. Can't stop. Shout out to our friends in the Philippines, man. man Chantel, Chantel, you're a legend. Yeah, I know the clip. I look clip. up to you so much. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. I can't stop laughing. Yes, yes. Arashi, you don't know? Do I? I'll, I'll, I'll show you after the break. Maybe if MPLPH beats Onyx, then you can watch MPLPH. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the, pre the prerequisite? I don't know. We'll have to see. It's almost like they did already. <laughs> Sad face. Uh, oh. I cry every time. But now that's 1-0, you know, mm -hmm. things are looking cheery on our side over here, which is the RRQ side. But Geek, they've came back from worse situations yes. before. So we can't count them out just yet. Not just yet. In fact, I ran into some of the Geek Fan players earlier during the break. Whoa! And they seemed very, like, f feisty, you know? They're saying like, oh, I, let's get them, bro. We can, can do this. Are we gonna see BBB? We might. The triple B combo. As we enter the drafting phase for game number two. Not just yet. What triple B are you referring to? Big Brain Beloy. Wrong. What are Arashi. you laughing? No, because the BBB I was referring to was it's the Big was Boy Beloy. Wrong. What? Is the Big Brawl Boys. The Big Brawl Boys. They need to brawl, right? In game number one, they were afraid. They were gun shy. Why are you gun shy when you have claws? You don't even have a gun. Just jump in, right? No? I guess. That makes sense. That makes mm. sense. Okay. If they go for the same draft, they got to start brawling. But now... See, that's the idea, right? Usually, marksmen can't really deal with a, a, a fighter, uh, especially a strong fighter with good sustain, like a Yudong, for instance, yeah. in the early game, until some more items get thrown into the mix. That's why a lot of the compositions with a lot of fighters, they end up winning in the early game. So Geek Fam has went with that fighter strategy, and they tried to use that early game pressure to shut down Skylar. Now, with that failing, they're going to go for the Minotaur first. 
Okay. Still first pick. So no longer the Vexana, but they go for the Minotaur instead. I thought maybe they wanted to go for something different surrounding the Natan. Mm -hmm. But it looks like it's the exact same bands coming through for both of these teams. Are cute. They want. They can for the. They can go for the Natan again, but paired with something different. Now that the Minotaur was taken by Geek, I'm see Natan once again. Wow. The pairing. Do you think it's a Vexana? Should be. It could be. And I mean, Lemon seems to really enjoy playing it as well. And again, he was especially with the channeling spells like the Minotaur. Ooh. That card control can be valuable, but they went for that box shot instead. I guess wanting to have that over the Fredrin so they can lower the healing anyways by default. Logically on paper it makes sense, but it doesn't always play out that way. Especially when the Novaria here gets taken away. Welcome to the Fredrin Barats Baksha meta, man. There are only three heroes in the jungle. Hmm. I'm tired of these three heroes, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be honest with you, man. You look, you're trying to see more Hanzos? Yes, at this point, please. <laughs> Anything. Novaria and Fredrin. Mm -hmm. They do still have the chance to pick up the Vexana if they want to. Or mm -hmm. they go for the Valentina if they want to look for... The ultimates coming in from the Novaria. I'm not really sure what route they want to take I here. Find a way. I guess they can counter with the stolen Astro Echo, but yeah, Vexana, Vexana is where it's at. More crowd control, but now the question becomes what is Vin gonna use, right? The Minotaur was a very straightforward answer to dive towards your gold laner. Now without that, is he gonna go for something a bit more utility based? Something that still wants to be equally as aggressive when he is the pace setter for his team. A lot of questions here for Coach Friend to try and solve in like 18 seconds. The past, only though. hero that Vince picked up is Tick. Tigreal. Tigreal, Minotaur, and uh, yesterday, Grok. Yeah. So those are the three heroes that he has played so far. But yeah, I mean, for RQ, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Legit, Geek Fam have not changed much in their draft despite changing some, like, some... It's still the same kind of formula, you know what I mean? Yeah. Neutral objective control, good range this time it's instead of the Vixana, but... No dive still against the Natan, so... They're just gonna ban Terizla, probably ban Pekito next, and then pick up Yu Zong again, right? It's also pretty good against the Novaria. And in fact, Geek are banning away the Benedetta. So they are still concerned as well. If RRQ can get something that can really counter this Novaria, flank around, make sure that Geek can't really use that range advantage to their, you know, for their control. And you know that Banana can perform on the Benedetta. Banana Detta. Banana Detta. He's slippery. So, respect given there by Geek Fam. But the Yuzong is still an option that both of these teams can go for. If they're worried about the Novaria, they can answer with the Yuzong. If they're worried about Natan, they can answer with the Yuzong. Oh, what's the ban here? Exborg. Exborg, Exborg huh? Okay. I guess with the Novaria, they don't want to have that double slow thing going on. But Geek will ban away the Grok as well. So what will be used to even find information, stay in the front and avoid getting chunked down, getting caught controlled to high heavens? Harlot. Not what quite I had in mind, but all right. Still, Still flex. flex. Yep. Jinx, you owe me a soda. Oh no, Miracle can't talk. You have to say his name three times, right? What? Okay, Miracle's mute. I jinxed him. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I'm kidding. Miracle, Miracle, Miracle. Okay, there you go. Yes, but yeah, Arlet still flex. What, what game is that? That's Jinx, man. What? What? What's your childhood, bro? Well, my version didn't include not talking. It included buying someone stuff. Like you said earlier, oh, we almost, oh, he owes you a soul. If I talk before oh. I... But anyways, right? Oh, I see. Okay. Arlet. Good flex, but now it does give the Yuzong over. That's what I was afraid about. He brought the oh, Beatrix, Beatrix. Chidera. 50% win rate. CW played it once, and then... Uh, Someone else played it. Dude, I have it. Come on. And he lost on, on it. Yeah. So it hasn't been quite performing as well. There's a comment from R7, though. <gasps> the return of Lemon and Vin to RRQ. When Skyler is already focused on mechanics, it's all over for the opponent. Important distinction there. 
important. I think with Finn coming in though, yes, he has taken that burden off of Skyler for being the shot caller because yeah, Skyler was actually making the calls before Vin and Lemon came back. Interesting. Exactly, something that CW was doing back that then. That didn't really work as well. Exactly, in the mechanical department. CW yes. was really good in the macro, the shot calls too, unfortunately not good enough Whoa. for a lot of the spots that he was in, but Paquito. So the Arlet Rome, Paquito for a banana. Geek have no way to respond to the Paquito in the side lane if it does go late, by the way. Exactly, the clear isn't exactly available for Geek, but we've seen that with the right kind of control, the right kind of macro rotations, Eagles were able to shut down a quote-unquote split-pushing split pushing Paquito. So Geek can do the same thing, but I think RRQ most likely are prepared for it because they probably saw that game as well. Here it is. The composition has been set. It looks like the counter index will be favoring Geek Fam this time around for game number two. The stage is set. The heroes are set. But what is left up in the air is whether or not RRQ or Geek can make their way into the green zone. Can RRQ clean sweep two to zero? Or will the Geeks come back? and show everyone why they were given the title King Slayers. Ladies welcome and gentlemen, let's welcome you legend. into the land of dawn. All right, early on, very early clear, Irad getting the faster clear as yes, Vin wants to be that annoying Rome presence, but against a Fredrin, it's not exactly as reliable. And Hazel will have it, but I think as far as the early game goes, it's gonna be pretty passive. Both teams seem to really like playing for the neutral objective. Unless, of course, the Kassaker strikes and Boloiski gets taken out. Mm. But seriously, Beatrix against the Natan. I don't even think the Beatrix bullies the Natan in lane. This, uh, I think over the Roger, I think the Natan will actually have a great time in lane. Vin, though, flickering early. Rad, shield unity, vengeance, reset for Vin. It's done as well, Beloy's very low, but Vin is getting chunked low. First blood by Irad. Hazel looking for the pick back, it's a trade. But Hazel is half HP, terrified. Whoa. First blast, one more shot. Irad's chasing with a torso's passants. A boy, he's trying to hold him down, but Irad gets the concussive blast. Last second to take Hazel out, two for one to the Kings. I dare say that's the damage difference coming in between the Vexana and the Novaria. Look at how much Lemon was able to do in that fight in comparison to a boy that has used his spells and he has to painfully just watch as Beloisti gets run down. Okay, the red, shield unity, Luke, furious dive, good juke out. All right, both teams right now. Dreadnought armor rushed by Irad, so he wants to be tankier. Whereas for Hazel, he wants to have a mix of some more damage when he goes for that molten core. It's a good deal of HP that he can use to augment to improve his appraiser's wrath damage. And when it comes to control so far, I think our Q are the ones holding it. But remember, with the Black Dragon form, he can make that game-changing play. Let's see if they can here, Rod. Yeah, Lemon Droid level 4 over Beloy. He still is able to get through that wall. Eternal Guard knocking Hazel up. Now Black Dragon form by Luke, but man, that Curse Blast! There's so much, Luke, with a Furious Dive offensively, not able to find the Petrify though, however. Now it's a reset from Vin. Malois keeping his fury, knocking Vin up. Luke trying to go for some damage, and Vin, oh, the vengeance! Gets him to stay alive for a bit. Banana! Whoa. With a missed knockout strike, forced to flicker defensively, and RRQ will still be able to pick up the turtle for free. That's a 1k gold lead for the Kings of Kings here in minute number three. Despite the brawls happening left and right, they were still able to secure the neutral objective. And it's a wonder, right? I mean, Hazel was a level below, still wanted to go for the contest. Was there a chance for them to make it out? Make it out? From the contest? To get an advantage over RQ. I think it's a bit difficult, uh, particularly with the mid lane damage difference. Skylar, though, was just doing yeah. Chidera. And he can cancel out the sniper shots, by the way, if he times his own knockback in the right time. Later on, there'll be this huge combo here, the actual echo into the Renner's Apathy, but Vin oh, it just flickers out. <laughs> and recalls. recalls, gives him a thumbs up with the crown too. Any more BM? Hazel with the taunt. Oh, Vin knocked up. Oh, he might not want to be BMing, but he goes in for the oh. Final slash! Onto the back, it was a bait. He rats running Jadera down, Poissons, and Beloisky gets knocked up. Forced. 
Minions Fury, Hazel ran down as well. Chidera Hazel behind the turret. Look at the Eternal Guard, it's just slashing Chidera. You can call that a bait, you can call that just the hot headedness of Geek getting to him. But Vin, once again, kind of set that up with Irad just rotating a lot faster than the rest. He's actually sticking around oh no. here. Hmm? Won't be going aggressively though. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> just getting the vision. It makes you wonder why they opted for the Beatrix yes. pick. Because back in the day when we saw Novaria, we do see and we have seen the Novaria Beatrix combination. Mm -hmm. So do you think that's what they're trying to do? But if they want to play in range, does that work against an Atan? Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I think Vin wanted to skill one and skill two to the minions, but the auto tap sent him the turret way, turret's way. <laughs> Unfortunate, but hey, it happens. Right, but yeah, about the range. Getting out of range and harassing the opponents before going for an odd fight can work. But I think they want the Banner's Rage to try and go for pickoffs as well. It almost worked down there, but now as Luke goes for Lemon. Petrify and the Furious Dive. Lemon, Eternal Guard and the Flicker out. The Curse Blast as well. Luke trying to dive in onto Lemon. Will be able to take him down solo. Minus Fury in the Turtle side. Banana taken down by the Astral Sphere. The Turtle as well was secured by Hazel. Vin now caught in the midst of Geek Fam. Still with the Vengeance, still with some sustain, but not enough to get him out. Ooh, bloop, bloop, bloop. passive. Oh, dodges away. Happy feet from another one too. Goes back in with the QC as well. Has the sustain and Irad has just been no outplayed. Way. Luke knocks him up. Ooh. Hazel bonks him in his head. That's a huge win for Geek. Great. Four members, I think five members even. Four. And so look. Ooh. Another. Hold up. Boloisky. Boloisky might be going for this. Yes, no the flicker. No way, right? Oh. All right. Man, okay. A very unfortunate sequence of events for RRQ. Everyone getting low. It all began with Irad going initially to try and punish Luke, trying to 1v, uh, 2v1 him with Lemon, but then going for the neutral objective. He's going for Chadela now. Damage might be enough now with the help of Vin. No final slash, but he might not need it. Oh my god, the tanks! That feels bad, man. He's gone. That's it. Chadela taken out. Who's the assassin now? <laughs> and Irad still has the Dreadnought armor completed with the Blade armor already. So things are not going to get any easier for Chadera if he tries to output some damage. Same can't be said for Skylar. No real response to like a Radiant armor or something. So he will still be outputting a lot of damage. A boy is who needs to really step up and try and do that damage for his team. Because otherwise, everyone's just too far away, too far behind to try and do something. A oh boy. 103 so far. What's been happening in these team fights? Does he get zoned out by the Yuzong? No, but Yuzong's on their side. Is it banana? Why why does he need to step up? Oh, I think he's been zoned away mainly by Vin, actually. Whenever the fight begins, oh. Vin is the one that sticks in the front and it's just so slippery, dashing here and there, buying some time, and that allows the rest to try and get some more damage out. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see how he fares here in this neutral objective. Hazel gets it. Yep, Hazel does. Luke is zoning Lemon away with the Black Dragon form earlier, but it gets stunned up and chain CC with the Eternal Guard. Oh. The Furious Dive, though, cancels out the Shield Unity. He's still alone. He will <laughs> take his death like a man. He knows he's dead anyways, so he just tries to recall in their face, taunt them. Do some emotional damage. Skylar's losing, by the way, in the mid game now. Chidera is actually out trading Skylar. Every oh my god, that was close. <laughs> Missing by mere inches right there. And so Geek now, they really seem to have a lot more control when it comes to the neutral objective. Partially due to the, Min the Minotaur and Novaria. It has been just so important, but also due to Luke. Earlier on, when Skylar was scaling up, it's Banana that was making the place happen. Now on the Paquito, he hasn't been nearly as aggressive. It's always Vin and Irad that tries to go for these plays. And to be fair, if they do land on top of a squishy member, squishy hero on the side of Geek Fam, they can take him out. So I'm wondering what happens when we get to the late game. Because usually when we talk about the Natan, Natan does have a huge advantage in the late game. Range and the DPS is there. But wait a minute, Vin. Oh, lockdown oh. has the vengeance, gets out. And now stuns the boy up. 
Forcing an astral Rage Call, Irad jumping to the back with a shield, Unity Banana going to kill there as well, Venus Fury to cancel it out. Oh, the final stash missing, Janera still though, will fall to the Vengeance and Banana dives deep in. Hazel doesn't miss it all, a big bonk with the Appraiser's Wrath, finds one, but it's only just one. Hold up, Luke, Petrify in the back going in, and oh, a Furious dive defensively, forcing Skylar oh! to Entropy up, and a boy, he takes Lemon down, but he will be traded as well. Great plays from both these teams. But you're seeing it again. You're seeing it again. RRQ just diving a lot more aggressively. And Vin, the fact that he was able to survive for that long and just set up instead for his team, and the fact that he took the uh, the boost, right? The, the boost on the map, it pushed him out of the bandit's reach uh, AOE. So it allowed him to live for that much longer, and that was really unfortunate for Geek. But, but now it's general, back to the to the objective play again. Exactly, in general, right? Back to the objective play because they've been brawling. I mean, you wanted them to brawl. Here they're looking for those brawl triple trades B's. against RRQ. Exactly, the triple Bs. What is it? Big brawl. Boys? Yes. yes. Nice. Let's go. Anyway. Now they're starting to go for the Lord Dance. And let's take a little bit of a general look up as to what's been going on. Irad level 12. We have Hazel, that's level 13. He has a level advantage here. And it looks like they know it, right? Chadir and Beloisky already looking for a play. Opening up vision, but meanwhile, Banana. This is going to be very difficult in the long game. Yeah, but they're gonna go for it. Hazel with the red tree, secures it. Irad knocked out by Beloisky. Oh. Finn in the back right now will be gunned down by Chadera. Wait, so, so many things happening at the same time. Luke is still going forward though. Petra 5, Furious Dive onto Lemon, very low, doesn't hit the skill 2, and Skyler takes him out. All right, so apparently Geek Fam did take the Lord, even though Vin was able to go back and almost solo, single-handedly take a boy out. Geek Fam taken, but they did lose a turret. You're seeing RRQ trying to use the Paquito to actually split push like you were expecting. And it, it is working, um, but Geek can just force the fight. Whoa, what? The combo didn't connect, but Ben finds the final slash, brings them back. Chadera now being pinned no. down by Irad. He's just following him menacingly. Pops in a oh. voice, but Nana with a knockout strike, displacing Hazel now caught in Ben's vengeance and gets shut down. Irad all alone in the back, but has zoned Chadera enough. Two members down. The Lord advantage is RRQ's advantage. You know, despite this advantage, actually, Skylar's gonna go for it. They get the turret in the mid lane. But that was a perfect flicker by Chidera. Did you see that? To get him out of the bush? He just flickered, and even Banana was predicting it. So he went for the play almost blind, without confirmation. And, you know, if it landed, that would have been That's amazing. Insane. But once again, you're seeing both teams just try and outdo each other. But the fact that the backline from Geek Fam is so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. a, a boy can maybe juke around through walls, but Chadera has been run down like five times this whole game. Talking about game facts, right? This is the first time Vin has used an Arlet throughout his career, making it his 40th hero ever. Wow. Ever. 40. I mean, he has a very long, decorated career. Yeah, we haven't really seen him on the outlet. Oh! oh that's there you it! Go. There, that's it! That's it, right? That's it! We were waiting for that, right? The Beatrix Novaria combination. So satisfying. When it hits, it one shot Skylar. And now this is a problem, right? Because if RRQ want to play Skylar centric, there is a possibility that he's completely taken out of the equation. And what's RRQ left to do? Like right there, RRQ, they just can't let Skylar sit around in the open without any backup, without any coverage. If they want to do that, they have to leave someone with him or say send someone else to really clear the waves. Maybe Lemon. I mean, Lemon can still fall to the same play though. So we have to see how they adapt to this because otherwise, if they want to try and play too safe, then Skylar and Lemon will indirectly be forced to stop farming. I mean, are there no items that can help him in that regard? Wait a minute though, Irad, going very aggressive oh. in. Only onto Beloy, the final slash connected. Now with the stun onto Luke, Eternal Guard not connecting as well. Geek Fam disengaging and they've baited out a heck of a lot of abilities from RRQ. This is right before the Lord comes into play. And Geek, they understand this. 
They're gonna try and blitz it, perhaps. Bloiska already waiting out there. Ooh. And does he hit? it? No. Gasosphere almost stole away the purple, though. Whoa, look at this Yeah, he read no red tree here. Hazel secures it. Beloy might be the sacrificial lamb. Banana trying to look for the flank in the mid lane, just shoves it in. All right, so not even a trade, not even a turret taken from RRQ. That's why they were going so desperately for that play. If Vin was able to land that final slash onto at least one more person, or at least Cowboy or Chidera, that would have been a valuable moment for RRQ. But now it's back to the drawing board, back to the execution. It's a replay here, presented by our official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. Oh, this That's is a replay. It. Look at this. He's oh. Oh. Now you see him, now you don't. It Gone. happens that fast. Vanished. Houdini. So it comes back to the question, is there an item that can prevent that from happening? The fact that it's a mix of like magical and physical damage doesn't make his job any easier. Technically, a wind of nature can work, but it's such a long cooldown in rel relatively to uh, oh. the response. Whoa! The prediction on the Astral Sphere. Skyler's low. He's out of the team fight. Chidera's kiting away, but man, Banana just takes him out! The vulnerable backline gets punished again. A Petrify from Luke, but Banana flickered out of it. Just like that, Chidera, once again, denied from even playing the game altogether. Look at his trap, though. Hey, Geek, they're still pretty crafty with it. Even when they do lose a member, they have been maneuvering very peskily as they're moving backwards. Now that Chidera has a win of nature, he will survive a bit longer. Oof. Whoa. Okay. A bit late on that winter truncheon. It's okay. It happens. It happens. I mean, so far, he's only been taken twice. Taken down twice. Mm -hmm. So he is still relaying that consistent damage in these team fights. I don't know if, if it's even worth it though, right? Even if he got the winter truncheon down, if he dodged it away? Like... The one shot. Maybe... I don't know. Oh, he was, was afraid Chidera? of the one shot maybe? Maybe. I feel like he should have maybe saved it for moments where maybe Luke will be jumping down towards him. The fact that he has a flicker instead of a sprint again. I, I'm Chidera a big... was dead. Chidera was dead. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Unlucky. Exactly. Again, I'm a big advocate of sprint on mages when you're up against like a Yuzong. So, we'll see Banana here. Is he gonna be able to set it up? Knockout strike into the final slash, into the entropy damage. Three man go! Oh! oh! The combo's in the back! But look at it, Rad, just zoning them away. It's still gonna be bash by Chidera, still free hitting in the back. As Vin gets bombed again, and Astral Sphere not connecting, but two. Members have been taken down. Irad is running for the hills with the Poissons. He has a lot of mo maneuverability, a lot of mobility. A boy, though. Oh, it's running. Hazel with a knockoff. Astral Sphere, Jadera with a gun down, and Irad will be melted down. Three, four, one. Oh, this is a big, big opportunity for Geek. With the man advantage, they have the ability to push it further. Looks like they're eyeing for that inhibitor turret in the top side. Let's see if they can do it. Eternal Guard connecting on the Chidera, and the Eternal oh. Guard is actually holding off real well. They have to go for the Lord instead. Five seconds for Skyler, 20 for Irad. No Irad though, will RRQ even try and contest? I don't think they can. It might go down too fast for them to respond. It might be better to try and prepare a counter counter attack for this play. Yeah, the first blast used up. The Bruce Passion as well. They will be able to take it in the 17th minute. It's still an enhanced Lord, not an evolved one. All right, so for RRQ, I think they have to slow down a bit and reassess their priorities because they're they were able to take Luke down, but he's one he was one and two. Right and on the Yute Song, he wasn't exactly the backbone of the whole team. And there was a bit of miscommunication, I think, with the double knockout strike kind of being... Uh, because the final slash moved mm. Luke away from the double knockout strike. So moments like that can really be fatal when you're playing with margins that are so fine, like in this game. With the Lord marching down, though, I think Arakir has enough damage with the Vexana and uh, the Natan. But again, that depends if the long-range snipe combo actually lands again. Skill hit rate for a boy is 34% at the moment. Mm -hmm. Remember. He needs to be able to land these skills properly in order for that combination with Chidera to come to fruition. Otherwise, it's a tough push here for Geek, with Skylar especially already doing that much damage. Okay. Ooh. Lock on, try to go for Lemon, the charge in the top lane and the siege in the mid lane. Banana, knockout strike 
onto Beloy, who has the flicker, who wants to go in. Smells blood in the water! Beloy jumps in with a Minus Fury, only connecting onto one right there. Slumman was able to pop in the winner truncheon, but Hazel jumps in in the back, just trying to peel for a point. Chidera doing a good job right now. Um, Praiser's oh. Wrath in the back. Skyler still able to survive, trying to clear out the waves, and they have done it. Another knockout strike for Banana. Some recalls, a good shot over to Lemon, but not enough to take anyone down. RRQ lose all their base turrets in game two. There's still two minion waves pushing. Not really sure if they want to go for it here right now. But Hazel is back, and they've been able to take the buff away from RRQ. That one shot onto a banana even. That's a big amount of damage. But they will go for the retreat instead, take the discipline route. I get a feeling that RRQ, if they're going to do it, I think it will be, has to be. They have to make a play off the back of a concealed play from Vin. I feel like he's the only member right here that's not being watched, not being marked by the whole side of Geek. Everyone else, Lemon, Irad, and Banana, it always seems like Geek always have a response, are always prepared for them. Vin is the only one that has been able to sneak past the lines, go in from the side and make something happen. At this point in time, looking at the items, Fast of the Oasis done for the Minotaur. Oof. Lemon going in for some more damage, only relying on the Winter. And it's not a bad idea, especially against the Song, but against the snipes coming in from the Beatrix and the Novaria. I feel like something else would be preferable. Something that doesn't have nearly as long of a cooldown. I have a question. Can a Rose Gold Meteor help out to prevent the combo from hitting in? With Skylar? Yeah. Yeah, it can to a degree. It gives you a shield when you're low, but again, it, it depends, right? Like in it, compared to a Wind of Nature, or is the Wind of Nature better? I think it's better because there's more sources Ooh, of physical damage on the side of Geek Fam. But yes, a boy stole the, the purple buff. And again, it's it's a Lord Dance, but with the with three waves mm. pushing, I don't think RRQ can take this. No, doesn't look like it now. And Irad, he's very visible because of the Astral Echo. He's running around still. Ooh, slow push is still up there, by the way. So Geek Fam can take their time, and you can see that they are already in position to reset it. The mini wave is going to be crashing up top. RQ will have to send someone or fight. They send Skylar. That means they do not want to fight. And everyone else needs to leave immediately. But Irad. Irad. Shield unity. Minions Fury coming down as well. Hazel needs to go for this red tree. He does. Tadera. Oh, gets it. Big fam. Needs to retreat. RQ chooses to fight Irad. Very low. Oh. Final slash on the three members. And Skylar rotates over with Entropy. Tadera's low, boy. It's caught in the middle. Has immortality. Banana's looking for it. Jumps into the back as well. But he is on the wall. Tadera getting them down. Getting the peel from the team. Finn. Now with the vengeance into the back. A boy is there. But one cannon in the base is looking for the end. Meanwhile, a boy shoots Finn down. Banana has lost his immortality. And now, with oh, by no. the Rose Gold Meteor, has some HP left. Skylar against the world with the entropy. And now the shot down. The trident of the Lord chasing Skylar. Look at him. He's running. He finds boots in time. But a boy is running. Wow. Oh my god, Skylar barely gets out of there. The entropy again, the eternal guard to stop the Lord from crashing into the base. Hazel blocking the rat down with help under the mirror's passion as Biloyski gets terrified. But then, ah, into the back with a knockout strike, not able to take a boy down. Lord taken out. Skylar defending no minion waves, but there will be more coming RRQ's way. That was too, so close for comfort. Too close for comfort. But that mid minion is still marching down. Three versus the world. Can they do it? Entropy ready. They go for Lemon. They hit Lemon. Irad distracting in the back. Mormon waves coming down. Now as the Eternal Guard is used up to clear up the waves. The base is open. Beloyski goes in and Jadera executes. Lemon's very low. And appraises Rat Sky in the pocket number the nature. The final splash does not connect. But all our Q are holding on to the Kingdom's base. This is crazy! This is insane! Three members left standing, but it's not over yet! More. The mid is coming! More and more! Vin right there, Skylar with Entropy trying to clear out the wave. One more cannon minion in the mid lane, but they stay targeted down! The middle waves still crashing down, and Geek Fam with a shot to Skylar will equalize the series one to one! Wow! A valiant effort for RRQ to try and hang in there. But the geeks know what they want, they take it. And we are going through a third game. Yes.
We wouldn't have it any other way, ladies and gentlemen. One to one, forcing a game at number three on the back of a very risky strategy from Geek Fam. But in the end, it paid off. And in the end, it did work. They gambled using the Beatrix in the gold lane for Chidera. Like you mentioned earlier on, it was not a good lane for him to be in against Skylar on the Natan. But they understood the value. If they could stay composed to the end, to the mid, at least, at least until Novaria gets her power spike, then it can pay off. That damage was insane. Whew. We were concerned about that late game situation. Because RQ, they have the damage. But the range difference, man. And the control over the map. We talk about the Novaria being valuable, and you're seeing it here again. Even if you're playing aggressively or defensively, there's just so many ways to utilize it, and RRQ just weren't ready. That was just such a good game to watch, man. Super entertaining, oh. crazy fights towards the end as well. And RRQ at that point, right, they had to make the desperate call to go in after the Lord was taken, because they would have just been sieged down. They tried their best, but they were split because of the Lord, because of the positioning as well from the team. I love the fact that Beloy and Hazel stuck to their win conditions, man, that back line. As long as they keep the back line okay in that skirmish, it's all good. The peel was magnificent, and Banana wasn't able to penetrate through that front line. Wow. I don't... Who would you vote for MVP? POTG. Actually, I would go for a boy. Yeah. Oh. And there he is. The MVP or the POTG by the Samsung Galaxy our official tournament smartphone is going to be a boy on the Novaria. And he's just so good at it. And he, he knows in this context, he doesn't really require the Ice Queen's wand. He goes in with the glowing wand, Lightning Truncheon, and then Divine Glaive. And he still goes for the immortality, recognizing the dangers that the divers of RRQ pose towards him. And being the main target for RRQ as well in these fights, he played it really well. He's able to maneuver around away from the danger zones and output that damage. Let's check it out in the player of the match highlights here by our official gold partner, UBS Gold. All the way from the early game. Seems like RRQ, there's just some moments where they just keep going all in. And sometimes it, it works out, but other times not so much, right? And the consistency is what we always talk about here, especially in week number oh. four, but that is some insane damage. We haven't seen that combo in a long, long time. Here's a big flank that RRQ were able to get. And that's what they required if they really want to win. Like you said, Mirko, the backline protection needs to be on point. Luke got this Furious Dive and it, that was really what saved it, right? It could have been horrible for Geek Fam. Uh, the fact that like Skylar at that point was all the way in the front, invested in getting the kill onto the Yute Song. That's not exactly the, the main win condition for Geek. That's also a, a big factor. But here is a, a huge Hail yeah. Mary play. But I think the item swaps really go unnoticed in the, in the midst of all this chaos here. In the bottom side, Banana along with Vin trying their best to get some get some kills, secure some death timers. But Chidera, with the help of everyone, just piling on, dog piling onto him, was able to stall out long enough. And the final push too, man. Skylar put immortality as he pressed entropy. <laughs> Tried his best really in this fight and then the range. The range, man. If you're able to space against the Natan. And with the photo actually, Baloyski was able to hold on for quite a long time against that burst from Natan. That's why I think it's brilliant, right? Yeah. Because I think I, I listen to a lot of your analysts a lot about like Natan and stuff and like if you want to counter Natan, it's not good to go for a front to back. Yeah. But if you go for a front to back that's heavily outranging the Natan, then it still can work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thought this combination was genius. It I, was. Oh, when was the last time we saw this? Was it season 11 or season 12? The Beatrix I, and Novaria combo. I think we saw it at M5. Uh, but the one that I really remember is MSC. And uh, RSGSG used it. It was... I'm trying to think of the names here, but yeah. It was RSGSG and MSC. That was the first one in the international scene, I think. 
It's been a decent while. And I think Novar uh, a boy in the Novaria also recognizes the need for him to be a big damage dealer. And he's not really as concerned with matching the roll potential. In fact, if you look at the emblems, he went for the rupture instead of the agility. Whereas Lemon went for the agility because of the difference in focus. Of course, if you look at the items, I think it's a 23 minute game. Everyone's kind of maxed out. Banana has the rose gold meat here, but I believe he swapped that out for like the immortal as well. So at this point, people are just swapping items in and out. And you're seeing again how important in some of these moments, because usually some people would say, oh, switching out items, it's not so important to do it in a split second. But when the games are the are this close, right, that small difference that an item swap can bring for your team really does seal the deal. It's huge. It's a huge difference. Like even in the bottom side when they were still brawling, that item swap bought them a lot of time. Not enough time for Skylar to come in and dish out the damage, but that was the idea, and it, would, it was able to prolong it even further. But here it is, the carry will be, once again, a boy on the Novaria. Dude, this guy is unreal. So and good. it's crazy, because in the game, Arashi's like, you know, a boy needs to step up. And he's like... Oh, he did. Arashi, <laughs> Sit wait, down, boy. Sit down. Just like Kendrick Lamar. Sit down. <laughs> DNA. Be humble. What? Oh, that's, yes. That's, that's, that's a line meant. I've heard a lot, by the way, the past <laughs> year. If you know, you know. Oh. Sit down, bro. Uh, be I, humble. I know. Well, we all know too well. It is what it is. The, the rich guy is still Skylar, though. So he's still... The Onyx didn't talk? Oh. Yeah, that, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Eterna didn't know. I, 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 I hear that it. very often, Eterna. <laughs> it's, a, it's like, it's every day, bro. <laughs> all right, Jake Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. credit to Boloiski as well, mm -hmm. though, right? 12 total assists. And he's able to, again, be flexible with the defensive use of the Minion Fury, but also aggressively catching RRQ off guard several times. I do feel that, uh, along with him, the fact that Luke was able to just dive towards the back line, I think that was a big factor. The, the Yu was a big factor yes. in Game 1. It's also a big factor in Game 2. Because if you look at that last fight, if Skylar was able to be with Vin and Banana, you know, out dishing, uh, just brawling it out, dishing out damage, that's a lot of damage that, that I think would swing the tides in favor of our Q. But with all these threats just rushing at him, can't do it. That's so why we thought that they were going to pick up the they were going to pick up the Yu Zong. Exactly. Yeah. It's about to go to that point. So luckily you did mention it. Segway. The Arlet pick in the first as the first pick in the second phase it was a bit weird. To, uh, Arashi was like, "Whoa!" and I was like, "Whoa!" too. You know, because <laughs> you, they banned out the Terizla and the X Borg in game number one. They banned out the Terizla and Paquito. Sure, they probably still don't want Luke to be on that Paquito because of the side lane pressure that Geekfam can utilize. But the Yu Zong worked so well for them. I wonder why they swap things out like that. Before we answer that question, we are going to head to a short break. So, ladies and gentlemen, before we see the finale of this Best of Three series, we'll see you soon. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. But see you soon as a Cambodian team. Yeah, that's not what I meant, though. Hmm. I mean, like, see you soon as, like, see you later. Dan ini dari Jakarta Timur ya berdua ya. Jauh-jauh yeah. main ke Jakarta Barat dan ini adalah kali pertamanya di MPL Arena nonton langsung. Boleh kenalan dulu ya. Ini siapa nih sebelah Bude nih? Uh, saya Pipit. Pipit. Yeah. Kalau di sini ada Pipit, di situ ada siapa? Lu Salma. Salma. Ke sini berdua kali pertama nih ya ke MPL gimana suasananya? Terus sih rame. Rame. <laughs> rame ya. Biasa katanya nontonnya tuh di online-online aja. Beda nggak pas lagi nonton online, pas lagi di sini? Beda banget. Gimana Pipit, bedanya apa? Lebih seru, lebih negangin gitu ya. Bisa ngeliat langsung juga gimana pemain-pemainnya. Ikut teriak-teriak nggak tadi? Iya benar. Ikut teriak-teriak ya. Di sini emang adrenalinnya tuh jadi ikutan naik juga. Melihat dua tim beradu satu sama lain. Tapi Bude, Bude ini penasaran, ini berdua... Berteman, terus janjian untuk datang ke sini atau gimana? Iya, kita teman, terus emang janjian. Janjian? Ya. Nah, beri penasaran kan ini lumayan ya dapat tiketnya juga susah. Gimana perjuangan untuk ngedapetin tiket, terus kalian bisa berdua nonton ini? Kita ngewar udah dari awal-awal minggu pertama. Iya, cuma baru dapat yang wing 4. Siapa yang ngajakin dulu tuh? Siapa yang ngajakin? Aku duluan sih. Tiba-tiba kepengin gitu, ayo yeah. nonton bareng gitu. Wow, biasa online kepengin ngerasain langsung. Dan Budi penasaran kalian berdua pasti mau main Mobile Legend dong. Role-nya apa nih? Kalau aku uh, magi mid atau support tank. 
bisa support, bisa meet. Oke. Okay. Kalau aku Tang sih. Tang. Apa tuh hero favoritnya? Hero favoritnya Franco. Franco. Pas ada Vin tuh. Oh. Ada Vin dia bisa ngajarin kita. Mungkin dipakai lagi. Hmm. Gimana kalau kalau Salma apa? Hero favoritnya? Uh, Kagura. Kagura. Bentar. Ada Lemon juga. Dia bisa nanti ya, mungkin bakal iya, pake. Iya. Kita ngarepin semuanya, rindu juga ya. Tapi kalau di sini sebagai mungkin Kingdom juga, kalian ngelihat pertampuran RRQ gimana tadi game 1 dan game 2? Uh, seru sih, menegangkan hmm. banget ya. Uh, cuma sayang harus satu sama. <laughs> Semoga game ketiga bisa menang. Semoga bisa menang. Kalau kamu gimana ngelihat? Dua game udah berlangsung, seperti apa gergetnya? Ya seru sih, terus gergetan banget. Semoga juga akhirnya RRQ yang menang. Semoga RRQ yang menang. Ini kan kali pertama datang. Mau datang lagi nggak ke MPL Arena? Iya pasti pastinya dong. Udah dapat tiket belum? Belum. <laughs> belum. Playoff kali ya? Harus buru-buru sih ya untuk hunting tiket di MPL Arena dan juga untuk playoff harus mantengin karena playoff di depan mata. Dan kalau di sini kalian ada nggak mungkin Emang sengaja ada tujuannya datang selain nonton, mungkin ada lainnya kah? Ngumpul-ngumpul kah? Gak ada emang khusus buat nonton MPL, dukung RRQ. Dukung RRQ, <laughs> tapi menarik dari teman biasa mungkin di Jakarta Timur ngumpulnya sekarang datang ke sini untuk nongkrong. Karena di MPL Arena kita juga bisa nongkrong-nongkrong bareng, banyak kegiatan seru, banyak activity-activity yang bisa kita lakuin bareng. Udah jalan-jalan belum tadi? Belum sempat, karena tadi datangnya mepet. Datangnya mepet. Nanti di depan sana ada macam-macam banget biasa. Tim-tim juga ngebuka booth, bisa beli merchandise. Dan kalau dari kalian sendiri, ada nggak mungkin player favorit gitu? Dari RRQ? Uh -uh. Uh, Skylar. Ada yang mau disampaikan ke Skylar? Mumpung nih, denger nih. Uh, ya buat Skylar, uh, tetap semangat. Good luck buat game selanjutnya, semoga lolos playoff. Dan bisa ngerebut kembali piala MPL. Wow, buat Skylar. Kalau kamu pipit, buat siapa? Buat Lemon. Oke. Okay. Rame ya pendukungnya ya. Ada yang mau disampaikan? Uh, ya, semangat. Semoga akhirnya menangin pertandingan sih, biar nggak ya iyalah. Oh, semoga memenangkan pertandingan ini. Akankah tim RRQ bisa memenangkan pertandingan ini? Atau malah Kikfam sebagai Kingslayer masih bisa memegang titlenya? Kita akan buktikan bersama-sama dan saksikan perjuangan dari kedua tim ini lah dia. Kingfam dan juga RRQ. Boom. Welcome back from that short break, ladies and gentlemen. That's not short. Stop. As we get to the decider <laughs> of this next matchup. Because again, ladies and gentlemen, whoever wins this should be able to claw their way up into the green zone from the red zone. And I think you do want to end week number four on a positive note. For sure. Who, who wants to end week number four on a negative note? Edgy people. I mean, Edgy people who people. experiment. It's all. It's like traps. the people who know about the discounts but don't use it, right? Oh, no. Yes. Like Indomart discounts, fifteen thousand IDR. You guys can get, but a lot of people don't want to utilize it. Why? You you tell me. I don't know why. Well, discount MPL fifteen. That's the discount voucher code that you can use for a lot of people who want to be shopping in Indomart. It's everywhere in Indo. It's almost like their name has Indo in it. Wow. And it's and it's true. Like no joke. You, you don't want to miss NJ. using Inomart and using the points because when you do, you get point coffee at the nearest Indomart store. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he picked up the coffee version. What What's that? What's what is this? it? Move your hand. What does it say? Move my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, move my hand from the coffee. You got to be specific here, Eterna. I'll be Pacific next time. Pacific? <laughs> Pacific! No, I, turn, I think you, you need some energy, you need some tea. Here, go and drink your tea. She, she, oh my god, man. When she gets tired, apparently this is what happens, ladies and gentlemen. She turns into an ocean. Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're Atlantic after drinking that coffee, or tea, rather. I hope your galaxy here, oh! Oh. It, who, who's that? Who's the picture, the picture thing? Who, what? I can't see. I didn't get to catch it. Oh my god, it's Bimo! 
Shout w. Outs. Hey, look, it's Shout us. Wow. We, look we look very so different, different for a while there. We kind of look like Lim Kocho. It is a parallel universe thing. It's a multi, the caster multiverse. So I love it. in a different world, you're Omwawa. Exactly. I'm just old. <laughs> wow. I'm just old? I thought he was going to be like, yeah, like I'm a, I'm a good analyst. I'm, I'm a veteran. I'm an experienced guy. I'm wise. No, he says, I'm just old. I'm telling him, I'm telling him while he said that. <laughs> Me too. Wait, it's not how it sounds. Can somebody like I didn't clip mean that, it like that. And send it to my DM, please? Someone please clip that. This is really like, you cannot be insulting <laughs> oh our, our the, the MPL ID father. The father? The father. I think He's his your father. Was the, uh, was the, the talent homeroom teacher for a while. Yes, the talent homeroom teacher as well, but also the father, depending on the uh, father. Know. Amazing. You're also old, Arashi, you know that? Wow. Okay, I okay. can say that because I'm, I'm, I'm young. <laughs> okay, let's calm down. <laughs> America's still going through puberty, guys. Previous game recap, though. Is he though? even born yet? Anyway. Hey, guys. Previous game recap. Look at the damage dealt. From game number two. Who's damage dealt? A well, boy. A boys? 150. Skylar, number two, with 100. So he beats everyone out by about 50k damage. That is... Very, very impressive. And he also out-damaged Lemon on the Vexana in game one. So, like, wow. It's a, a gap. boy. It might be a gap. All right, then. A mid lane gap? Yeah. Oh, wow. A boy is one of the best mid laners in MPLID right now. He's like, there's Sans, uh -huh. then a boy Moreno. Okay. So, no Lemon? Well, he just made his debut this week, so we'll have to see about that. All time, he's definitely there, but right now, we'll see. Okay. I do agree. But the support in the arena, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Yes, sir. They do not waver. They haven't stopped. They're all using the Never Saturday do. glasses as well. Never? Brother, are we going to ignore what you said in the break? Huh? You're concerned? You're scared now? What? You can be concerned. Why not? What did he say A man with no fears is a foolish man. But you say no waiver. Huh? Never waver. What no did he waver. say during the break? Huh? What did he say? He said, I'm getting scared. I'm getting concerned, man. Like, this For is RQ. For Geek Fab, because he's the number one Geek Kingdom. I Hang on a minute. Chefin. <laughs> Chefin's always been RQ, Eterna. Oh. You've always been Bigatron. I've been, always been Aura, remember? Oh, I'm pretty I good at gaslighting. I thought I was an Aura fan. You thought wrong. You thought wrong. Well, anyhow, life is a lie. Mirko is always fangirling about Yaoi, remember? Not you. Exactly. Because Mirko, you know, loves Yaoi. Mm -hmm. Yaoi. I like his new hair. <laughs> you li No, you don't like it. I like his new hair, remember? Oh, right. Yeah. Anyway, game number three is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. And again, if Geek lose this, they lose their title. They will no longer be Kingslayers. They'll be the, the defeated King Slayers. Right? Because I mean, five times in a row, consecutive wins for Geek. Yeah, I mean, for whichever team that wins right here, that there's a lot more meaning behind it. It's not just about this victory. It's also about what it means, the pattern that they're setting up for the next time they meet as well. And yeah, to answer the question, Mirko, I mean, the support never wavers, right? Ah. But if you're going up against Geek Fam, seeing that performance, and you're like, easy game. It's a bit foolish, man. You have to give credit where credit is due, and you respect them so that you will come out on top. There it is. Miracle wants to, not Miracle, sorry. Arashi <laughs> wants to come out on top here. But let's take a look at the drafting phase of game number three, presented to you by the official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. And again, Geek have opted to go for first pick again. The bands are slightly different with no Claude being banned out. It's actually the Joy. No, and no so Angela, but it's Joy. Still Claude though. Huh? Claude still banned out? Oh yeah. yeah. No Angela. I'm losing it. Drink your tea, man! I'm losing it, Mirko. Oh, Minotaur banned though. The respect. The respect coming in for RRQ. Banning away the Minotaur. So we'll see how will this begin. I feel like both teams have really felt the importance of the Novaria. But is it enough 
to push it towards first pick? That's the question. Because for a long time... Oh, there we go. For the longest time, remember, during the purple meta, it's always mages first. Mages first. Everyone kept picking, picking the first pick and second pick in the mages. Now it's different. There you now go. the Yutong and the Fredrin in the hands of the Eradicator. Signature pick for Irad this season. Yu Zhang for Banana too. Lapu Lapu though. It's not banned out. They banned out Minotaur, so they take it away. It's also a signature for the boy Luke. Luke. Luke Luke. It's Lapu Lapu, but with Luke. Hey, you know? Right. Luke Luke. Okay, so now. If. Geek Fam can go for a gold lane that can be equally as aggressive, move with the team. We've seen how this works, right? The Novaria just supporting from far away, and everyone else is brawling it out. Mm -hmm. For our Q, though, without a Novaria. they can just go for Natan again. They can. Second phase, Ben Beatrix. It's almost like they need to, almost, because otherwise, Skylar's going to be targeted even more. I do wonder if he wants to pick something a bit more conservative. Oh, they'll hold back on it. Mm -hmm. All right, risk it getting banned out. Confident in their options, RRQ. And I think maybe Vin is a bit more comfortable on the Grok compared to the Arlet. Perhaps. Right, so they do want to secure it first. Because when it comes to the second phase, Geek are always able to ban it away from Vin. And Vin isn't notorious for his wide hero pool either. He's good with macro, but when his heroes are banned out, you start to wonder what impact he has in terms of gameplay. So, Tigreal now taken out. Geek, do they want to go for the Natan ban? They might. Or do they want to go for a Vexana ban? Just, once again, just solidifying their control over the mid area. Yeah and put Lemon on something a bit more mechanically intensive, considering that this is, this is the alien's early stages coming back oh, into the MPL. There we go. All right. Vexana ban, maybe... Maybe they might also want to try to limit Lemon's hero, right? Like, his hero pool was big in the past, but we never know right now. Is he comfortable with other heroes? Because so far, we've only seen him on the Vexana Novaria, right? Yeah. Have we seen him on Valen? I don't no. think so, not yet. It's a grill ban. And now they want to try to continue to limit heroes from Beloy. Usually, when we see the Tig, the Grok, Minotaur, and, and all the heroes so far has been actually the Beloy picks. If you mm. notice in the bands, they oh, want to just right. commit Ruby. Like that's usually what we still see. I personally don't like the Ruby here in this. It's not what I would go for, but if they want to just take it away from it. Time him. to take the field. Oh, okay, it's Chadera. So four bands to Beloy, one to Chadera. All right. The Bruno, though, <laughs> remember, every single gold lane they ban also limits Skylar's own hero pool. But I guess for Geek, they're confidently just banning stuff out because they know it might just be a Natan. But the, then they ban the carry, I guess, to ensure that they won't be that pesky, high mobility, high damage output. Because if you look at the Bakshia and the Lapu Lapu, they want to stick close to the gold lane anyways. So the range isn't that big of a problem for Skylar to try and, you know, get some damage in. So what do you think? Still Natan? No Natan? Oof, man. What? Mm. I if think they go Natan, for Natan makes sense. He can go for Beatrix again. Yeah, they can save it. They have last pick in the second phase. Okay. So they can just go for a pick for Lemon first. What, what Valentina? Lilia Fairmas. Valentina. The choice is mine. Oh, Savior! Okay. Against the Bakshia. Yeah. Against the Lapu as well. But the Lapu, yeah, that's a bit of a... It's a bit more concerning, but yeah, but yeah. But he won though, because he has more range. <laughs> what? Lemon will win because he has more range than a boy on the Navaria. Just so kidding. True, he's global. Exactly. It's a global <laughs> ult. It's a range victory, but we don't know how it's gonna play out, especially in the middle of a big fight. But if everyone's corralling together, especially if Vin can maybe pull people together by sealing off areas Starts with the barricade. Now. Oh, oh. Beloy. What a menace. You slick, slick, big brain Beloy man, you. Selena, a signature pick back in season 10 oh no. and back when he was in Onyx PH. The Selena that gave a whole lot of troubles to a lot of teams at M3 as well. It's back. And the combo with the Novari exactly. as well. <laughs> that makes it a lot worse. And the Xavier is going to be very vulnerable to this. 
Unless he stays at base. I mean, technically. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Gold lane for Skyler now. The Last pick. It's gonna be the Brody for a bit more utility. But against all of these threats, man. Yeah. Earlier it was the the Beatrix and the Novaria. Now it's the Selena Novaria. They are just maximizing this Novaria pick as much as possible. This is a completely different ball game with these choices from both of these teams. If Geek can look for a snowball with a pickoff coming in from Selena in the early game, that's definitely something they can work with. If it ends up into the late game, they can work with the Novaria combo as well. Meanwhile, RRQ, with the Brody being picked up, do they not need to snowball from the early game? They kind of do. But they can just play for mid game too. They can just wait for that power spike to hit and then go for brawls. They are a pretty good team fighting comp. Oof. If they want to brawl, they can. But I think for Geek, it's all about trying to find those pickoffs, especially when the neutral objective is up. I almost feel like RRQ needs to try and do something crazy before the, lore, the, the neutral objective, like the Turtle or Lord, is up. But here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's welcome you into the land of dawn for the decider game between the King Slayers and the Pillars of RRQ. Will it be enough? Will Lemon as well as Vin be enough to break the five consecutive win that the King Slayers have built for themselves? The decider is here. The decider is now, and we will be able to answer it very, very soon. One thing to note, though, is Irad does have his signature pick here on the Fredrin, but with so much utility, so much chip damage available, you have to wonder how well it's going to go. Good damage and earlier. Exactly. What about here, Beloisky with his choices? What is this telling us, Arashi? Inspire for more spammable spells, for more utility, vision as well, and Wilderness Blessing. He wants to roam around, he wants to pressure, and look at this, early on, just so much poke already coming through for Geek. A boy with the rupture as well, he wants to get some more damage, and so does Luke. They all know that the extra stats in the middle of a big fight will matter the longer the game goes. It all adds up. And the problem is now for Lemon uh -oh. as well. Uh-oh. Might be a kill here. Oh, the Lycan bounce into the base. He just needs one more hit. Beloisky jumps oh, in. Oh, no. a misplay from Geek Fam. Beloisky and Chadera. But oh. it's a good shot from a boy to recover from it. It was Vin, luckily, who got the kill for Geek Fam. And that's a one-for-one one trade here. A boy goes in for a little bit more. Still able to get out. Doesn't do any more damage onto Skylar, but there it is, the early trades packing in. And the fact that Beloisky and a boy are an ongoing threat already in the early game, especially we know Selena, pre-level 4, already has that amount of impact. Uh-oh. You Ooh. can see that they're buying a lot of time as well because Lemon cannot necessarily walk. He has to kind of rotate around the buff, in, around the blue buff, if he wants to go to the top and the side lanes. Yeah, there's a lot of danger lurking in for Geek Fam, but look at this 1v1. Yeah, forcing the Black Dragon form from Banana. Finn already very low. Beloisky picks up the kill, and Hazel looks for the retreat battle, wins it out against Irad. And Irad is forced to run back. Banana to the Poissons, now popped by Hazel. Lemon trying to zone them away. Irad's trying to recover and take it away, but I believe it was Hazel still who got that green creep. Well, Irad has more EXP, so I think he got it. A bit too close, though. The point is, Geek Fam are the ones pressing the tempo. And with a Brody, Skylar has more to say. And he did kind of set up that outplay on the bottom side of the map earlier. But aside from that, nothing really can happen against a Roger. And the mid lane, that's usually so important, so impactful. With Lemon being on a savior, it's going to be so slow to really ramp up in damage. Later on, though, maybe it will be valuable enough to just concede all this control in the early game. But that requires them to push it to the late game, does it not? But, and in that late game, as compared to a damage coming out from a boy, well, I guess it depends, right? If he goes for something that can draw down the cooldown, there is a possibility that he can outmaneuver this, but this... A flicker to Chidera, wake... Oh, dodges away from the Torpark memory on the light can pounce! And now with the wild charge defensively by Vin, Chidera was able to take that kill away, and right now he gets shot down, one more hit, and the trap connects, slows him down, another arrow from Beloy. 
Wow, Chadera, that was extremely well played. Lycan pounced to dodge from the Torpor memory. Beautiful. Wow, the outplay is coming in from Chadera. Remember, the guy who was the first team marksman. Was it last season? Mm-hmm, gold lane. Wow, Geek now ha having full control. Our Q are definitely just losing tempo and losing options right here. Even Irad, with all the early pressure he's trying to exert, he's just losing it out to Hazel, two levels behind. Are they gonna keep going for a neutral objective fight? Are they gonna go for some trades? They have options available. It's not too far to come back from 2K gold. 2K gold, but also a two level difference between Hazel as well as Irad at the moment. They want to go for the 50 50. That is extremely risky by RRQ. A boy nearly was able to steal that away, but here it is RRQ. They're opening up vision, but no, they, they don't yeah. want to commit. I think it's too much of a risk if they do go for it. It's just a constant harassment coming in. Look at Geek Fam. They weren't trying to go for a fight, they weren't trying to go for an engage. They saw the Black Dragon form, they just stepped back and say, hey, just walk up a bit further so we can actually hit you with our spells. And then once you're done, then we'll go back in. They're playing this poke-heavy playstyle really, really well. And without a real front line with a lot of regeneration or a lot of tankiness, RQ are absolutely feeling the pressure. And unfortunate for them, their composition kind of relies on big ultimates and big objective takes. That's why I think the Enchanted Talisman being brought in by Lemon will do them wonders, right? If he's able to spam out his ult in the later stage of the game, I think it does have a uh, similar impact to the boy with the Astral Spheres. And look at Hazel using the damage reduction just to stand in front of Skylar, soaking that damage in. Beloy, first to flicker out. That turn in the mid lane is a tickle away. All right, another factor you have to think about, though, is the fact that Geek only have a Boxia, well, they have a Boxia and a Lapu as a frontline, but the Lapu isn't exactly a frontliner. So later on, like you said, if Lemon can start dishing back some harassment, or if RRQ can get enough resources to fight reliably, there isn't, there isn't really a frontline that Geekfam can use to really stall. And Skylar can hit multiple people at the same time with how the Brody works with a torn apart memory. So there are still ways for sure, but RRQ are slowly but surely falling behind in the gold lead department. Yeah. That's the big concern. Poor K already, Arashi. It's a little worse than the oh. There you go. A kill, three versus one onto Banana, and it looks like RQ might be looking for the same, the mirror play in the bottom side. Yeah, they might even be losing. Even in the mirror play, they have more members, but they get poked down by Chidera. Oh, you're right. Jumping forward, finding Chidera, getting the taunt as well, but wow, Chidera's dealing so much damage, he wants to go for the Lycan Pounce, now as a shield into the connects, and oh. also the Abyssal Arrow from downtown, locking him down, Skylar low, Torn apart memory, used up, Chidera falls, mm. the combo with Lemon, Luke, bravest fighter, Luke, cancelled out with the Wild Charge, that was stun onto Lemon, now also going Whoa. onto Lemon, under the turret, forcing a flicker out, Lemon gets out, and out plays Chid Luke, but it's a free turtle over to Geek, and Beloy, it's not done yet. Boom, oh, here's Dive Out. Two valuable kills, I guess, taken by RRQ. The gold lead, was at, the gold lead for Geek Fam was at about 4K, now it's back down to 3.5. Geek are still on track with their game plan. With the mid turret taken down like that, there are more ways for them to just hide in the jungle, more ways for Beloyski to be Really annoying, could be putting down some Abyssal traps in the jungle of RRQ. And while we have some time here, player head-to-head -head between Chidera and Skylar by our app GoPay. Higher KDA for Skylar, higher GPM as well, but Chidera with the teamfight participation, that's where he really excels. RRQ like going for skirmishes where Skylar can really show off his mechanical skills. But Geek Fam, they like going for this calculated all-in, like multi-member teamfight where Chidera it's content not taking the spotlight. And usually they try to buy enough time for Skylar to ultimately carry in the later stage of the game, right? Which is why maybe he's not as involved as Chidera. A difference in gameplay and timing. But back to this game. It's now still a 4k gold lead for Geek Fam. And the oppression of the Abyssal Arrow is insane. And the traps coming in, there's absolutely no visibility that Arc you can work with. Oh, oh my god, the dawning light. 
Comboed in with the Rad's damage. Now onto Beloisky, still able to cut away. And the Abyssal Arrow too. One shot away, a good stab over. But Irad, if he gets chunked, if he gets traded in for just a roamer, I don't think it's worth it. Finn hits the wall, but that's just it. Only the wall. Aggressive play from RRQ, but for a roamer, surely that isn't worth it. With the next objective spawning in 10 seconds, Irad will be able to roll in. But what can RRQ do? They use so much just to secure a kill onto the roamers, and that's without the team. That was GeekFam unprepared, reacting to an unexpected play. So what do they do, right? I mean, I guess that's already a good trailer as to what we're about to see, right? They're able to utilize Lemon's damage from that kind of range to start something to build up for something, and for Skylar to go for the finish, perhaps. But this... Lord Dance doesn't look like it's going in favor of RQ at all. They're being zoned out completely. Oh my god, wait, the Lord? Pull up? Wait, hey, Lord? Lord? Happy feet? Lord Dancing? Wait, oh. whoa, wait. Ladies and gentlemen, hold up. That is... What? Wait, now with the taunt over. Well, Lord can take it out. The Lord is still bugging out. Looking of it all, still able to get out. This might actually... Guys, I'm not even joking. This might actually be... Okay, oh. okay. I was scared that it would be like a, a full, complete reset. But we're now, back. We're back. Okay, Hazel's two levels above. No below in Black Dragon form. Luke is about with the Bravest Spider now. Looking for an opening. has been going to be taken very low. Boy in the back. Also taken down by Banana. Oh, people. That's a retreat battle. Oh, he really wins it in the end. And Geek Fan back away, but... Oh man, that's a big steal. A crazy turn of events right there. Bald EXP laner dive, EXP laners diving in, but a boy gets taken out by Banana right there with the Lord right here. That's another front line to take some of the poke damage. That works absolutely great for our Q. Right now getting jumped on mm -hmm. with the bravest fighter there. Skylar stealing a whole lot of damage. Order for memory two comboed in the stun into. The wave, Skylar gets the last hit, and RQ will be able to utilize that advantage. Oh, an abyssal arrow onto Banana. No more, though. I thought it was on Skylar, but Luke was able to defend Skylar away from it. But what initially looked like Geek's entire objective to win with RQ picking it up, that's actually taken away that gold lead by just a bit, right? 3k now as compared to what was almost a 5k gold lead for Geek. And RQ, they're going to be able to push that topside turret not until completion, but that does buy RQ a little bit of time and a little bit of a win. And look at how much they're respecting Geek Fam and their potential. They could have gone for the topside turret, but they back away. Just concerned about the, uh, the punishment coming oh. in. But oh man! That's the combo, man. That's how disgusting it can be. They use the Sphere and Renner Apathy combo earlier. Now it's the arrow and the Sphere. Is a boy building, sorry, is Beloisky building damage? Well, he has a Divine Glaive and a... Okay. Is that a Starlium? Yes, it is. So damage. It's a Starlium. That allows him to actually do true damage when he uses his ultimate, which is the Shapeshift. So hey, that could be a kind of hidden exploit, quote unquote. But looking at the items, Look it's at Chidera. a more normal build for Chidera with the Has Claw. So that's a lot more sustainment. So a lot of DPS is required to take him down. But aside from that, Lemon though, oh, oh with the truncheon, that's the damage coming back in. It hits more people. It can be spammable as well. And in a full-on long duration fight, it could be better. Whoa! A random flick already. He thought there would be more members there. Abyssal Arrow now connecting on to Banana. Astral Spirit locking him down and Roger! Just picks him up with a light pounce now. Looking for more. Purifies in Luke. Goes in for the stun, unable to find more. Oh, Skylar's oh low, no. very, very low. Boloisky's looking for the arrow to finish him off once and for all. An abyssal arrow into the shield unity, and Irad gets comboed. Two. Hell, all the way, Vin. Almost gets shot down, too. That was oh. insane. So unlucky. Vin Super. went for the big play there, but he flickered over Hazel. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. RRQ is great at just surprising their opposition with explosiveness. But when it doesn't work out, it looks very jarring. You know, just like good. that, the gold lead is back. But I mean, RRQ, they have some more items to deal with. 
The amount of Athena she was being built though oh is God. so understandable right now. A boy with the angles. Lemon is half. Skylar is half. A boy is legit just playing around with them, man. And another oh shot no. for Skylar. A boy is disgusting. Not giving a single chance over to RRQ Hoshi in the 14th minute of the game. They're suffocating. Again, the poke. I think they were banking that Lemon could match or even outshine the poke coming in from Beloisky and a boy, but truly it, ha it really hasn't, not, not yet anyway. Not quite just yet. And I think where he really shines is if they go for a fight and it's a small corridor. It functions almost like a low E where you can put down your spells and you can spam it out. Especially if Lemon can get to the full charges. And if the frontline can take the damage like this, you can see Lemon does have output, but look at that, Irad! Delete it! That's the tank! That's the man you want to be frontline! He took the damage and he couldn't handle it! Now it's Vin Banana, Skyler, and Lemon to defend. Up top, the turret vulnerable. Chidera will go to Lycan for him to deal with it. A few Astral Spheres dodged away from Chidera, gets rid of the turret up top. Now a wave in the mid lane, a Bravest Fighter by Luke as well, has the flicker, can go for it. Banana oh. gets mounted! Oh my god! Deleted Luke now in the midst of it all, jumps in with the Bravest Fighter into the back, the Abyssal Arrow! From Beloisky! Finds another, and it's a wipeout! The alien and the captain isn't enough to save the kings from the Kingslayers. And they retain their reputation. They retain their title. The King of Slayers once again reigns supreme over Rex, Regum Kaon, the Kings of Kings. Amazing, so creative with their strategies. RQ, they were caught off guard. You have to love it, man. Each team with their own secret weapons. For Geek Fam, it was just so good, so reliable, so constant. And unfortunately for RRQ, the hyped up moment of return of their pillars has to end in a defeat. So this makes it the sixth time. The King Slayers. Consecutive wins, ladies and gentlemen. The kingdom has not been able to break Geek Fam six times in a row. The reverse sweep to an early start with the momentum, but then in game two, game three, the resurrection of the Kingslayers. That Selena pick really reminds you of the days. Prime Beloy. And a boy as well. Chidera, everybody really on their comfort picks, but Chidera also that few times, few times he was able to outplay so cool. <laughs> so I can pass. Ooh. I can pass the dodge one for our memory. Oh, a boy with the shots. Oh my god. Hazel with the red trees are all so good. It's everything, the drafts, everything. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take to the interview with our host, with the victors of this best of three, with the tears of the kingdom in the audience. Buddha Clara Mongstar, take it away. Hoki, enggak dong? Enggak um, tahu, Bude. Tapi uh, lebih seru aja lawan Araki. Soalnya uh, fans mereka banyak kan. Ah, jadi crowdnya juga banyak. Lebih semangat. Gitu. Lebih semangat yeah. untuk Baloy. Yeah. Dan itu rupanya ya, teriakan kalian itu memberi semangat para player loh. Tapi, can you mention one thing that you are uh, better than Araki in this match, Baloy? Because we want to know. Kita tuh pengen tahu gak sih? Kayak, Kenapa sih ini Geekfam selalu bisa untuk menutup kemenangan dari RRQ? Uh, Depends of RRQ sekarang. For you, what is uh, better for Geekfam uh, compared um, to RRQ in this match? Um, Aboy God. Oh? Uh, Aboy God. Kira-kira punya Aboy? Iya, yeah, punya Aboy. 
Gara-gara Aboy. Ya, yeah, Aboy. Apa yang Aboy lakukan? Apa? What did Aboy do? Di gendong kita, Bude. Gendong-gendong? Iya, yeah, gendong-gendong dia. But how happy are you meeting RRQ in this match and to one? Um, ya, yeah, senang, senang. Soalnya kita lah, uh, sebelum match ini kita number 7 kan. Ya, yeah, uh, Alhamdulillah udah enggak, udah naik lagi. <laughs> Lebih mentingin kalah semen ya di sini. Fokus ke kalah semen soalnya lagi deg deg ser dari balai. Tapi balai penasaran bahasa Indonesiamu kayak udah lancar banget. Gimana kamu belajar bahasa Indonesianya nih untuk akhir-akhir ini mungkin? How did you learn the Indonesian? Um, um, aku selalu nanya temen-temenku uh, gimana ngomong ini, apa ini gitu. Mereka ngajarin bener gak? Uh, yang yang gak benar ya sih, gak benar benar benar. Biasa tuh look langsung nyubit, jangan kasih tahu, jangan kasih tahu. <laughs> tapi tapi benar, Baloi sekarang udah sangat sangat improve dari bahasa Indonesianya dan katanya tadi ada Aboy God, oh Aboy. Ada yang bilang juga ini underrated mid laner di Indonesia. Pada komentarnya gitu dari para streamer streamer juga, banyak analis juga yang bilang seperti itu. Tapi Aboy, gimana kamu ngegendong gendong kata kalau kata Baloi? Emang kamu menggendong tadi? Gimana gendong gendongnya tuh? Gak gendong sih, itu main as a team aja emang kita berlima. Itu berlima, tapi kalau dari Aboy sendiri akhirnya di sini RRQ mengganti mid lane-nya. Bagaimana dengan pertempuran mood bersama dengan Lemon? Uh, mungkin udah tahu sih kan dari playoff sebelumnya kita udah ketemu, jadi kita tahu sih cara mainnya gimana. Dan sesuai dengan bacaan dari Aboy kah? Ya sama, hero-heronya aneh. Hero-heronya aneh. Dan Aboy pun udah ngebaca itu dan ngomong tentang hero juga nih. Ada satu hero yang kayaknya populer banget. Dipakai sama Cadera, dipakai sama Brand, dipakai sama Kylar juga banyak banget. Udah yang pakai Roger yang kembali populer tiba-tiba di minggu ini. Kalau dari Cadera sendiri, gimana sih ngeliat Roger? Uh, ngeliat, ngeliatnya bagus sih kan. Uh, kalau kalian tahu kan uh, Oheb pernah pakai Ruby Godland kan. Uh -huh. Dan digadang-gadang Fighter kan lebih kuat dari Marksman. Nah, dilihat dari Roger kan itu role-nya kalau sebelah itu Fighter sama Marksman. Jadi mungkin unggul ke darah sama Marksman terus skill-nya juga sakit. Oh, itu adalah pandangannya Cadera. Jadi emang emang lagi bagus di sini ya. Inspirasinya pun ya udah emang seperti itu ya. Tapi ada yang menginspirasi nggak untuk oh aku mau juga mau pakai. Uh, Sebenarnya di scrim udah dilihat sih dari MPLPH ada player pakai Roger juga tapi spellnya lebih ke arah vengeance. Oh, jadi kalian memodifikasi juga ya? Ya awalnya pas ngeliat itu aku juga pengen pakai tapi nggak dikasih. Gak dikasih. Siapa yang nggak kasih? Siapa tuh? Semuanya. Semuanya. Hasil hasil. Gak percaya gak percaya. Sekarang gimana? Um, percaya aja dia. Percaya uh, aja. Yeah. Percaya aja tapi dua minggu akan break. What is your plan guys for these two week breaks? Um, gak tahu bedek tapi pasti kadera mau kebang. Mau kebang. <laughs> Dan penutupan hari ini begitu meriah tentunya untuk tim Geek Fam tersenyum The King Slayer. Look apa yang akan kita nantikan nih untuk Geek Fam di minggu yang kelima MPL. Penutupan untuk Geek Fam. Apa? Apa yang akan kita nantikan nih di minggu kelima buat Geek Fam? Geek Fam akan semakin ganas kah? Ya makin ganas. Makin ganas. Mau sampaikan gak sesuatu gak? Mau menyampaikan sesuatu? Buat siapa? Buat keluarga boleh, uh, buat Pak RT boleh, buat, yang buat Ayang yang Babs boleh. Geek Community, thank you yang udah support, udah datang. Datang lagi next week. Ya ya, next week libur ya. Nanti di minggu kelima ya teman-teman semuanya. Mari kita tepuk tangan untuk tim Kick Fan. Dan what happened 21 The King Slayer masih melakukan hal yang sangat baik. So caster, please break it down. Congratulations once again to Geek Fam and the Geek community out there. A two to one again against RRQ. It's a day of two to ones today. A day of two to ones. Eh. We'll see if the last match could be a two to one as well. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we still have to see the MVP. I wonder who it is, man. The guy constantly always dealing the most damage, man. Oh could no. Could it be a man, a myth, a legend? Or is it possibly 
A boy. A boy. Oh, it's a boy. The player of the match by the by player of the match presented by the official tournament smartphone Samsung Galaxy. I kind of lagged out there without Max Stream, but it's okay. A boy MVP two one eleven KDA on the Novaria. He's just been so consistent, and it's not just even this match. It's like from the start of the season when Geek Fam wasn't doing great. He was the man, yeah. but he's a boy that you could count on. Ooh. Absolutely. As the player of the match highlights by the official gold partner, Ubes Gold. Man, that early game, you saw this play coming in from RRQ, but Chadera outplayed it. And even when it comes to the rotation speed, the fact that the Baksha is there means that the backup comes in so rapidly before you know it. Novaria, Baksha already coming in. And with that kind of front line, that is what allows the Selena to have so much more space. Boloisky isn't opening up the map per se, so he doesn't need to be tanky. He can stay elusive and still play make. And even when he does get taken out right here, it's after a lot of effort, man. They had to sacrifice Irad and use several ultimates right there. And man, Vin was trying so hard to make those very surprising plays, but when you try and go for fast, this is what happens. Sometimes it doesn't really land as expected. And that's just the risk that you take when you try and play with that style. So, so tough. I think, they, I think because most of the members of Geek Camp were actually missing, he expected more members to be there. I think he expected maybe the whole team to be there. But even if, right, in that position, he gets the wild charge, say, onto three members, Banana was pretty far back. The only guy who could follow up was Lemon with the Dawning Light. And at that point, I don't even think he has enough damage to really threaten any of the Geek Camp members, right? So. Even then, let's say there were five members all there. No follow-up equals to still same problem. It's way, he was way too ahead of the team. Well, when you go for speed, that's even a split second in like, wait, are you sure? That will allow that huge distance to be created between Vin and his team. So, of course, there's some things they can really work on right here. We take a look at the item builds though. Selena, Malayski on the Selena with the Starlium. That's what I'm really interested about. How much value did he get from this item? The damage for sure is there, but how much true damage is he actually getting in these skirmishes? Especially when, for the most part, he isn't really going in aggressively to really apply that damage. We were talking earlier about the, of course, the damage dealt. It's gonna be a boy. Oh, seven, 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 seven? Oh, but that's the lucky number coming in from Chadera on the Roger. A, lot, a much better performance compared to the previous Roger game. And again, he was using the Has Claws build, so he's a lot more durable. And that's the other issue with RRQ. They don't really have enough damage, especially in the earlier stages of the game. Once the, the fight keeps going, like they're going to rely on continuous uh, instances of damage. So let's take a listen to their comms here with yeah. by the good old moment by UBS Gold. The shell of Geek's former glory, right? The Geek I mean, fam unity. The fam, not the fam unity. Them. Yeah, the, the Geek, geek them? fam? The Geek them? Unity, not fam unity. Uh, as in Geek fam unity. Yeah, their unity. Their unity. Not the fam unity. The unity no, the fam unity geek are fam. not here anymore. They exactly. Have, yeah, they're They've out there with meet and greet. Meet and greet. Oh, meet and greet. With the Geek fam players. And their unity. Huh? Yes. Yes, the Geek Fam Unity out there to see and meet and greet the Geek Fam players is Unity. So, there's a lot of Unity. Well, we'll be united as well in a, we are a short break, actually. Do we? How I short? Don't, I don't think so. What? Th th that short? That's average. That's that, 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 that short? Like anyway, 
Ladies and gentlemen, we do still have one more match ahead of us. Actually, wait, before we get to that, you know how Chidera was 777? Mm -hmm. Geek Fam was 7th in the standings. Okay, that was so unimportant, but... Hmm. Anyway, let's hmm. jump into the break because we'll be right back for the last game of the day. Don't go anywhere because it's going to be Alter Ego. See you after the break. Wow. So actually, now with that win, are Q or 7? Hey. Yeah, no, not, not necessarily because it depends on who loses here. Oh, right? If he, no, if Alter Ego loses, then... Welcome to Gameplay Indonesia Season 3 Gamera! Galaksi A55 A35 5G awesome tiap hari. Ini Galaksi A55 5G. Nge game lancar, listrik terus-terusan, bisa tahan dua harian. Nah, ini Galaksi A35 5G. Bisa terus berkreasi walau dalam gelap dan tanpa batas. Makin aman dengan Oxford. Be awesome every day. Pakai aplikasi GoPay, dompet andalan gamers. Banyak damage-nya. Ada cashback hingga 20 ribu. Buat upgrade skin baru. Kita seringan gak makan memori. HP lemot bisa victory. Top up langsung dalam game. Tanpa hambatan. Ikut asal lintasi MPL di aplikasi GoPay. Menambah total hadiah ratusan juta. Bonus stage. Gratis gratis kali transfer kemana aja. Beli pusat harga termurah. Skin curi sekarang mudah. Download sebelum mabarkan. Di dunia games, pilih game, masukkan game ID, pilih diamond, masukkan kode promo, dan pilih metode pembayaran. Masukkan kode OTP, selamat kamu dapat tambahan kuota. Upgrade gameplaymu sekarang. Game smash andalanku, bikin mainku semakin hebat. Tukar dagger rings, diamond dan voucher game kau dapat. Main moba apa aja, win streak di tanganmu. Cuma game smash semakin makin no debat. Beli paketnya dan aktifkan boosternya sekarang. Character select. Where? <laughs> you lapper. Stop. Pakai klik in the wallet. Belanja satu jam sampai dan gratis ongkir lo. Wah, belanja online kayak belanja di toko Indomaret. You can ya siap main lagi. Let's go. Belanja online seperti di toko.
find me And there's no one I'd rather be You can sit around and wait and see For a moment I'll be standing free So hurry up and wait for me Got a bag of chips by the sea The sun is blazing down I've got my smile now Here's the thing Your chips will really make me sing Come on, relax and have some chips with me Chill out, lay back, I'm right where I wanna be We've got time, time to take it easy You always tell me to speed up, but slow down I'll be kicking my feet up and just going to town mm -hmm. A bag of chips in hand I got nothing planned, yeah Good treats by the sand You know I wanna chow down Oh yeah So when you ask me if I'm gonna stay I'm promising you I will Cause there's one thing we gotta do
I'm sorry. Leave me alone. Here, enter. Galaxy A55 A35 5G awesome tiap hari. Ini Galaxy A55 5G. Ngegame lancar, win streak terus-terusan, bisa tahan dua harian. Nah, ini Galaxy A35 5G. Bisa terus berkreasi walau dalam gelap dan tanpa batas. Makin aman dengan Noxfold. Be awesome every day. Pakai aplikasi GoPay, dompet andalan gamers. Banyak damage-nya. Ada cashback hingga 20 ribu. Buat upgrade skin baru. Kita seringan gak makan memori. HP lemot bisa victory. Top up langsung dalam game. Tanpa hambatan. Ikut aksesori FPL di aplikasi GoPay. Mendapatkan lokal hadiah ratusan juta. Bonus stage. Gratis-gratis kali transport kemana aja. Beli pusat harga termurah. Skin juri sekarang mudah. Download sebelum mabarkan.
mudah di dunia games. Pilih game, masukkan game ID. Pilih diamond, masukkan kode promo, dan pilih metode pembayaran. Masukkan kode OTP. Selamat, kamu dapat tambahan kuota. Upgrade gameplaymu sekarang. Get flash andalanku, bikin mainku semakin hebat. Tukar the gearings, diamond dan voucher game kau dapat. Main MOBA apa aja, wish week di tanganmu. Cuma games max, makin-makin no debat. Beli paketnya dan aktifkan boosternya sekarang. Character Select Where? <laughs> you Lapper Stop! Pakai klik in the wallet, belanja satu jam sampai dan gratis ongkir lo Wah, belanja online kayak belanja di toko Indomaret You Kenya, siap main lagi Let's go! Belanja online seperti di toko I'm me, and there's no one I'd rather be You can sit around and wait and see For a moment I'll be standing free So hurry up and wait for me Got a bag of chips by the sea The sun is blazing down I've got my smile now, here's the thing Your chips are really make me sing Come on, relax and have some chips with me Chill out, lay back, I'm right where I wanna be We've got time, time to take it easy You always tell me to speed up, but slow down I've been kicking my feet up and just going to town mm -hmm. A bag of chips in hand I got nothing planned, yeah Good treats by the sand You know I wanna chow down Oh yeah So when you ask me if I'm gonna stay I'm promising you I will Cause there's one thing we gotta do Just doing my job. Can I see the highlights? 
I'm off the clock. <sighs> yeah! I can't wait to see your portals in action! Looks like Red Team's trying to catch Chip alone up top! But he just calmly dropped his portal and Alpha Alt in to flip this fight around! A great example of skills persisting through portals! Double kill! Cyclops is taking a serious beating from Gord! But it's Chip to the rescue! Will he make it? What a clutch save! Poor Gord just got jumped JJK style! Marla's just in time for the buy one, get one special! Man, next time, look before you enter enemy portals! Ha! Here, enter. Oh, no. Why? 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 Why?
trying to get Jeremy trying to drag the members of RG right under the turret. It's not enough though. Gray coming all the way in. He cleans it all the way up. Just no way for him to run. Just like that. That's what the body will open the place. It will blow up. We're going to be getting a little bit of a little slow. Rafa is ready to. Terus berlari, terus ke arah puncak tertinggi. Ku takkan berhenti, hanya sampai di sini. Kemenangan abad menanti. You know we won't miss if we unite our focus and if you haven't noticed, we all live. Yeah.
kemenangan 2-1 mereka. Di match pertama Evo's Glory bisa tersenyum dan di match kedua pun ada Geek Fam yang bisa pulang dengan kemenangan. Namun di match penutupan kali ini akan mempertemukan tim yang punya histori cukup panjang. Karena El Familia Alter Ego akan bertemu dengan keluarganya sendiri yaitu Cassius. Jadi dari coachingnya sendiri akankah mereka bisa membaca pikiran satu sama lain dan kita akan menyaksikan bersama-sama pertempuran antara Alter Ego dan juga Dewa United di Ambil Indonesia Season 13. Begitu bahagia tentunya semua yang ada di sini melihat bagaimana perkembangan dari keduanya namun kita bisa melihat bahwa Dua-duanya punya dendam satu sama lain. Karena ada satu tim yang belum bisa untuk mendapatkan kemenangan. Satu pun dari pertemuan mereka di match-match terakhirnya. Jadi kita akan mengetahui lebih lanjut. Seperti apa atau trik apa yang akan mereka lakukan. Dan langsung saja kita panggilkan inilah dia. Mantan keluarga yang sekarang harus bertemu beradu di panggung. Inilah dia Ars dan juga Cassius. Kok gak gandengan sih? Hah? Mau nikahin Bude. Loh jangan dong. Udah nyapa belum tadi di belakang panggung kalian? Belum. Belum, belum bentar. Kan udah musuhan. Oh duh 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 duh. Sudah berpisah ya. Tapi gimana? Ars hari ini feeling good? Good banget. Good. Udah tahu otaknya soalnya. Hmm, ini ini. <laughs> Menarik. Kalau Ars katanya feeling good karena udah bisa ngebaca pikiran. Kalau dari Cassius gimana? Bet banget sih hari ini. Wih, 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 kenapa itu? Gak tau gak pede aja. Hmm. Kamu gak mau ngomong sesuatu gitu, itu beneran atau gak sih menurut Mars? Bener, bener, Bude gak pede saya. Kenapa bisa gak pede? Gak tau, Ae kuat banget kan. Wow, kayaknya kalian yang baru ngedapetin kemenangan nih. Ini mereka lagi lustrik. Kuat dari mananya menurut dari Cassius? Karena udah gak ada saya kan, jadi makin lebih kuat. Wow, <laughs> wow. lucu ya, seru nih ya. Memang umur segini lagi lucu-lucunya ya sepertinya. Cassius, kamu berpisah dengan Alter Ego dan sekarang di Dewa United. Tapi gimana sih kamu ngelihat Alter Ego yang sekarang tanpa adanya kamu masih dengan mungkin Alter Ego yang kamu kenal dulu kah? Atau ada yang berbeda karena sekarang Ars udah bareng Coach Aldo nih. Ada sentuhan yang berbeda jadi beda kah Alter Ego? Beda ya pasti ya karena ada orang-orang baru kan. Jadi beda banget. Yang sama paling Pai doang. Masih sama-sama aja mainnya masih kayak gitu, masih gitu. jelek. Hmm. Masih main dari ya? Hmm, masih main dari jelah doang. Kak Pai, dengarkan itu. Tapi kalau dari Ars sendiri gimana ngelihat sekarang Dewa dapat sentuhannya Cassius? Jadi alter ego yang lama gak sih Dewa sekarang? Waduh, <laughs> jadi makin apa tuh? Makin jago. Makin jago. Makin kekeluargaan. Oh makin kekeluargaan, bener. Ya kan budaya itu maksudnya kan? Iya, jadi makin kekeluargaan dua-dua ya. Tapi karena kalian katanya udah bisa baca satu sama lain nih. Kamu ngebaca apa kira-kira nih dari Cassius di match kali ini? Banyak sih, apa ya? Yes. <laughs> Dia masih suka minum Americano paling, masih suka begadang. Hey, 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 oh, matchnya, ya? matchnya, matchnya. <laughs> salah ya. <laughs> matchnya, atau anak-anaknya kah diapain nih sebelum match? Gak ada sih Bude, heaven aja paling. Heaven aja, kamu ngebacanya seperti itu ya. Kalau kamu ngebaca Ars kira-kira gimana ya? Atau ngebaca Alter Ego seperti apa? Kalau saya ngebaca rosternya sih tadi yang main. Hmm, udah kelihatan ya. Apa? Baca. Nah responmu menarik, menarik. atas line up hari ini? Menarik, soalnya ada yang baru kan yang belum main. Nah menariknya itu ke arah yang mana nih? Tarik ada, ada banyak arah loh. <laughs> Ke arah mana? Ya pokoknya surprise lah buat yang main hari ini Alter Ego. Surprise? Buat kalian sendiri surprise gak? Surprise banget, kaget. Terus apa yang kalian lakukan? Makanya saya gak pede Bude, tadi kan saya bilang. Hmm. Itu yang bikin gak pede. Oke karena line up hari ini, hmm. kamu membawa sesuatu yang mengejutkan ya Ars ya? Apakah sengaja untuk ngebawa Cassius? Khusus ya, buat lawan mantan. Ya khusus itu khusus. <laughs> khusus buat lawan mantan, hari ini spesial. Dan, ya betul. Oke. Okay. Tapi untuk kata-kata terakhir, mungkin ada yang ingin kamu sampaikan atau ada yang mau kamu bilang-bilangin nih? Apa ya? Ke Ilyas sih gak ada, paling ke papanya Ilyas. Om masih alter champs apa udah jadi dewa? Oh pertanyaannya gitu ya. Kalau kamu, Cassius? Bad luck, Kak. 
Pet lah, ah, eh, no good luck for ah, eh. Katanya gitu, tapi kita nggak akan tahu seperti apa pikiran dari kedua coach ini. Tentunya yang menarik karena mereka bisa membaca satu sama lain. Silahkan dilanjutkan membaca satu sama lain dan good luck kasih tepuk tangan dong untuk kedua coachnya. Thank you semuanya. Dan begitu bahagia tentunya ngelihat kedua sahabat yang ada di panggung. Dan bener-bener sih kita penasaran seperti apa. Yang katanya, tuh tadi udah kelihatan tuh line up-nya. Wah aku udah bisa baca pikiran. From MPL Arena, Jakarta. MPL Season 13 is powered by Moontop. Presented by official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. Official e-wallet, GoPay. Official gold partner, UBS Gold. We own this. Patterns, history, and change. Which one of the three will come up on top for today? As previously, in match number two, it was once again an amazing win coming Rebellion up from Ibos. Geek. From match number two, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? With history repeating itself once again, Geek being able to take a win over our Q. Now, the question is, can, can. Alter Ego be able to once again win it out against Dewa United is the question. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the caster desk here on the English broadcast at MPL ID Season 13 to close out week number four and to make the standings a lot more clearer. But before we get into that, we do want to thank our sponsors. Thank you so much because MPL ID Season 13 is powered by Moonton, presented to you by the official tournament smartphone Samsung Galaxy. Our official e-wallet is GoPay. Our official gold partner, UBS Gold. We would also like to thank our partners in eSports, Dune Games, Games Max, Orimo, and Telkomsel. Our suppliers, Inamart, Point Coffee, Neo, QLED, Super Smart TV Plus, Saturdays. And of course, thank you to our government partner, PBESI. And it's been a crazy week number four already. I'm expecting another two to one, like we were given and blessed with last time around. And here it is, the standings. This is what we're talking about. So now our Q, unfortunately for Arashi, <laughs> has dropped to number seven. Oh. And now Dewa and Alter Ego, they're going head to head. And they're also tied. That's how crazy the season is, man. You lose one match, you drop down three places. It's a bit unusual. We certainly aren't used to that drastic of a change, but that was the standings brought to you by our official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. And we'll have to see, whoever wins this one, it's gonna shift the standings by quite a bit. I think it's gonna be actually quite insane because I actually looked at the game win lose earlier. Mm -hmm. If Dewa United lose 2-0, they'll still be ahead of our RQ. But if Alter Ego lose 2-0, they will be below RQ because they'll have the same 8-10 game win lose record. But hmm. head to head, RQ did beat Alter Ego yesterday, so RQ will be six, and I believe it'll be Deo or Alter Ego that goes to that seventh spot. So a fall from grace from a team that in week one, week two looked to be one of the best teams in MPLID. They were dominating. Absolutely. But here, two Alpha Family coaches competing. 
with their own accolades. One playing on the world stage, one just astounding everyone. We'll have to see what they can do, but... Oh, hang on a minute! Whoa! What? what? It's Wrecked! No way! Wrecked is back in the lineup as their roamer? Talk about veterans and their comeback. I mean, it worked for RRQ in that first match. Let's see if it's going to work out here for Alter Ego. Meanwhile, for Adewa United, still the same five. Dixon, Lanaya, Keys, Drian, and Watt. And I am still flabbergasted with that lineup. For Dewa, they reveal their veteran in the Rome to help them carry the last Kage. All from the beginning. Now with Lanaya, with a mix of their season 12 with the veterancy of Drian. They've had a good pattern, looking to continue it against the three face masks. It's the Apostles of God! Dewa United Esports! Coming in with the veterancy of their own. Trying to beat Alter Ego and make sure that the hype train that was so strong from week one is down for good. Dewa United Esports right here. Trying to make a statement, trying to make sure that they can re-establish themselves after a couple of missteps along the way. Their performance has definitely been shaky, but we have seen a moments of brilliance from this team. And that's on the back and the behind of Adrian in the Rome. And speaking about Romers. Shaky alter ego in week number four. But there's one man who can fix it. One man who stands above the rest. A world champion wrecked, leading the pack now for the three face masks. Alter Ego! Coming into the stage with the power of family. We'll see if the mortals united can go up against the Apostles, especially with their newfound hunger for victory and a new face in the roster. So everyone's guess who's gonna come out on top. Will he be the answer that Alter Ego severely needs to fix? With Rex coming back in the lineup, a veteran, like you guys mentioned, a world champ. Not a lot of people have that title in their name. And I'm wondering if it's going to be enough to bring them forward, to end their shaky performance that we've seen so far from Alter Ego. Here on stage, the men behind the drastic change. Coach Nafari for Alter Ego with case just for Dewa United. Of course, Jack Lee and Aldo in the wings to try and bring some numbers around to try and achieve victory. We'll see, especially for Coach Nafari though, what is the idea behind this? Is there a specific strat where Rek needs to really find success? Or is he just the better player altogether? Because for a long time, we've been talking about how improved Rossi has been. To see him no longer in the roster for now, it's quite surprising. But back to the point of the coaches, right? It's so insane. I'm always so used to seeing them on the same side. And now as opponents, it's weird. Hmm. For sure. It's a foreign sight to behold. Team head to head though for Alter Ego and Devil United. Team win rate 50%. Once again, another evenly matched team statistic. More kills for the side of Alter Ego though. The more aggressive, the more tempo based playstyle. Whereas for Dewa, at least in the beginning, they seem to be more calculated, more strategic in their approach. So we'll see. Now with the shift and changes, we might just see the exact opposite. I want to highlight the Roamers again, right? Because with him coming back, with Rekt coming back into the fray, does that change the overall play style that we're used to seeing Alter Ego with? Mm, we'll have to see. I mean, looking at their keys to victory here by Samsung Galaxy, it's a don't overthink and let Bang Otat work. <laughs> okay. And utilize Taz's objective power. Like you said, with the with the roamer changing, there's for sure gonna be a bit of a change. But utilizing Taz's objective power is something that we've seen a lot more in the beginning. And now it seems like Taz he's trying different things out. It's not exactly a straightforward approach, which can be a good thing, but it seems like as a whole, as a team, they haven't really been on the same page exactly. And that is something that they have to try and fix up. I think they're let Bang Otat work is something that's 
can be quite crucial for Alter Ego. They've looked really messy, especially yesterday against RRQ. Maybe due to a lot of people making calls. Now that Wrecked is in there, there's only one thing I can think of. It has to be the shot calls. Along with that, keys to victory by Samsung Galaxy for Dewa, though, on the other side. Drian's pocket picks can be advantageous. And if they win the playmaking matchup against Pine, they can get more control over the Lord Pit. We've seen that be very crucial in today's matches. And that pocket pick in the hands of Drian, I think we haven't seen it being utilized as much. But if they save it for a final pick, again, this is the man with literally many faces. He can pick up a lot of different heroes, a lot of different play styles, depending on what the team needs. And with a crafty mind behind it, on the right side right there, I think we're gonna, we should be seeing something a bit crazy. And I feel like that's the opposite to the other side. I feel like Wrecked is a different spectrum. Last time around, the last time he played, we had a discussion about his hero pool. And there's an argument to be made now that despite him having less of a hero pool as compared to Drian, being less versatile and flexible than Drian, that it's now his quote-unquote meta. Mm -hmm. And now, Wrecked is under Coach Aldo, which we know to be very notorious in expanding his players' as hero pool. And since previously Wrecked wasn't in the roster, maybe the bans will kind of reflect that. The fact that teams aren't really expecting to go against Wrecked and maybe a different kind of hero pool. But already for Alter Ego, Amasha, <laughs> yeah. first ban. Oh, the Arlet and the x -Borg. They do not want to deal with any kind of dive whatsoever. Dewa will be going for the more generic jungle assassin bans. That's a fair strategy to take. But I wonder how the mid lane is going to look when everything is just left wide open. Then the mid lane will probably look the same. Vexana, Novaria, Valentina so far. It's just been I guess. a mix of those three. But for Dewa, I think something that they have to really keep in mind is that Mathilda. If they let that go, remember, sure, yeah, Grok, Angela, they have something in common. Screening. If you give wrecked heroes like those uh, type of screeners, Mathilda and even Hilda, he's known to be really aggressive. He follows you all around. I think he did that to Sully Boy back when he was in Evos. And yes, every jungler back in the day, the marksmen, the assassins, just couldn't even farm up against that Mathilda. They ban out the Angela though, so more respect towards the Angela. But I think this should be a Mathilda first pick then. But either or, it's still a respect ban True. for Wrecked. I've never seen... Well, he was the first person to make an Angela as aggressive as that. <laughs> I've never seen anyone play that Angela in the way that he does. So there's a respect coming through here, coming from Devil United. But Alter Ego go for the Matilda, like you mentioned. It's being left open. Mathilda, first pick. I think for Alter Ego, that's a great start. There's a lot of ways you can build up this composition from a Mathilda. For Dewa though, with that limited information, not really a lot of things revealed just yet. I think it's safe to assume they're gonna go for some of the power picks. The Vexanas come to mind. The Novaria has been very, very valuable. And I feel like, from, if I can, if I'm, I'm learning anything from today's matches, I feel like I would go yeah. for the Novaria, especially in this kind of five-man team environment. But no, they were united. Disagree completely. That's a Roger and a Fredrin. Wow. I mean, we've only seen Roger lose once. Was it once? It's once, right? Just once. Ch Chidera in game two, right? That's it. I, I think so. Yeah. Yes, so once. Only one loss from Roger, and it's been picked up six times. This is going to be the seventh time that we will be seeing Roger. Let's see if Watt can continue this record. He also did get away a victory against Onik with the Roger too, but that was accompanied by the Masha. CC and Barats though, picked up by Alter Ego. Barats-Mathilda combo. We haven't seen it. We've seen it actually once or twice in this season. Before that, haven't seen it in a while. With the CC in play as well. It's not quite an Angela, but having the extra shielding and the extra mobility will make the CC just that much more of a nuisance to deal with. And it'll be much easier to weave in and weave out of these team fights if it gets to an uncomfortable position for the CC. Without the Angela, it could come integral to the gameplay. Devil United, though, with the last pick, do they want to pick up something? Like the Novaria, that might be a little bit more risky with the CC now available for Alter Ego. So they go for something a little, a little bit safer. Again, so much dive coming from Alter Ego with the Matilda. They go for Minotaur, something that can go for counter-engage. 
We do have a comment from Clover. Mm. Dreon is really brave to use Masha in game number two. He lost, yet used her again in game number yeah. three. Brave move, Dreon, the creator of the meta. That's the plus of a veteran player, guys. Ooh. I gotta specify the guys there, man. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the mental state, Time to take the, 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 the boldness to just go with a new strategy, new pick, and double down when it doesn't work out. That was definitely something we highlighted, which is very impressive. And with the Bruno banned away as well, they were you're kind of limiting who is going to try and match that Roger in the lane. Already a strong matchup, but wanting to force Alter Ego into something that's a bit more bullyable, a bit more abusable in the lane. They're already hiding their the EXP lane and their mid lane though. And you can arguably say that those two lanes are very important right now. With so much emphasis being on the rotations from the mid lane and from the macro wave control in the EXP lane. Mm -hmm. You've seen the combo as well with the Novaria, Minotaur, Fredrin, you know, that enhanced hitbox. So mm. for Alter Ego, they're really respecting that now. Banning it away, they'd rather go up against Evixana because they have the Matilda to actually get these tanky members or whoever it is that is caught under the CC of Dewa United's composition right now. Meanwhile for Dewa, I guess they're just looking to give the Roger a good time in lane, right? A Bruno ban as well. They might want to limit some ma mages as well. Maybe even... Oh! Okay, no. They're just going to go straight for the gold lanes. The two gold lanes that can at least withstand this Roger in the gold. The Ixia ban, it comes through. And we've seen the Ixia get comboed in with the Matilda. So they nullify that possibility completely out of the board. Alter Ego with the Novaria being taken off the board. Do they want to double down on the mid laners here? Vexana ban? They can go for a Vexana ban. And you can't go wrong with that because unless they want, they, they are predicting Dewa to pick something else and they want to secure it for themselves or they want to leave it open so whatever Dewa takes, they'll have a bit of an answer. Because, by all means, Dewa hasn't secured their own mid laner. But Vexana will come through. So now we'll see, without a Novaria and Vexana, we've seen the Nanas show up yeah. several times. I'd say Faramis. Yeah, Faramis, especially for the beefier side, which is both, by the way, can work. Because the difference is, Alter Ego, they have Krite. Krite has used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 heroes. Wow. in the mid lane. So it's not really tearing into his hero pool as compared to Kaze, who's only picked up five. Vexana's gone, Nova's gone, Valentina, Gord, and Faramis. Those are the three heroes that they could possibly go for. But oh, wow. he adds something new. He adds the Lilia here. Yeah, I think if they went for Faramis, it would be too risky because Alter Ego can then pick up the Valentina, right? Don't want to give that ultimate either to Alter Ego. So they go for the safe choice, the Lilia. Well, now, if Alter Ego goes for the Faramis, we, we've seen that come through once before. faramis Mathilda combo. I'm not quite certain on how it ended. But it is an option they can take, but they have to be careful. From the looks of it, the neutral objective game right now is heavily favoring Dewa United. If Alter Ego want to try and get something, they have to ensure that they have oh. enough damage to trade back. The Bruno, uh, the Brody might supply that. The Valentina, though, relatively short range. Might be a bit risky here, but it will give them access to the Minion Fury. All right, with the Brody, we've seen this matchup literally just in the previous game, the Brody and the Roger. Roger able to dodge with the Lycan Pounce and also survive in lane quite well against the bully nature of that Brody. Final pick though for Dewa, should be the XP lane. Arlet still up for grabs, could be utilized here, but maybe they want to go for something more prolonged. Dixon though, not his style. Lapu, Terizla, those Export too. Those are the three picks we're used to seeing from Dixon. The export makes sense in a lane that's so bully, like the CC lane. I think it's relatively secure as well in case some ganks do come his way. Clock has been done taking. It's a huge song instead. Wow, without a real squishy backline to target, Dale has opted for a huge song for lane prowess for dive together with the Roger. With the Lilia as well, they just want to go in in these team fights, just like they did against Onik with the Roger Masha, but just a different variant of that. Full dive composition coming in from Dewa. Meanwhile, Alter Ego with that losing lane in the gold lane, it's looking to shape up to be a very risky draft and composition. However, 
However, counter index favors alter ego. The counter index have been, has, has been wrong, man. Like, I'm not even joking. <laughs> like, even in the RQ Geek fam, it was 100% wrong. <laughs> Well, so we have to see how it actually plays out in the Land of Dawn because it is time. It is time. It is time for the three face masks to rise up once again. Will Wrecked be their save and grace, their answer to their shaky performance? We'll see as we jump into the Land of Dawn for game number one against the Sons of Gods. Oof. Dewa. Welcome Dewa. to Mobile Legends. Oof. Getting a little. Intense there with the Whispers, but look at the battle spell. CC with a Purify, not something we haven't seen before. It will be a bit more squishy, but with the backup coming in, the, the ability to just cleanse off any kind of crowd control in the midst of a big fight can be very important. But with Keith having the Sprint here, that is, I think is a good option, especially when there's so much catch-up potential coming in from the side of Alter Ego. Mm -hmm. So much catch-up potential. I don't know. I just when, I, when you said that, I just thought about actual ketchup. Ooh. Are you hungry? <laughs> what? No, it's kind of random. It was kind of random. Okay. Well, you know, well, yeah. Anyway. Back to the game. Uh huh. The mid lane clear potential definitely favors keys over Krite. Looking at the emblems, this mid lane setup has been very popular. Agility and wilderness blessing, and then your choice between the lethal ignition and the impure rage. But Nino. Going full purple with the quantum charge. What though? With with the thrill. So it's a bit of a difference here. Flat damage against penetration. And we can see now as well, Krite. Understanding that in terms of wave clear, sure, there is a little bit more of an advantage for Krite, but Krite, oh. level four, Ooh. has a lot of ultimates to work with here. So knowing Krite and how aggressive he can and his adaptations in game, I do believe that there is a case to be made for Krite and the Valentina. There's a case to be made? Oh, okay. Well, sure, we'll have to see how that matchup plays out. I think Kaze will always have the the first move when it comes to these rotations. But so far, Ultra is matching it really well. In these lore dances though, the Lilia is a very underrated source of poke damage. The fact that you can put your spell out and the explosion can come out later when you're in relative safety means that if they're trying to zone people away, like right now, they can do a lot of damage. Black Dragon from the Glooms as well, over to Taz now. Gets out with the Guiding Wind, but Lanaya is on it. Taz, death to this welcome late. Minion Fury as well, but Lanaya secures it with the Retribution. Taz is going to be taken low. Kays also taken down. A good Petrifying, a Furious Dive on to Rekt as he gets sliced and diced by Dixon and Lanaya. Two oh. for two as of right now, and a Brazer's Wrath to get down on Pi, but he's able to walk out of this one. They were united, were able to get the turtle, however. So essentially, it's a three for two. A small win for Dewa United in the first few minutes of the game and around that neutral objective contest. And at this point, what will Alter Ego do next? Because technically, when we're talking about wave clear, the Matilda does help with the wave clear, does it not? And should that not help in rotations as well? It does help, but against the Lilia, with the spammable nature of the spells, it's still hard to really match up. Even if Novaria or Vexana do show up, they have an advantage when it comes to how easily, how, how many spells is required to actually clear the wave out. But Lilia can still very much clear the wave in no time at all. So when it comes to that, I feel like that allows Drian to be a lot more freely roaming around the map, knowing that he's not really essential to the wave clear priority in the mid lane. Yeah, we can actually see that coming through here already. Very quick to the top side, Lanaya, however. Chomped up, thrown back, but it's Taz who gets caught now, has the Guiding Wind to get himself out of there. But Dewa, again, pushing the pace very early on. That's a Hoss Claws in the inventory of Watt. A lot more sustainability, and very deceptive tankiness in the next big fight against Nino. It's a, it's a win of nature rush. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen that. On a Brody, yeah. I guess against the Yu Tong, against the, against the Roger, he just, against Lanaya on the Fredrin as well. He just feels that much of a threat and he's trying to counter the big dive potential. But as a result, he's, gonna, he's not going to be up, outputting a lot of damage in these fights. What's your take on this? Wind of Nature, Brody early. 
first item. Not a fan. <laughs> Personally, not a fan. But we'll see how it works out for him. I mean, see, what makes sense if he actually wants to participate in these team fights. He is rotating, but I don't think he's... We'll see. Dewa holding onto the turtle. Rody already in the mid lane. Wants to participate in this team fight. The Black Dragon form gets popped in. Kays doing some damage. The Glooms as well. Red Tree Battle. Taz wins it. Gets the Guiding Wind to safety, but gets engaged on. That's an Appraiser's Wrath. A Furious Dive. Everything. And a Kitchen Sink thrown at him. Nino just clearing out the mid lane. So not participating in the fights. Not yet. 0-1 trade in for Dewa United. Ooh. Alter Ego picking it up. Oh, yo, yo, man, Pi yeah. picks up a kill, a solo kill at that against Dixon. All right, that's something. Dixon trying to tango with the yo, yo, man. Pi just shuts him down. Glass of the Orias has completed for Alter Ego. That's going to improve their survivability in these fights. The same is available for Drian soon enough. I don't believe he has the Class of the Oasis just yet. But Cryde has preemptively, preemptively finished the win of uh, the Necklace of Durance as well. So even the regular healing coming in and, and the regeneration coming in from Fredrin, from Yutong, everything has been mitigated for now. But Alter Eagle, that, that means that they're itemizing very defensively, right? NOD for Cryde, and then we see the win of Nature for Nino as well. Very, uh, very reactively, if that makes sense. Okay. It's not exactly um, an aggressive kind of adaptation. It's just that they, they see problems and they are just rushing to complete items to really deal with it without completing their quote-unquote core items that shouldn't be situational. So that means that Alter Ego require a little bit more time to get the ball rolling. It looks like they're rotating as four here. Are they going in for oh. a gank onto what? They are. Red Tree as well committed down onto Watt, but he is able to just dash out away from this threat. Uh -oh. Kay's in the mid lane, forced to use the Black Shoes, tied up by Pi with the yo-yos, but he's good. Just uses the Black Shoes. Great tool to really kite back around. And the sprint, we haven't really been seen it being used so far, but if Pi does chase him down, that's a very valuable battle spell. And he can use it to chase down over long distances as well. Now when the turrets are still up, you don't really see the value of it. But the longer the game goes, I feel like that sprint does have more of a value. And you have to remember, it has a lower cooldown as well by about 20 seconds. That all adds up. Look at Pi, the poke on to Drion. Uses ultimate already. Lanaya now jumping out of the wreck. Give him the shot some damage, but the Denton is welcome. Will be used by Taz now. Black Dragon form comes in as well. Taz getting the guiding win. No Denton is welcome to contest, but Lanaya is so, so low. Pi dealing some damage now. Taunted up, knocked up. Good purify from Pi. Let us engage again. And Alter Ego take control. Anaya super low. Get some healing from Drian on that Minotaur. Walking back up with a taunt and a dash. That's Drian with a flicker over to Taz. But the guiding win is there. Still going to be cancelled out of three man. But Taz oh! still gets it despite the appraiser's wrath. A big fight ensues now as it's a flicker forward. And a torn apart memory from Nino. That's to insane. That's a two for zero. Taz was a level below by the way. And that was appraiser's wrath with the retribution coming in from Lanaya. That was a big steal from Taz. And that's Alter Ego now with a 2k gold lead. Taz once again just showing off his retribution. And if, you know, in those critical moments, he was being knocked out by the Minion Fury as well. How in the heck did he get that? Just Taz things, man. Yeah, he was caught in the Minion Fury, the reset as well. That was crazy. That's just Taz. Here's a game pack by our new application, GoPay, though. Rec finally returns to the MPL ID stage since the last time he played in MPL ID Season 12 when Alter Ego suffered a loss to Geek 2-0 exactly 246 days ago. And now he's back, and it's looking quite good for Alter Ego so far. The comeback, the switch-in momentum is definitely showing for Alter Ego despite Dewa United being able to control the tempo of the early to mid game. But now... With Alter Ego pushing up in the top lane, it looks like Watts will be unable to defend his own tower. Lanaya has rotated over as well, trying to defend it and will be able to do so. <laughs> just uses the ult, gets out, man. He just really wants to tie Drian and Watts together there. A little bit of a nuisance here, Pai. For Dewa, though, they don't really have a good catch. They've been trying to really punish Alter Ego, maybe noticing that the items are a bit too reactive without their base, uh, their core items, but they're unable to really force Alter Ego to stay in the fight when they can just go in and out with Wrecked. 
just like this. They go in, pick it up. If Wad or Drian jumps in there, it's a guiding win to easily slide out of danger. And with the time, with the clock ticking, Kryte has finished his Lightning Truncheon. So all these base items that has been delayed so far are being completed. Even Nino has a Sea Halberd at this point. This is where it gets tricky now for Dewa. I guess their catch will be with Dixon. He does have the Petrify. There is some CC coming in from Lanaya. But there is so much more tools that Alter Eagle can work with when they go in for a 5v5 team fight. Oh, good turn on Tapai, trying to go through this initiation before anything. Knows that he is on the Purify, not the Vengeance, so he is susceptible to these kinds of engages. Nino, though. See Halbert and the Meltic Roar, a different build. Kays trying to punish that. Ooh, not able to. He's the one who gets punished. He's the one who gets forced to use a black shoe. There's still a lot of damage coming in from Nino. The Sea Halberd does maximum HP damage as well, by the way. So against the Minotaur, the Yuzong, and the Fredrin, especially the Fredrin and Minotaur, who likes building a lot of max HP, it's a pretty valuable pickup. And of course, this, the raw stats from it is very nice to have in these situations. The situations, this dance around the neutral objective. Taz level 13, Lanaya 12. He's a level below up until this point. Dewa can easily go for a 50-50 with Anaya and the Appraisal's Wrath. Both teams still feeling each other out here. Mm -hmm. Want to force back the poke from Alter Ego. And the way that they rotate around these objectives have been phenomenal. These are one of the underrated things about the Lilia. The map vision, right? Her glooms can open up. And so Alter Ego cannot really utilize that bush to the way they want, to their liking. So they have to find a different angle if they want to go for a back door. Lords have health though. Mm -hmm. and the slow push is built up top, so Dewa, they need to make a decision. Well, it looks like it's going to be reset once again. But for Dewa, if they want to go and trade some damage, get some poke in, oh, there's healing, but look at that Dixon. Tied up already with Dixon now. Oh, just deleted. Minus Fury catching three, though. Taz very low. Watt doing some damage now with the Lycan form. Out the Taz. But Taz still stays focused on the Lord. Gets it. Watt is not dealing enough damage, and he gets obliterated by Nino. A triple kill for the man who had a win chant early. That's nearly a wiped out, Rashi. Four for zero. They get the turtle. They, they get the Lord to boot. And now they're pushing in with all the advantages that they were able to secure earlier on, his damage coming through. I mean, Pai was doing work as well in the back line. And look how much damage Kryde is already doing onto Keys. And it was so easy for him to dive in and dive out, weave in and weave out, with the help of Wrecked on the Matilda. That's a massive moment for Al Trigo right there. 10k gold lead! It's the Lord, but it's also all of these structures, one base turret and full control over the map. That one sequence has put Dewa in full defense mode in their base. And if you look at their composition, they're not designed for this. Alter Ego, they might just force force a fight, brute force it. Mm-hmm, Kaze gets brought back all the way, forced to use Black Shoes every single fight before the fight even ensues. They're able to bait away the Black Shoes and take it out of Dewa's resource pool. They're still pushing. The Lord in the bottom side going to be able to take that inhibitor turret as well. The Lord pushing in. Taz looking for an opening. 13 minutes, forcing a desperate. Oh my god, Dixon almost just got shot down from the air. A big chop from Taz, not throwing Lanaya back to the team as Nino deals damage in the back. And the Brazier's back, putting in a little bit of HP as Dixon jabs in with the Furious Dive and the Petrify. But Nino again is so sustainable. Pi once again dashing in. Rex trying to give the opportunity for the rest of the team to go for the base. But a minute away, it has been cleared out. While with Lycan 4, gets shot down again. Nino Hi. is on a roll, and the yo yo man is too. Sir Pi diving in the base, locking Dixon down and forcing him to stay in the base, to stay in the fountain. Alter Ego in a dominant fashion take game one. They strike first, ladies and gentlemen. What a performance. And leave it to Pi to make something like the CC work without the Angela. Without a vengeance too. Exactly. It's almost like he doesn't, he's doing it for a different purpose. He's not trying to take all the attention. He is actually just out there to do damage, to threaten someone, like a CC usually does, without trying to abuse the vengeance or 
the hard guard. It, it works just because his team overall is just so tanky. Absolutely well played, man. I think Wrecked has really had a massive impact on the team. The way that they were making decisions, the shot calls. Not too sure if that is the case, but this is a completely different alter ego from the alter ego we saw yesterday. Disconnected from one another, making a lot of hesitant plays happen around the map. This time, it almost seems like when they want to go in, they go in together. They go in in unity. Well, it's almost like they have a different person playing in the roster, man. And yes, with the Mathilda, it kind of forces them to do so, right? It's, it's like the composition kind of locks them in into that united playstyle, but it really fits how they've been performing. And again, we'll take a closer look later, but the itemization I find very interesting. We haven't seen that rapid of an adaptation from in the MPL at all, I think. Are you referring to the Win of Nature? Win of Nature, the Necklace of Durance first item. These are Usually these are build paths you build when you're behind because there's no other choice, right? When you really need the healing reduction, then you have to go for it just so maybe your team has a better chance. But building it when you're even or even ahead, yeah. I haven't seen it too often. Unfortunately, I still think I have to say it's really weird. Because it is. In all these team fights, I don't even remember him using the Wind of Nature is for the most for part. for the Lycan form? For Roger? Even then, right? Roger has to really... I still don't like the Wind of Nature. It's just... Nah. It's not... Twisted. I mean, I like it in the late, later stage. Of course. Because he used it in the later stage. But early on when he's focused mainly on laning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's quite weird. We do need to congratulate the player of the game. Taz, MVP, on the Barat, was able to get a lot of good retributions going for him despite all the chaos thrown at him. I think there was that one team fight where he was able to secure the Lord with so many resources already wasted, and yet he was still able to get it a level below. I think this composition really works well for Taz. We've been talking about this guy for the longest time, mm -hmm. one of the more consistent players in MPLIG, and an amazing ultra consistent retribution and with this composition if you really think about it he doesn't have to worry about anything but getting that retribution done even when he has to use the eternal's welcome he doesn't have to use it to try and catch someone all he has to do is use it to really get the guaranteed retribution attempt and the whole team can kind of like back him up on that one just like that he just keeps stealing away all these neutral objectives and even if he pays the price for it afterwards it's kind of Still okay for his team. It's just crazy how oh, this. Go. I was really waiting for that moment, man. The retry win. Yeah, I think it was max range. The retry. He was, I think, just hovering over the turtle with the retry, waiting for the timing, and he beat Lanaya to it. The guy who literally chained his ultimate to the timing of the Lord retry or the turtle retry. This is very tough for Dewa to really find anything. Especially in that mid-game, it really seems like once the blast of the Oasis was completed for Wrecked on the Mathilda, they just really lack damage. They have ways to maybe threaten a dive with the Black Dragon form. They have ways to really dive in. But at the end of the day, you see how long all three go are just staying here indefinitely. They're taking damage, by the way. It's not like Dewa isn't hitting back. But they're just so tanky, first of all. And they are t they're just shielded by a... I and mean, it's a ridiculous amount here. This was way overstaying their welcome, and yet they were still able to make it work. Pai, it as well, deep. an unsung hero. Taz doing his job. Nino getting a triple kill. All the players performed. And this is the alter ego that we saw in week number one and week number two that we kind of lost before, and now they're back. Could this be... Rex Redemption arc from last season. I hope so. Ooh. You don't want to call it out too early as well, though. I know, the Cast I know. of Curse, as always, is okay. always looming around the corner. I hope he does horrible. <laughs> there you go. We cast a curse him negatively for the positive effect. I hope he drops his phone. <laughs> 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 that, that's, that's a bit crazy, Rock. That's wild, man. <laughs> well, look at his items, though. He even went straight for the ice creams. 
knowing that for the most part he is never in, in real danger. And the only time he'll be actually oh. threatened by Dewa is if they all pile onto him. And in that case, boom, Winter Truncheon. And just like that, everything is just, just negated. And for what to be on a Roger and just not doing so well, that is that is very sad. The Dahaz Claws for Brody. This guy is a savant. He's doing things nobody has been doing on the Brody. First win in nature, first item, and then he goes for Melfic Roar second to a Sea Halberd. Mm -hmm. In a normal build, it's usually Heptasis, Melfic, Sea Halberd, or Heptasis, Sea Halberd, Melfic. This guy went win in nature, and in the end, when a lot of people go for DHS, he knows he's so ahead, might as well go for more sustain with the Haas Claws. Gee, what a man. We haven't seen Brody's build that item since Not at all. there was a change. Back then, I think the lower you are, the more lifesteal you have. Now it's getting more attack speed when you crit. So Brody's haven't really been building it. Mm -hmm. But with that win of nature and the has claws, it's going to be a lot of regeneration. So that kind of explains as well why on the Brody, he just seems to be that much tankier. Of course, the, the shielding from the guiding wind helps him as well. But that takes the whole team basically have so much more protection than usual due to the itemization. But shifting over to the EXP lane, by 100% TP and has the most damage dealt. You see this? It's like, pie. if you were Recall. hesitating about Pi, he was like, no bro, wait. Yeah. Like, Alter Ego are the type of team to look like the worst team in the league in one match and then look like the best in the other. <laughs> like, what's going on here, man? You literally, yesterday, they, they were so disconnected. It's almost like they find the solution, the problems to their solutions, and also the solutions to their problems. Whoa. Yeah, that makes sense. That's Alter Ego. So answers to their sol solution to their problems. Solutions problem to their problems solutions. and their problems. To their solutions. Oh. So it's like, yes. I, I like that. So we'll see how they fare in game number two. But before we get into it, we are going to go on a short break. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Is that Clara? Ooh. Really? Dari jauh udah keren. Terus Bude lihat tuh di depan bootnya juga, hmm, bootnya siapa tuh di depan? Di depan itu adalah bootnya Alter Ego ya. Itu 1869.600 persen 2-0 untuk Alter Ego. Loh, loh, loh. Autentik, ya. Oh gitu ya, ya? banyak banget. ya persenannya. Bener. Tapi Bude lihat tuh kayaknya banyak yang dijual di depan. Lengkap gak sih boot oh, di sini? Jelas banget ya. Karena gue sebagai orang yang menggunakan alter mesh sehari-hari ya. Mau gue tidur, mau gue pergi kemanapun ya. Alter ego di boot ini mungkin beberapa ada yang gak ada di sini nih. Mungkin karena udah diborong sama teman-teman online gitu loh Bude. Oh. Ya kan? Nah. Jadi untuk teman-teman semua kalau mau pantengin semua tentang koleksi yang ada di Alter Merch, kalian bisa cek di Instagramnya Alter Merch. Begitu loh maksud gua. Jadi banyak info di sana. Ada diskon. Oh, ada diskon. Ada diskon dong. Di sini? Di sini di rumah apa semua ada. Dapat semuanya. Dapat. Dapat. Berapa? Gimana diskonnya tuh? Gimana dapetin diskon? Jadi kalian tuh untuk teman-teman semua ya yang gak ada di sini ataupun yang ada di rumah Sono, Alter Ego itu ada ngadain diskon promo untuk lebaran guys. Oh. 50% lu bayangin, lu gaji berapa nih ada 50% udah sisi untuk Alter Ego. Ya? Oh, iya. iya sih langsung iya. sih. Karena itu, karena gini loh Bude, karena Alter Ego itu untuk produk-produk itu yang terbaik di Indonesia. Di Indonesia? Di Indonesia. dunia? Enggak. Karena belum sih. Oh belum, belum, belum. belum. Sih. Indonesia ya. aja ya. Iya belum sih. Ya. Untuk sementara ini Indonesia dulu, OTW sih. Ya. OTW gitu mendunia. Tapi kalau dari Hazelnut, paling suka yang mana? Gue paling suka semuanya sih Bude. Semuanya, berarti semuanya kita harus Bude. borong semua nih? Harus banget dong. Mumpung diskon. Mumpung diskon. Lebaran, kapan lagi lebaran pakai jersey Alter Ego? Hah? Ah. Lu bayangin sholat id pakai Alter Ego? Ah. Eh. Kan boleh pakai sarungnya juga. Oh iya, oke 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 oke. Boleh dong. Boleh, boleh. Coba. Disuruh pada beli, ayo. Jadi untuk teman-teman semua gue ulangi nih sekali lagi ya. Gue gak, gak ulang dua kali, cukup sekali aja nih ya. Buat teman-teman semua yang mau check out barang-barangnya Alter Ego, lu pada cek di Alter Merch Instagramnya. Di sana banyak banget promo diskon, 50%. Lu bayangin gaji lu kan banyak nih semua. 50% diskon, lebaran, sholat id, pakai jersey Alter Ego, pakai sarung. Udah pasti well. 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 Ya. Udah ya? Udah. 
Udah jualannya udah? Udah jualannya udah banget. Kelar ya? Kan? Kelar sih, kadang mati Altermas mau jual bihun katanya cuma oh, lo, tahun lo, lo, lo. Loh, lo, lo, semuanya tahu. jadi jual. Tapi yeah. coba dong closing langsung lempar ke caster juga. Uh, paling gini sih kalau Sampai misalnya dulu. ya kalau kalau singe gue untuk teman-teman yang mendukung yang nggak ada di sini ya ini kan teman-teman gue nih wow udah pada gacor-gacor semua nih kan pada well nih kan jadi untuk teman-teman yang ada di luar sana ya pendukung alter ego tetap tenang dan tetap enjoy aja karena lawan kita hari ini itu bukan lawan Barcelona melainkan eh santai kita bukan lawan Barcelona jadi santai aja enjoy nikmati gamenya kita cukup main santai kita melawan kelas 12 IPA 2 Nah, jadi santai, tenang. Oke, okay. ya udah. Tenang ya, ya yang tenang. bertanding Jangan di sini santai. klarifikasi dulu. Ada Alter Ego dan juga Dewa United. Mereka mau masuk ke gamenya. Oh iya, udah pasti dua kosong ya. Kalau misalnya kamu nonton juga nggak apa-apa kok ya. Kita eh, dua eh, kosong. Enggak. Emang ah. iya. Eh, iya, kita dua dua kosong. Eh, eh belum tahu. Let's go caster. Oh. Silakan, silakan. La 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 la. Alter ego. <laughs> la, 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 la. Oh, 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 we're back, we're back, we're back. We have been we're back. We're back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shout out Buddha Clara Monster. Shout out. And the moves. Shout out Buddha Clara Monster. <laughs> But we're back. We were enjoying that a bit too much. We were enjoying yeah. the interview so much. I okay. hope you guys were oh enjoying God. the interview Ooh. as much as we did. Interview. Right. Hopefully Dewa can enjoy the game in game two though. They will. Oh, how do you know? How do you it's know? It's my 2-1 curse. How do you know? Oh, it's I'm your 2-1 curse? Yes. Are you mm. lagging again? Has every game today been a reverse? No, it's not. No. Rebellion won at game two, not game one. I'm lagging. Yeah, no. I had yeah. to double check. What? What? Say, so both of you are lagging, man. You need game smacks, bro. Game smacks booster. Oh, it's not 2-1? I mean, it, it wasn't reverse sweep? No, it wasn't. What's games, Max? <laughs> watching, <laughs> see, watching your favorite team compete in MPL kind of stuns you the way they are kind of stunned right now, and it makes you want to play too. So don't let your gaming sessions end up being disrupted by lag, man. That's that's in the past. It causes you to fail. You lose your rank. Don't like it. Make your gaming session smoother and use the games, Max booster, man. Prices starts from 25,000 IDR and you can get up to 36 gigabytes of data. So hurry up and buy the package and activate the booster in the Dunya Games app and play without lag, unlike these guys. <laughs> What was that? Like, What was that? We're, we're helping them conveying to it the yes. visual way, man. They, right, are, they, yes. they have really good vision, but for those who didn't and didn't catch our visual storytelling, get some Saturday's glasses like Eterna. She cannot read usually but because saturdays has given her these glasses she's been able to read what is what, say read watching your favorite team <laughs> no, that's, compete hold oh. up hold up that's games max oh. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh. gear up for the launch of saturdays at mpl id collaboration on march 4th this eyewear is a secret weapon for dominating the battlefield available at www.saturdays.com and all saturday stores For more info, follow at Saturdays.Lifestyle on Instagram and TikTok. Now that we're done with that, so a good reading. This game you. recap right here, where we're gonna do a bit more reading. Where Pi was the guy with the highest damage dealt on Alter Ego, I believe. So they're having some very unorthodox sources of damage. Usually, we see the marksman being a being a Brody, and then like, okay, we just don't have a lot of DPS, just burst damage. But with Pi on the CC, they kind of switch places. Usually it's the XP lane trying to do that burst damage with maybe a Lapu Lapu, for instance, with a Yu Tong. But it's the exact opposite. So this is a very creative kind of strategy coming in from all Torigo. Did you do that on purpose? What? You said create. 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 Did he create? Created? Get it? Because create? No, get it? Because EA. AE, I mean. <laughs> oh no, it's not the <laughs> other way around! We were thinking the same, but not the same. We were creating problems to the solution. <laughs> that's the solution not to the problems. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not what to do. But what is in Dewa United, and we'll see what <laughs> what does in game number two. Drafting phase. Presented GP. to you by the official tournament smartphone 
SG, Samsung Galaxy. PBSG. Alter Ego and Dewa still on the same sides as game number one. We see Amasha Arla ban once again. Nolan Joy again. Export again. Mm -hmm. And if there aren't any difference, it should be an Angela ban next. Unless, unless you want to go for something different. Ooh. Something different, huh? For Dewa, they are kind of notorious for doubling down initially and then just switching it up a bit. They don't really make a lot of those crazy adjustments out of nowhere. It's almost like they want to fix the execution instead of just the drafts, but the Mathilda will not be allowed this time. It is definitely one of the higher, if not the highest impact player, but now with that, the Angela mm -hmm. makes an appearance. I'm so hyped. Yeah. I'm so hyped. This is, this should be, this should be Rex Angela. Unless they flex it for Kreit in the mid lane. Yeah, that's true. But if it's Angela Rex, we haven't seen that in so long. And that has been his signature hero from when he was born. No, I'm joking. But like, <laughs> no, he was a marksman. Hero. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's been a signature hero for quite some time. Nostalgia. Yes, nostalgia. I think it was season eight or season seven. I think season eight, the last time we did see that Angela for Rex. Maybe, maybe even season nine. We have to really look back there, but obviously with the Angela first pick, you have to deny the CC and the box shit. The two heroes that can take advantage of this heart guard, mainly the heart guard, right? For the box shit, so mobile, that sustainability. This grants him so much mo more mobility to be able to catch people off guard for the CC. Incredible battle power. Well, it still leaves the Yu Song available though. That was a big combo back then. No, Barat and Claude. Claude can be comboed as well. And this is the problem when you kind of let go of one of the setup, like the prerequisites for a lot of combos. Because now, they're kind of... Alter Ego are kind of forcing Dewa into a lot of these picks that can just be potentially used by Angela. Even though maybe Alter Ego aren't really thinking about it. But one last pick here... I would expect maybe... Vexana? Vexana maybe. Lane. No, I think I think crowd control to ensure that whoever does get a hard guard can be kept at bay will be valuable. But they are united. They might have different ideas on how to approach this problem. I think too. Yeah. Right now, let's see. The Valentina. Oh. So they want to try to utilize the hard guard against them. This is actually a pretty good pick for Dewa United, man. The CC. We did mention the combo with Angela. We also did mention the combo with the Bakshia. So yeah. the IMU grants them the ability to use the hard guard. Pee pee, poppy, poo, poo. They're definitely leveling the playing field here. It's a good pick. Now we enter the second phase and they will start with the bands. With a Valentina pickup. Do they want to start shredding through the mid laners? But there's so many options. The mid laners, huh? There's no time. When talking about utility like this, the Faramis kind of comes to mind. Lord. But it might be a bit too overloaded for all Chirigo. So they want to try and uh, try to limit the mages, but also try and make sure that all Chirigo maybe pick a mage that has a good ultimate. Although, potentially, the Valentina will just be used for the hard guard. Yeah. We do have some history on to Wrecked, though. Second place at the 30th SEA Games. First place at the M1 World Championship. And first place of MPL Indonesia Season 4 and 7. Back when he was with Evo's Legends. Evo's Legends. Oh, legends. He was just, I don't know, like, just crazy. Lee swapping his roles from time to time from Rome to gold lane, if you remember, with a signature claw too. Hmm. Hey, maybe they flex this too. Maybe Nino is on the Angela and Rekt is on the claw. What? No, I'm joking. That's more of a, like a throwback, you know. That's way, way back. I don't think we'll see it, but hey, never say never. Seems like for Dewa, they're trying to mitigate all of these shred, the physical defense lowering, and true damage heroes. But that still leaves... The carry, well, the carry was left open, but with the Claude already picked up, I guess it won't be an issue for them. What do they ban? They ban Minotaur. They want to secure a good team fight for the Claude. Grok is taken off the board as well now. But Dewa United 
they can definitely and should, right, work with the flexibility of Drian in the roaming position. Yeah, I think that's something that they are trying to do right now. They want to try to give him last pick. We did actually talk to Drian last week, Arashi, and that's what he said, remember? What did he say? Oh, were you there? I don't think I was there, but oh, yeah, but we talked to Drian, me and KB, I believe, and he said, I need to get my flex picks. I need to get me on last pick. And right now, it does seem like they are kind of doing that, wanting to give Drian his uh, a winning matchup. Hmm. Saving the last the pick. The last pick for the roam. Roger will once again make an appearance. That too can be combo technically with the hard guard. If they were so choose. Watt wasn't really able to actually execute well on the Roger. And usually you're kind of used to Watt being a high damage, long distance vulnerable kind of carry. So seeing him on the Roger is definitely a bit of a a bit of a foreign sight. Do they want to capitalize on this dive with See, I was thinking Odette, but they have Valentina, so it's very risky to give that big ultimate, the Swan Song, over to Dewa too, knowing how they can dive. So yeah, maybe the Odette's out of um, use only consideration. They're probably gonna go for a yeah, normal pick here of Exana and the Lapu Lapu for Pi. Wow. Okay. I haven't seen the Lapu Lapu in a while, but when Luke brought it out earlier, it really worked very well. And overall, there's a good deal of AoE card control right here to set up for a Blazing Duet. Not looking that shabby in the teamfight potential. For Dewa, it's almost the other way around. They have a lot of ways to really go for a long skirmish, a long chase, a big 1v1s with a hard guard. When it comes to a proper full-blown teamfight, they don't seem to have a lot of tools available. Do they want Rafaela? Do they want a little bit more of healing, mobility too with this kind of dive comp? Do they not need setup though? Dev United are severely lacking setup here. True. With the competition they that they brought. Mobility. Exactly. No Brock, no Arlet, no Tigrio? Minotaur though. Ruby. Ruby. Ah, I don't mm. Nurko is not, not a fan. I hate Ruby now. I used to actually I hate Ruby for a while. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Number Strong one Ruby sentiments. hater. Who hurt you? Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Strong sentiments from Mirko right here towards the Ruby. Dewa can snowball though, if they can really leverage all this movement speed, all this mobility to really just force Alter Ego into confusion, they have a chance. But when it comes, when they wait for that neutral objective 5v5, I think Alter Ego will be with the ones that have potential. And it's a, it's a signature pick as well for Pi. When we're talking about setup, Dewa was severely lacking it and Alter Ego still have way more tools as compared to the opposing team. But this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The final battle, possibly, for Alter Ego. The proving grounds for Rex. Will he make it or will he break it in game number two? Or can Dell United force a game number three? Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome, welcome you into the land Mobile of dawn. Legend. Alter Ego versus Dewa United. Oh, man. That's crazy, Rashi. I thought, you know, with the Barats, with their tanky lineup and the sustain of the Angela would be enough. They're going for really full sustain. Brave Smite on Nino too. Wow. I mean, you're very outspoken about preferring the Quantum Charge over the Brave Smite. Yeah, guess, what do you think? Uh, I guess this allows him to really go for, really go for more defensive emblems towards the end instead of going for... Uh, yeah, I guess he doesn't really need the mobility and he can actually proc it a bit more often. It will mean that he won't have the extra bit of mobility mm -hmm. when the Quantum Charge does proc though. Along with that, that's a Master Assassin and a Swift for more attack speed. So he's just trying to shred as much as possible. And on the other side, in his lane opponent, Watt is going for something similar. But with the Quantum Charge, he'll be able to chase down Nino should the need arise. All right. Whoa! Very, very deep dive from Lanaya. Right, maneuvering around, but he did waste his flicker. So that is a big resource spent already. And Dewa United wrecked on the Angela. We don't see that signature oppression, that level one aggression that we are used to seeing from Angela back in the day. But this is the reason he goes Brave Smite, right? This Roger, a crazy bully. I think, oh, maybe even without or with the Brave Smite, it doesn't even matter what just. 
Brute forces his way into almost getting a solo kill. It's just not enough for now, and Rian waiting for an opportunity right here. Already out of the bush, though. He's just, I don't know, covering the area, asserting dominance. The rest of the team for Alter Ego are uh -oh. trying to make a play on the turtle, though. This is a lot of time that Drian is spending up here. Drian has a drone on Wolf King. Nino has a sprint. Watt goes in first. Drian's holding it down. I think they uh, want to go. I'm not sure. It kind of felt like they had different calls. Right, like they were trying to juggle the turret aggro, but not really on point. While that all goes on, though, Taz will secure the neutral objective. And now it's back to business as usual. I guess for Nino, the idea for the Brace Smite is that you can get more value from it before you start building more damage. Because the Quantum Charge does scale with uh, the amount of damage you do with your basic attack. Now Taz is just doing Taz things, stomping around, trying to get a farm advantage. And so far, it's it's kind of business as usual. And they are the ones who have to try and make something happen. Two men, I'm offended, but it is Taz, a big dino. Lanaya jumps onto him, gets punished by the Eternal Guard. He still has the Deathless Welcome too. He might just use it now, but he doesn't even need it against Lanaya. He just stomps him to the ground. First Blood K's even forced to flick around. And what a menace, the dino and the Angela. A shielded dinosaur that moves faster than usual. That's a Kaiju moment right there for sure. Gojira! <laughs> Gojira! just stomping around. And all across the map, look at how Alter Ego is positioning. They're not concerned about getting trapped in a, in a three-man skirmish. They know that they have what it takes. They have the ways to escape from a big chase. Unless now they overextend here. Oh no, I'm offended. Unfortunately for Drian, not connecting and the recalls happen from Rekt and Nino. Great moment for the side of Alter Ego here, and this is what they were able to do in game one as well. Just really dodge away from the majority of the fights that they don't, they don't really feel are required. They want to make sure that they center all their plays around the neutral objective where Taz can do work. With a Dreadnought armor right here, with Kays, I think he might be rushing a Necklace of Durance. No, actually no, I think that might be still a, a truncheon, we'll have to see. But with him not really doing too much damage just yet, a Dreadnought armor hard-guarded, healed Barats, I think can stay there quite indefinitely, even through the Turtles' prisons. So we'll see how that fares here in the next dance, their next tango around the Turtle. It's been resetted once again. Drian already looking for a proper position to maybe go for an engage onto Taz. Taz, level 8 here. Lanaya, level 7. He has a level advantage as well. Ooh. And let's see how this unfolds. Taz is holding it, doing a good job of playing the Turtle Dance. Back and forth, looking for Cryo on the map. They have the Angela up top, so global presence, but this kind of skirmish, who has the advantage? This kind of skirmish, in theory, it should be Dewa, unless, of course, they don't have enough damage to deal with Taz. He's alone right now, though. No, oh, that's it as welcome to cancel out the Eternal Guard. Knock up high, jumps in with the Raven oh. Spider. Now it's a good knock up as well from Cryo with the Eternal Guard. Taz looking to go for the Retribution. Lanaya as well, Taz! Outclassing Lanaya every step of the way, and even Pi gets out! Dixon unable to chase him down, no one dies from Alter Ego, there are no trades for Dewa! Alter Ego just drive by, take the turtle, and run! Zero resource taken, zero kills, zero objective takes. Alter Ego with a 1,500 gold lead here in the first six minutes of the game. Now what can they utilize with this lead? They can just do the same exact thing and maybe start setting up for a dive. A hard guarded dive at this point, I think is a very realistic option for Alter Ego. The fact that there, they kind of let Taz be the bait for Dewa to pour in all of their damage and yet he still stands there, unfazed, and goes with the retribution. Shows you again the kind of nerves that this guy operates on. With the Flask of the Oasis completed for Rekt, it's just looking, going from bad to worse for Dewa. They don't, I don't think they have any uh, any healing reduction. There is a Necklace of Durance in the hands of Bright, I believe. Oh, in case, sorry. And it looks like even though that Dewa United have the Valentina, they haven't really been able to catch Wrecked yeah. with the IMU, so Keys hasn't been able to utilize it either. That's right, incredibly intelligent by uh, Wrecked, right? Always playing in the far side and always staying in these bushes so that this combo can't even start. 
And that's due to the wave clear that Alter Ego already has, even before the Angela is in the picture. The Claude can clear waves really easily, so can the Vexana, and so can technically Barax or the Lapu Lapu. All of them are very good at clearing, so Angela can just stay back in the wing, further away. Now it's the macro play, unless Dixon can try and do something. That's a bit. That's gonna be a bit too risky, though. Does he want to go for a dive? I think he's going in for a dive. Doesn't actually get it. And I don't think Alter Ego want to commit to the top lane earlier on. They're going to center around, stay disciplined, look for the next objective on the board. They're looking for another trade on the turtle. So far, all neutral objectives have been taken by Alter Ego. Lanaya want to say something different. Well, oh, Deathless Welcome just to get the anti CC. It's in the turtle guard as well. Right, with a flicker out to safety. Dewa unable to look for the full commitment, but they will be able to take the turtle for free here. They've done enough against Alter Ego, against that sustain and that beefy force in the dino. Right, so they've dealt with the neutral objective problem right here, but they're not really dealing with Nino, just farming it up. You have to remember that Nino is a great gold lane player. That's a bravest fighter being used, but I think that will be about it, unless a fight breaks out. Mm -hmm. Just trying to clear up the wave. Denying the seed potential of Dewa. They can go for more here. Watt still is holding on to that Purify. Looks like they're looking for another trade in the bottom side with the way that they're posturing. But I don't think Drian is able to find anything here just yet. Taras walking up confidently. He has now an Antique Kuras and a Radiant Armor. Two outfits for the big man. He has defenses for both magical and physical damage. Oh, that's gonna be a huge problem because Watt is, is somewhat ability based due to the nature of the Roger using abilities. But look at that. Eternal Guard onto Drion. Nino to get a whole lot of damage. Also getting pulled back. He doesn't have the Purify, but he has the Blazing Duet. Pops it in, gets the Brave Smite prop. And Taz now in the midst of it all. Getting the immobilized Pi. Dealing so much oh. damage with the Bravest Fighter and a big chomp down. A good stun from Pi to stop Lamnaya and his movement in case. Also falls right after getting spat back to the wall and stomped on by Mr. Taz Dino Man. It's so unfortunate the collapse of CC happening, but Dixon uh, trying to do, do what he can, trying to get a trade into the mid lane, but it gets cleared out before he's able to go for it. The knock up coming through, the chomp chomp coming in from Taz, and then the terrify hits as well. Very unfortunate for Dewa United. And Altrigo is doing this through the Turtle's presence and the Necklace of Druids. So despite all this reduction that Dewa United are just frantically trying to secure for themselves, Alter Ego are just making it work. It's not just the regeneration at this point, it's the goal difference and the tankiness. The fact that on a hero like a Barats, for instance, you can just build full tankiness and still be able to do hel a healthy amount of damage. That is, is what allowing Alter Ego to really just muscle through all of this aggression that Dewa United are trying to get towards the backline. They're not letting anything go. You're right, they're able to muscle through, and if they deem that they can't go for it, Alter Ego stay disciplined. I mean, 10 minutes in, zero kills for Dewa United so far. It's the playstyle, right? The fact that they were counting on having a hard guard of their own, but it's just not allowed to be given. Now again, 50-50. The tone is welcome, Nino can tread him down, and so, oh my god, he does! Lanaya is gone! And just like that, it's a free Lord over to Alter Ego. Oh. Nino wants to go for more, though. No, jumps him with a Blazing. No, not even a Blazing. But he just guns him down with the Battle Mirror image. He gets close and Wreck ties him up. And Wreck even takes the kill away. A thief. The, f the focusing Mark Angela doesn't make things a lot easier anyways. Now for Dewa United, they're going to be stuck trying to make a play happen. A desperate play at that. Blazing duet now from Nino as he time jumps into the back. but. Unfortunately for him, he gets tied back to Taz by the CC. But they will still be able to siege that turret down with no problems. Flicker burnt from Drion though. 6-0. Six 6-0. Zero. Six zero. They're looking for another one here. Pi goes in. And that's the Dino. Making the chomp, spinning him back out to the Eternal Guard, to the guns of Nino too. And Kryte with the Eternal Guard slash takes him out. He even saves the Eternal Guard. Look at him, so low. I mean, look at how Alter Ego is playing particularly the backline members. Kryte and Nino are not saving spells at all. They are playing as if there is no way at all for Dewa United to dive towards the backline. Oh, two men. Doesn't even matter. The Eternal Guard a bit late from Kaze. 
and Nino just gets out. He's been getting out of all these pickoff potential from Dela without Purify, boys. I was about to say, not even with a Purify, he's using Sprint. This time around, he understands that he can go out with a BMI plus. Wrecked has been great with the hard guard, always on time to save his life, to prevent anything from happening towards him, even if he goes for a very aggressive outlook on these team fights. Well, when your team can just give so much space for you like this, by just standing in outside of the base, <laughs> I mean, you oh know, God. he's still trying to maintain like his, his stacks, technically, by doing this. But again, if you're Nino, where exactly is the danger, right? Rian and the rest of them are going to be uh, stuck using the spells for something else. Uh-oh, I'm offended, dodged away from by the Battle Mirror Image. Bring him to the back as well, over under the turret. Dixon now diving into the midst of it all, but has the vengeance. What? Also with Lycan, Pop, and Nino again with the Brave Smite! Rock with the Blaze, he knew, went out to the Battle Mirror Image, and he placed beforehand, Rex flickering forward on the Angela, trying to get the last hit. An interesting flicker, but an entertaining one at that. It's wrecked. It's wrecked on the Angela. It's an aggressive Angela when he's the pilot behind it. And Anai is taken down. 5v4. Drian goes in for something. Doesn't quite get it just yet, though. Yeah, they're brute forcing the siege, man. We don't usually see this a lot, right? After getting the base turret, back up, go for the Lord. Alter Ego say, nah. <laughs> We're just gonna pitch tent and make our home in your jungle. Dewa. Just has nowhere to go for the longest time with the dino right at the gates. The Lord spawning though. Now Trigo will back away. Curiously, they're not setting up for a trap. They want Deva United to move up to get some space so that they can chase them down the way Nino did to to what earlier. The longer the dis the longer the distance, the more chance for that hard guard for the Angela for the tie-up with the focusing mark to allow Alter Ego to just pick up more kills. You can already see even Pai setting up for that, right? Looking for that opportunity. Not really sure if he's going to go for it. But even if they go for a team fight, a 5v5, without a man advantage, Taz is two levels above Lunaya at this point. Mm -hmm. And the wave on the bottom side is still pushing in favor of Alter Ego, by the way. So this is a situation that Dewa needs to try and change up somehow. The Eternal Guard earlier. Who is it? Was Krite, right? Oh no, that was a Cursed Blast. My bad. This skin actually, the effects look very similar. You know, the the ult as well. A bit deceptive, for sure. Could be a big value to take advantage of. But with Watt getting the Malefic Boar, he has damage. Is it enough damage? That is always the main question. And all three are very happy to just yeah. play this game all day, all night, dude. The macro is back. The macro that we didn't see yesterday, but now look at even Pi oh. going in, Eternal Guard onto Keza and Dixon forcing a vengeance for the man who can withstand the damage from Nino, and he just walks in now with the help of Wreck with the hard guard as well, and the flask of the Oasis doing work. Kaze walking down Nino back with a Battle Mirror image. Wreck tying him up, looking for the final kill. Flickering forward, <laughs> Watt versus Wreck. Who's gonna win it? It's Nino who takes it. No, it's Wreck. <laughs> 10 and 0, Alter Ego and the Lord as well. A signature pick, and that's what you get all across the board. Wreck 208 so far. Going to be able to take down this turret in the mid lane. And this is the Alter Ego. We want it. The chomp down, the spit out into the Eternal Garden to Nino's big guns. With the Blazing Nuet, Drian can only be offended now. Kays dove on in the fountain, forced to stay there. 11 and 0. Get wrecked! Alter Ego with a 2 to 0. And this was it. They tried to put highs in the gold lane to replace Nino. It didn't work. They had two more answers. Wrecked and Sally Boy. But it turns out with Wrecked coming in, replacing Rossi as a roamer, this was their answer all along. This was the saving grace. Welcome to the beginning of Wreck's journey. Wreck and his comeback arc. We'll see how far he can go right here, but this is an amazing start. An amazing sight for the fans who have expected so much from him. The veteran is back. El Familia successfully halts the three lose streak that Alter Ego was on. Redemption arc zero. 
kills by Dewa United. If there was a game for Wreck to join in, it, it is this one, perfect to his name. Absolutely wrecked the Dewa United forces today. The veteran is back, El Familia. Such a stark contrast to when he came back for Alter Ego last season. Yeah. He played four games in a row, was it four matches in a row? That was a loose streak for Alter Ego. And then everyone was like, man, Wreck coming in wasn't a good idea. So many people were laughing at him. And now, season 13, he's like, you know what, let's try again. He comes back, and Alter Ego's shaky performance, it's, it's, it's hushed. A good win for Nafari, for sure. And Aldo, in the back, has to be happy with this performance of the team. So, ladies and gentlemen, Let's talk to the victors. Let's talk to Alter Ego. What changed? What happened? As we take to the interview, Bude Clara Mongstar, take it away. Haduh, haduh, Alter Ego. Setelah hampir puasa dua minggu kemenangan, akhirnya Alter Ego berhasil menang dengan dua kosong. Wow. Wait, buset. Semuanya pada teriak-teriaknya bukan bukan Pai loh. Udah bukan Pai loh. Ya, yeah, legend soalnya. Legend. Tapi menarik ya, tiga kali lose trick. What happened tiga kali itu? Penasaran nih, gatel banget. Early-nya tuh kuat banget loh, Alter Ego. Terus tiba-tiba... Nyebut loh, nyebut loh kalian loh. Gak tahu musuh lebih jago aja kali ya. Kita kurang persiapan yang mateng gitu. Jadi karena musuhnya yang jago? Musuh jago dan kita juga tim yang strateginya minim taktik lah. Ah. Ya. Tapi tadi taktik nggak? Hari ini pakai taktik yang beda nggak karena jelas, lawan Kesius? Kita jelas pakai taktik yang beda dan kita ngikutin RRQ sih. Uh -uh. Nurunin legend kan? Kita juga nurunin legend. Uh. Ya. Dan itu berhasil ya kayaknya ya? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Tapi rek R E K T semuanya langsung berseru-seru loh. Namamu diserukan kembali di MPL Arena. Main di week keempat. Di mana rek suasananya dan Gimana kamu bermain hari ini? Sama seperti season kemarin sih. Beda season kemarin low streak. Moga season ini bawa win streak buat Alter Ego ya. Oh, berharapnya seperti itu ya. Membawa win streak. Tapi apakah karena ini kayaknya Angela lagi ramai kepengen papi-papi pum terus kah? Ya balik lagi emang hero power sih. Pakai berani di first pick. First pick dengan Angela. Papi-papi pumnya. Ngedapetin 2-0. Tapi kamu ngelihat di season 13 ini memang seasonmu banget gak sih, Rek, kayaknya? Kalau kita tahu historimu ya. Ya mudah-mudahan aja, soalnya kan VN nama Lemon juga balik. Rek juga harus perform dong. Wow! Terpicu ya kamu ya, udah terpicu nih. Jadi kalau kalau udah terpicu kayak gitu ya, udah makin penasaran dengan REKT. Apa yang mungkin sebelum match atau sebelum match ini atau kemarin-kemarin nih? Apakah kamu baru tadi malam? Itu Vin main, aku juga mau main kayak gitu. Iya baru tadi malam bilang ke Kodelwin. Langsung? Kalau nggak diturunin gaji. <laughs> Mainnya serem ya. Jadi baru semalam mempersiapkan untuk line up ini kah? Baru semalam. Hmm. Ya baru semalam. Ide siapa itu? Pai, Pai. Head. <laughs> Jadi kayak Mbak Pai di kesana, enggak Bude. Anda? Enggak, kan yang aku bilang tadi, ngikutin RRQ. Karena habis... Kalah instan kan, instan kan, naikin uh -uh. legend langsung menang. Kita juga bisa naikin legend. Berharapnya menang, alhamdulillah menang. Jadi kunci kemenangan kalian hari ini? Naikin legend. Naikin legend. Legend M Wang. Serius bude. Walaupun bukan punya A ya, cuma dia legend M Wang. Jadi kecipratan dikit gak sih? Alhamdulillah semoga. Semoga. Nah, Rek udah balik. Kalau tas sendiri, kalau dari tas ya, baliknya Rek. Berpengaruh nggak sih sama performa tas dan juga mungkin tas yang paling berasa juga ya? Berpengaruh banget sih. Apa tuh pengaruhnya tas? Geometnya ada bau dunianya gitu. Uh. Oh iya ada tiga juara dunia loh sebenarnya. Sorry sorry jangan di klip. Eh ada tiga juara dunia loh kalian. Ini jangan Budi jangan dibahas lagi udah. Loh itu kenyataan. Udah Budi Dengan cukup, tiga cukup. juara dunia kalian bisa menyabet gelar kah? Udah, udah cukup. 
Udah udah cukup ada yang mau bantuin enggak sih dia? Udah udah udah. Udah, udah ya, Emang jangan udah ya. Udah enggak kondusif ini. Udah jangan ya. Iya, jangan jangan. Jangan dari ampun. Oke. Ini dari tas ngerasa bisa rek juga ini. Kalau dari krek yang ada bau dunianya juga ini. Hah, gimana sih bau dunia? Enggak tahu sih, bodi kemarin juaranya Ciki kan soalnya. Ya ampun itu juara dunia. Tapi bagaimana kamu sekarang ini kan benar-benar baru nih kombinasi yang baru. Terus sekarang midlane midlane sekarang juga kayaknya lagi hot topic banget ya. Bagaimana kamu melihat midlaner midlaner sekarang? Midlaner sekarang jago-jago sih jadi ya main timnya aja gimana? Kan pada jago. Kamu ada di mana nih di antara orang-orang jago ini? Di nggak tahu sih nomor nomor kita nomor berapa ya? Nomor lima kayaknya nomor lima lah. Berarti kamu ada di nomor lima yeah. juga? Nggak pengen meranjak? Ya tanya lah nanti lah Budi. Siapa nih yang paling bisa menjegal bau dunia ini? Siapa? Lemon kali ini. Parah. Loh. Loh, berarti respect dong. Respect, semua ke semua respect lah pasti. Respect karena respect dia yang bisa menjegal kamu kalau kamu mau kepucuk berarti kan? Ya, ke semua sih bisa. Ya kita respect semuanya. Kemarin lah. kamu udah merasakan melawan Lemon dong? Udah keras sih dia lumayan lah. Keras. Nah. Dan akan menjadi satu kontender yang kamu nantikan di leg kedua kah? Ya semoga ketemu lagi lah. Semoga ketemu lagi. Bestimu loh kemarin nah. muncul. Kamu kaget nggak dia tiba-tiba muncul lagi? Kaget enggak. Cuman panik lumayan panik dikit sih. Oh, lumayan panik dikit? Kaget iya juga kaget dikit sih. Apa responmu dengan kekalahan kemarin? Ternyata sejago itu Lemon. Ternyata sejago itu. Iya saya kan baru kambe kan. Uh-uh. Cuman butuh beberapa waktu doang enggak. Kalau kita aku kan latihan dari... Uh, mulai dari Desember kan tiga bulan, jadi dia cuman beberapa hari udah jago itu kaget banget sih. Wow kaget. Wow kaget. Wow, wow kaget. Ya. Oke. Okay. Menarik tapi yang dipucuk sana. Nino Nino. Hi, Halo Bude. Nino. Halo Bude. Oke okay. Nino penutupan match hari ini indah banget untuk Alter Ego. Bisa nggak Alter Ego melanjutkannya setelah break dua minggu ini? Uh, bisa sih asal Nino nggak panikan kalau kata orang-orang. Kamu kenapa panikan? Kamu panikan beneran atau cuma uh, asumsi orang-orang? Kalau dibilang panikan sih jelas panikan. Soalnya yang dilihat dari mic check juga panik juga kan Nino. Cuman kayak suara Ninonya aja sih yang bikin panik justru. Pengen ganti suara bisa gak sih? Oh, oh ini kan faktor suara? Hmm? Faktor suara ini? Iya faktor suara. Cuman nggak tahu ya itu penilaian orang lain, orang lain berhak menilai lah. Oke okay, orang lainnya adalah Kak Pai. Ya. Dulu mungkin iya sih Bude, cuman sekarang udah ada pawang paniknya jadi nggak bakal panikan lagi. Siapa sih. tuh pawangnya? Ada nonton. Oh yang nonton. Terbelah juga sebenarnya yang lagi nonton. Ya. Oke okay. dan menarik kita akan ketemu di minggu lima, dua minggu break. Silahkan ada yang mau kalian sampaikan sesuatu kah? Mungkin alter ego bakal full power sih soalnya kemarin puasa kan. Kayak uh-huh. ya gimana-gimana gitu lah. Mungkin kalau abis lebaran udah pasti mode STM lagi sih yang pasti. Wuhu dinantikan. <laughs> enggak, enggak, enggak. Minal aizin wal faizin oh, mohon maaf lahir dan batin ya. Pak kompal Allah wa minna wa minkum ya guys ya. Semangat puasanya akhir-akhir. Semangat semuanya bye-bye. <laughs> Semangat bye-bye kabur. Oke okay, guys begitu saja dari alter ego akan kan mereka bisa hmm, ngegeradak semuanya setelah minggu ini. Kita akan langsung balikin kepada parkester 2-0. Apa yang terjadi? Keajaiban apa dari alter ego? Silahkan. Congratulations to Alter Ego for breaking their three-match lose streak. And it looks like this week is a theme of veterans. I mean, despite Arki losing earlier, but like, you get what you I really mean? Had to, you really had to do it, do a Rashi like that? The theme oh, of pain. veterans and comebacks in their first match. Yeah. There you go, that's why True. I True. Rihanna with the Masha. Lemon and Vin coming mm-hmm. back to RQ and Mr. R-E-K-T showing what his name means. The Dewa. Wrecked. wrecked. Get wrecked. G-E-T, R-E-K-T. Get wrecked. Get oh. wrecked. What, what accent is that? I don't know. <laughs> we have no idea. I guess what a great day it's been. I mean, some of these matches are, are just so intense. And I was really fully expecting a 2-1 situation as well, by the way, but man. It's just so, uh, it's, Artigo is so oppressive. But the player of the match right here is gonna be Taz. Presented by our official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. 
going with the straight defensive build, just knowing the actual limits. He, he's positioning forward to try and bait out resources, but yet keeps himself close enough to his allies in order to really punish any over-aggression, any over-chase coming in from Dewa United. And of course, you can't complain about that retribution gain, man. Despite all the ways that Dewa are trying to really cancel him out, make it difficult for him, he makes it happen. Exactly. It just really reflects on the keys to victory as well, right? Prioritize and try to work on the fact that Taz and his objective plays are always something that you can count on. And they were able to do it in this particular match. And he was able to shine with that retribution as compared to the enemy jungle. And we'll see it a little bit through the highlights here for Taz. Now it's very official gold partner, Uwe S. Gold, trust in gold. And trust in Taz to really <laughs> just cut everyone off, going really aggressively. Of course, he knows that the hard guard is going to be there, but still. He just keeps marching forward, making it, making Dewa have to make a difficult call. Do we want to try and go for the damage dealers? Or this Dino just stomping straight at us? And you have to give a shout out to Nino as well. Being low in those fights and yet having the courage, the calculations to just move in. He seems very fearless and sometimes that's a bad thing. But in this game, he really, sh really pushed the limits on what you can do on a marksman, especially when you do have the right kind of backup. I really like that you mentioned trust because it looks like Alter Ego have trust in one another and that's why they were able to play so aggressively. They were able to count on one another, they knew the backup and I'm not really sure, is it a wreck element coming through with the calls maybe? Maybe. I think that has to be it, right? Because they were playing so differently yesterday with a different shot caller, perhaps with Rossi acting more as a, as a mechanical roamer. But I guess with when when Rek gets heroes like this, when he doesn't have to really focus on his mechanics, he can shine in the macro department and man, it felt so disciplined. It felt like it felt like we weren't even watching Alter Ego the way that we know them to play. They're passive, they're very uh, non-disciplined style towards the later stage. Played the macro, knowing when to pull back, knowing when to push with the slow pushes and build up waves too. And knowing where they have opportunities you know, going for 50-50s, but still mm -hmm. not giving up a single kill to Dewa United. We're talking a lot of hype for Drian to try and make something happen, but he was just completely denied here. Yeah. And some people might question, maybe it's the Ruby pick. To be fair, it's, it been, is. it's been nerfed. It's just not as good as it used to be. But zero lords and only two turrets. Everything else, Alter Ego just completely dominate. And they just didn't really give any real leeway, right? There's no time where Kryt on the Vexana or Nino on the Claude is overstepping, is out of position. It's always just let the front line, let the wall just ro roll over Deva United, and then the back line can do their job. Even if you look at the items for Lanayo on the Baxia, it's just a destitute situation, man. 6,200. He has 200 gold above Drian on the Ruby. That's how behind he was. That's how de denied he was. And he's forced to go for the Radiant. He went for the Radiant Armor, fearing for that magical damage, for the, the consistent damage coming in from the Vexana and then the Angela. But then, with only a Dreadnought Armor, I think he's trying to build for a Sky Guardians. It's just not enough resources in his pockets. Not at all, man. Just It's just crazy how... They took the box jet, they took the CC, these two heroes, and then the Valentino. We were so hyped up with that first phase draft, but they ended it so poorly with the Ruby, who really just doesn't fit in in this roster, in my opinion, right? The whole draft wants to go in. Ruby, as much as, yes, yeah, she can go for pick-off, it's more of a pick-off hero. It's not really a full initiation type. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's either to go for more lockdown, which was something that we were talking about, but unfortunately, Grok and Minotaur are both banned down. I think if they were going to try to take the sustain battle with the Baxia, the CC, the Valentina to take the IMU. We did mention Rafaela, right? A hero that, sure, is non-meta right now, but at that point when you're already in that kind of spot, might as well try it because this Ruby is, is just not working out. I think a lot of teams can really look at that that Ruby performance and kind of maybe reconsider Whoa. whether or not they want the Ruby in their hands. But it's been a while since we saw a zero kill game, zero percent participation. But the Drian, he has two O's. Everyone. 
The train is two O's. What? It's not enough to have one zero. <laughs> he has two. <laughs> and like I said earlier, shout out to Nino. Gold per minute still almost reaching 800. And he has the highest damage in the game. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that I think Kryte was also relatively untouched. And you bet he's just spamming out those curse blasts. And whenever anyone gets taken out, extra damage as well. So Nino just again showing up, showing everyone like, yo, with the right kind of composition, I can make the place happen for sure. And you know, wrecked with 100 percent. Yeah. Team fight participation. 100 percent. If I'm not mistaken, he actually has a stat, right? What's like that? most assists in the league. Yeah. Is he number one? Is he number four? Number four. So he's rising with this skill participation for sure. Only 11 kills though, right? So in terms of the total assists, not too many, but the impact was amazing. I think you can definitely see the brilliance in Wrecked, in this game especially. Always hiding away from the Valentina, never letting the Valentina take away that ultimate. And always playing with the global pressure, holding his own against a CC as an Angela yeah. in the side lane. Never solo kill, never caught in overextending positions. He's just, he's just wrecked. And the deny from Keys as well. Yeah, just yeah. The micro things. There were no case of victory. Yeah, I just want to say that. <laughs> yes, no case available for Dewa United Esports for sure. Let's back to the drawing board. But I do wonder if this match will land a precedent. Oh, go to moment though. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 Sorry, no. go take a bottle. So. Go, 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 Let's go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bedin, bedin. Boxing aja mau maksa masuk. Baru tarik rubinya. Lihat ini. Eh, ta! <laughs> Langsung aja. Gue cek lagi. Goyang, goyang semua, goyang. 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 Main, no, main, no, main, no, main, no. Blazing Green, no. Main, no. No, recall, recall, no. Jangan lupa, no. Goyang, sayang. Recall, recall dulu. Ayam, 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 ayam. Jeez. The most important call out, huh? though. Yo, yo, yo. Remember to recall. Recall, 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 recall. <laughs> At the final <laughs> moment. You love to see it. You're right. There was mixed calls. Tons it, and red. Yeah. And we thought in the beginning of the season, I think Mas Dika mentioned it, where if there are too many Shout brains, mm -hmm. that it might not work. But it looked like they they were on the same page yeah. when they went in for the calls. They were on the Evo's page, right? Taz, Rekt, oh, Kreitz, right. three ex-Evo's players. Hmm. Uh -huh. Interesting. I do think that Taz being, it looked like he was one of the main shot callers there. It makes sense because he was the one deciding where the line is, mm. right? He is the front line. He decides if he wants to move forward or not. And he needs everyone to be in the right position to back him up if he does get jumped on. That's just why you see it in the golden moment. He's like, yo, come with me, come with me. Come on, come on, move up, move up. And I think Rex is taking, uh, taking responsibility for the other calls. Like, oh, how about we do this? But like the, the execution calls, I think are, is on Taz. Yeah. Especially for neutral objective take, right? Because he knows if he can red tree. Doesn't need to be timed. So let's see what the three matches oh. that we had earlier on and how they define the standings here presented to you by the official tournament smartphone, Samsung Galaxy. And there it is. Okay, let's see the difference. Okay, Alter Ego was fifth place, now fourth. Geek Fam from seventh is now fifth. RQ from sixth is now seventh. <laughs> Rebellion and Evos stay in the same position. Yeah, that's a that's a difference. This is gonna be the standings for uh, uh, until the next week, and they're still all tied. Two to wait. Two this to is the five. last week, though, right? This is the last week. We have two weeks of holiday. Right, so last week the before break. the break, and then we'll continue after two weeks, folks, ladies oh, and gentlemen, watching at home. My lord, two weeks of yeah. this two weeks standings. Of you see the right red here. zone. Four teams tied. Two teams tied, and then another two teams tied. It's that close. It's so close. It's so good though. Yeah. Because finally, this is a very exciting season. But we you said know. it last season, but you know, it's it's getting even hotter this season. Look, in two for weeks, the first though. time in uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, in six seasons, we have a different team. Not Onik, not RQ, not Evos at number one. 
but right. it's still Onik in second place. Yeah, but not number one at least. You know, we but have Alter to change. Ego was number one. Oh yeah, for you're a right. while too. Season seven okay. and half season mark. You're right. Alter Ego season seven and eight. Well, let's take a look at the rookie and player of the week vote mechanism. For the rookie of the week, the definition is has never played in any previous season of any MPLs or official leagues. MDL Rookie has never played in any previous seasons of any MPLs, MDLs, or official leagues. Rookie of the Week. Candidates will be determined based on their performance statistic in the current week. For Player of the Week, the criteria is all players who have earned the player of the match throughout the week's matches. And then it gets voted again. So both of these titles undergo that first phase and then the second phase both undergo the voting process. As you can see, and what Mirko will explain. Voting process. The voting will be conducted by the on-site observer team and casters from the last match of the week. Observer team, two votes. Casters on site, six votes. Three from Indonesian casters, three from English casters. Voting process, bottoms there. Same thing for player of the week. Mm -hmm. Legit, just the same thing. Two votes for observers, six votes for three Indonesian casters and three English casters. So just in case you guys were wondering, how, how do they crown the Rookie of the Week? Especially how, after week one. How do they crown the Player of the Week? Here it is, the criteria and the voting process that happens thereafter. So who's the Rookie of the Week? Eterna or Rashi? Who is it? Drum roll, please. It's not really going to be a drum roll. We all I'm know. I'm trying, I'm trying. Oh, man. What a shocker. Week one, week two. Week three, Hazel took it. And week four, he smacked Hazel. Congratulations to Agugun, her rookie of the week, with a quote here by Mirko. He now oh. proves that he can also carry on the Assassins while also keeping the Retri God title on the Assassins. So not just on the utility junglers or the tank junglers, he's also been able to prove that even on the Assassins, his Retri game is still on point. Hazel got zero neutral objective takes this week against this man, and this man was on Nolan, and the other man was on Frederick. Just turned French mid sentence. <laughs> no, no long. No long. Yeah. Christopher No long. It's a terrifying prospect here, though, for sure. Being able to play both equally good assassins and uh, and tankier utility-based heroes as well. I guess you know this guy deserves it especially with the kind of opposition he's coming up against. You can argue that the previous seasons, you know, it's not really as competitive, so it's a bit different. But now with all the teams being so close and him performing so well, it's definitely a great achievement. And now let's crown the player of the week. Drum roll, please. What? It's Super Ken. Oh, Super Ken. I have a quote here from our Indonesian caster, Chibi. His consistency plus flexibility and the jungle pattern is unique, so he can always follow up on the setup initiated by Key. As My a boy. Trend, as a Bigatron fan, Miracle. My boy. It's your boy. I knew it. It's the prodigy. Super Ken. Fanny, Ooh. flexible, utility, really good too. Lost the guns, Onik, but we don't count that, you know? Because uh, Onik are too good. Yeah, well, you know, it's not only about the win and lose, right? It's the performance overall, how True. they do in the games, even when they lose. Yeah, he right? fixed his Retri game, actually. And on Friday, remember the Retri game? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. It was really solid, to, to a surprising degree. I think even you were impressed, Mirko. Very impressed. Wow, Super Ken, my boy, player of the week. <laughs> it is Super Ken. <laughs> what is the laugh, Not though? Super Ken, not, but... Let's take a list, look at the list of the MPL awards for Season 13 once again. Regular Season MVP, we have okay. the Finals MVP, All right. we have the First Team Awards, mm. we now have the Second Team Awards, so that's new. Rookie of the Season, Most Improved Player, Coaching Team of the Season. Oh, that's cool. Yes, we have the ID and English Best Talent, a new category as well, Best Teammate. We have our Dream Team Awards, that is fan voted and we also have the outstanding media contribution awards which is also fan voted oh quite a few awards to aim for here in season 13. Mm -hmm. i guess that's good news can i get best teammate uh yeah i, I was wondering what, i just really best want best teammate? teammate i want to be best coaching staff 
Yeah, okay. And first team player. Can I be like second team then? MVP regular season. I don't mind second team. I want to be Kyrie is basically what I'm saying. But I ladies see. and gentlemen, please do take a look at these dates. Friday, April 19th, which means there will be a two-week break before we head into week number five. And the matches are crazy. And remember, two weeks, that's a two lot weeks. of time look for a lot of changes as well. Oh, man. I, you know, with a two-week break, the whole power rankings could just be shifting. Exactly. Like yeah. Rebellion and Evos and RRQ could be the best team, and then BTR, Onik, and Aura could just be the worst next season. I mean, next week, sorry. Uh, two week, in two weeks. Right. After two the weeks. break. Or oh, three weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks break. Two weeks one, break. And, and then, yeah. Okay. For the third week. Yes. yes three yes. weeks. Because you have to remember, like, there's a lot of changes, right? So with two weeks to really settle down there, that's great. And you guys should settle down and get some battle emotes as well. Sit so they can down. join on the fun. They, they were flashing these emotes in the matches earlier, man. Yeah. Kind of fun little next level, bro. I was about to say that. Took it away. That's crazy. I was literally preparing to say, wow, next level, bro. Because it's alter ego, right? Yeah. No, it was, I just randomly chose. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's why. I don't know. Well, Rashi, I know what you're thinking, too. What is that? And Santai, bro. Santai. Oh. I right? Think it was MT. Who, who won? Mm -hmm. Who got it right? No, I was thinking of the back, back, back one because that's my default. <laughs> but I guess the Ente, kind of Ente is closer to what I was thinking of. Thank you. How could it be closer when you think back, 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 bro? Ooh, what's like this? The second one. It's a QR code. It's oh. what MDL happens if we scan it? CSR program. Eterna. When you before you were a caster, uh -huh. did you want to join the internship or did you want to intern for the esports industry? Of course. You want to know the environment, the industry, how it works. Are there more roles than just players on stage? Yeah. Production crew, yes. the producers backstage, yes. even the talent manager, yes. to observers, to everything. Yeah. You guys can check it out here. There's a chance for you guys if you guys want to participate and intern and get experience. When the I was industry. born, that's what I wanted to do. No. Whoa. How do you know? You weren't born yet. Exactly. That's why I just say no. Because I wasn't born yet. But you know what's took, born already? It took 30 years after you were <laughs> born. <laughs> Sorry. Nearly smacked him. Well, hey, for those of you who might feel empty or bored during MPL ID Season 13 break as well, but don't worry, because soon the Snapdragon Pro Series Season 5 will be starting again. And the first open qualifier stage for Indonesia will begin in April. It's as easy as that, as simple as that. Go ahead and join up because it's open qualifiers. Every single one of you guys can participate. You have a dream of beating AP Bren? You have no, a dream, dream of beating... Dreams in, is in EVOS. You have a dream of beating EVOS? Join in, ladies and gentlemen, open qualifiers. But not Boom. only that. What? Right? We do have another program that you guys can go for. And it's this. The Esports e Academy e program. E because Moonton cares. Moonton cares. All right, Moonton cares and Hope Cup will be organizing a fundraising event for the Garudaku Academy. Ooh. The funds to be given will be calculated based on the in game gold achievement during all matches in weeks four to six of the regular season at MPL ID season 13. And the gold earned by the MPL professional teams will be accumulated and multiplied by 30 for the donation amount. So. Let's witness Moonton Cares and Hope Cup's contribution to the development of the Esports Academy in Indonesia. Wow, that was, that was nice. Good delivery. It's wholesome. Wholesome, absolutely. Times 30. Times 30. Not 29, not 28, not 27, not 26, 25, all the way to 1. Nope. Not even negative not 1. Even zero. It's times 30. So if teams are taking it slow and going for like a 30 minute game, they're just struggling for the cause. They are. Respect, bro. So it Maybe starts this week. It That's does. why. That's why a lot of teams have been going. Actually, no. Hang on. It would have been, been better for last match. week because all the matches were 2 1, 2 1, 2 1. Man, come on, teams. Get more competitive, man. You know, it's for the, a good cause. This is not More peaceful. competitive. Competitive. Oh. It's for a good cause. This like is not the good cause. This is the fighting, the, com oh. the competition. The good this is oh. MPL. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, but this does mark the end of the day, unfortunately. Oh, this is not the end of the week, right? We want to get more competitive. It's not the end of the week, right? It is. Wait. 
We're gonna go for a two week break after this? Yes. yes. What are we gonna do? I don't know actually. We're lost without Mobile Legends, man. No. Oh. What should we do? I don't know. Anyway. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for staying tuned throughout the entirety of this week. It's been a blast. We love you guys. Thank you for putting up with us. Thank you for enjoying MLBB the way that we do. And thank you for tuning in to MPL ID English Broadcast. And with that, we're going to say goodbye for two weeks. We'll see you on April 19th. Don't forget the date because me, Eterna, Arashi, and Mirko, we're signing out for the day. Thank you so much. MPL ID Season 13. We, we own this. this. Kelima, setelah ada break dua minggu, akan seperti apa perubahan yang dilakukan oleh tim-tim yang bertanding di MPL Indonesia Season 9? Mari kita nantikan bersama-sama dari semua tim yang benar-benar bisa kita rasakan, kita ketahui dari setiap perjuangan mereka. Tentu saja dari kesembilan tim perjuangan di MPL Arena pun mereka benar-benar bisa merasakan. Jadi jangan sampai kelewatan di minggu selanjutnya, di minggu kelima kalian harus hadir di MPL Arena. Dinantikan oleh Bude dan juga semua kerabat kru. Dan sepertinya di sini kita juga harus berpisah. Namun Bude ingin mengucapkan terima kasih kepada para sponsor karena MPL Indonesia Season 13 powered by Moonton Presented by Official Tournament Smartphone Samsung Galaxy Official e-wallet GoPay Official Gold Partner UBS Gold Dan juga ada partner ini Sports Kita punya Dunia Games, Games Max, Ora Imo dan juga Telkomsel Bersama dengan supplier kita ada Indomaret, Point Coffee, Samsung Neo QLED Super Smart TV Plus Dan juga Saturdays Bersama dengan satu government partner kita ada PBSI. Dan kepada super fans semuanya yang menyaksikan MPL Indonesia. Bude Clara bersama keluarga besar MPL Indonesia. Ingin mengucapkan selamat melanjutkan ibadah puasa bersama orang terkasih. Dan seketika kita bertemu kembali setelah liburan panjang. Mari kita merayakan kebersamaan sambil saling memaaf-maafkan di... Semangat Idul Fitri 1445 Hijriah. Minal Aizin, Wal Faizin, mohon maaf lahir dan batin. Dan selamat malam, selamat beristirahat. Sampai bertemu kembali di week 5 MPL Indonesia Season 13. We on this.
terus berlari Terus ke arah puncak tertinggi Ku takkan berhenti Hanya sampai di sini Kemenangan abadi menanti You know we won't miss if we unite our focus And if you haven't Jalan 